Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew and welcome to Atari Age Day 2022 Fall Edition Day <laughs> 1. Lots of add-ons and disclaimers to that. Um, yeah, because we did one earlier in the year. Yeah. Um, but there's more games. It there's feels more like, games. It feels like the fashion season. You know, there's the fall, the spring <laughs> That's right, spring. Line. This you is know, the fashion line, the fashion line of Atari Homebrew. Yes. Oh boy, do we have something for you? We have cats. We have cats. Um, but always. we also have 24 games. Oh my God. It's a lot of games. Spanning across 2600, 5200, 7800, and Jaguar. And over the next uh, two days, we're going to be speaking with all the developers of all those games. That's awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, Tanya's going to be playing the games. Yay! The cats will be begging for treats. Uh, don't waste your bits. They aren't working today. Um, so we'll just be regularly feeding these cats when yeah. they start they'll, bugging they'll us. They'll get a little uh, ornery if we don't feed them at yeah. certain intervals. So. And um, so, yeah, we've got uh, 12 games today mm -hmm. and 12 games tomorrow. It's mm -hmm. going to be the same time. Um, and we're going to be talking with the developers, and Tanya's going to be playing the games. So you'll be able to see the games. Uh, so today we've got a bunch of consoles in front of us you can't see. Um, and we have the webcam over here to show off the uh, box as we uh, play the games. Yes. Oh, hi, kitten. <laughs> Luckily, the cats just got fed uh, yes. before we started the broadcast. So we will be a little calm. Oh, thank you for following DMX87. Um, and we're also going to be talking with Al, Albert Iruso off the top of the, <laughs> uh, off the top of this show to, to uh, talk a little bit about these releases. Yes. So sure. I see Al in the chat. Oh, Step says, it's nice when you stream earlier, so us Europeans are still awake. That's true. Yeah, that is, uh, <laughs> it is very handy. And I try and do that um, every second Friday. Do you want me to connect with Al? Yeah, Meryl connect with Al and then we'll bring him up. Meryl, Doug, Radar. Thank you for resubscribing, Nathan. So let's... Uh, my kids are demanding Minecraft for the 2600. Well, that's a bit, uh, a bit difficult. Let's go full screen. Double click on there. There we go. Okay, so it looks like we have Al. Can you hear us, Al? Good. You can't hear you yet. You're not on yet. Um, okay, there we go. He's not an Atari Age developer, but uh, he's going to have that title on the bottom for now. There we go. Hello, Al. Hello, how are you, how you doing? Us? Yes, I am. Here, let hey. me move a little bit. Good. We're doing well. Um, so, <laughs> oh my God, this is this is a big day. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this it is, is a lot of games. It's two days. Uh, it is two days. Yeah, yeah somebody weekend. said, shouldn't it be called? Atari Age Days? And that's like, yeah. kind of. Atari Age Weekend. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but we've got a branding going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, as people can see, look at all the stuff in the background behind Al. Yes. Oh, my God. Uh, that is your, your workshop where you put together the games, you burn the games, you solder the games, you do all that. So um, I may have asked you this before. But I think it's uh, in interesting for people to know the process of how this all works. So maybe step us briefly through how a game goes from a binary that, you know, somebody's working on, a, a finished game or maybe a work in progress, um, to be released as a boxed game in the Atari Age Store. I'm, I assume either the developers approach you or you approach the developers. That's kind of the first step. Yes, yeah. So the first thing is just connecting with the developer. Uh, as you said, sometimes you know, I see a game that's in development, often on the forums, and I'll contact the developer directly. Other times, people will write me out of the blue. Sometimes, if, you know, they haven't actually posted anything publicly yet. Uh, and there's actually, yeah. that, that's happening now, actually, with an old developer who used to write games for a third party back in the day. Uh, so right. one of the things I need to do this weekend is actually try that out, give them feedback, uh, and, you know, decide if that's a game that I want to publish. In the store. So once I, right. you know, have agreed, hey, this would make a great fit for the Atari Age store. Uh, one of the big things at that point, obviously, the game needs to be finished. It needs to be sufficiently tested, and the by the yeah. more the merrier usually. Uh, but the, the one of the big things is actually coming up with the artwork and the designs for the for the box, manual label, maybe a, a poster. Uh, and sometimes right. we'll do some extra special things for some games, like what we did for Gravitic Minds. Cat, I see a cat. 
Oh wait, you can't. <laughs> you can't see. I can only see it in Skype. Never mind. Oh yeah, you get a special <laughs> yeah. view. That's the strap. <laughs> oh, actually, your camera is terrible. Yeah, that's what I was trying to adjust. Oh, oh well, this this is the camera. I didn't realize Don't that. Don't touch yeah. the laptop. No, it's no, doing I was well. It, but it wasn't there, changing anything. everybody out there, that was not for right. you. That was yeah. for Al, so you can actually see us. There we go. All right, so. Uh, so then I have to, you know, connect with a, an artist or and or designer. Sometimes as an artist will just create the, the artwork and then uh, someone else will actually put together the designs. And so those require different skills. Some people can do both. Sometimes an author, yeah. a home author, VHC. can actually do everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, VHC, that's yeah. one person who does yeah, Vladimir, everything. Yes, Vladimir yeah. is a great example of that. He does a fantastic job, not just with the games, but also putting together all the packaging, which is nice. Uh, so once that's yeah. all done... Uh, you know, then it's a matter of getting everything printed. Uh, and that could be a huge pain in the ass, right. especially when you're doing a lot of games at once, which is one reason I want to cut down from doing <clears throat> 24 <laughs> releases to a more useful number. Uh, so the next batch is actually going to be in the spring. It'll be yeah. a smaller number. And then maybe in the summer and definitely then again in the fall for PRG next year. Right. Uh, That's probably a little bit easier on you. Uh, 24 is quite a number. Is that is that the biggest number of games yeah, so that you've ever released at once yes definitely i think uh, i've eclipsed 20 in the past but not definitely haven't approached 24 and it was going to be 25 but one game didn't make it this year uh, I, and that'll, uh that'll people's be wallets are hurting enough I don't, <laughs> one more on the pile is just going to make them go crazy i think okay so aside from getting things printed then the physical production yeah as far as making the cartridges uh has to occur and sometimes that involves soldering uh, each individual game. Sometimes I use flashboards, so, for instance, melody-based games, for instance, with uh, Gorp Arcade and Kicks Use and a whole bunch of others now. Uh, those, I don't yeah. have to, I, those I just have to program. Uh, I don't actually have to solder anything, which is really nice. So that saves me a lot of time. Same right. thing with we have an area board, ARIA for the 2600. That can be used for most other games that use bank switching that you know, doesn't use DPC Plus or, or you know, the, the more advanced uh, melody-based games. Uh, right. And then for the 5200, 700, and Jaguar right now, with those I am all soldering by hand. But 50, 50, uh, 2600 games make up about 50% of everything that's sold in the store. So that's the, the bulk yeah. of it. Uh, but we are we, we have new flash boards for the Jaguar in development. Uh, so that'll save a lot of time, especially those games use really large 42-pin EEPROMs. They take a while to program the chips, plus actually uh, solder them. Uh, then, uh, right. And then you know we're slowly working towards more flash boards for other things as well, just to make it easier. And new cartridge shells for everything, which I pretty much have at this point for for all the systems, which does help a lot. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so the the boards are soldered or programmed, and then they're assembled into the cartridge shell. Then they have to be tested on a system, uh, and then labeled, then assembled into a box if they have a box. Uh, and then you know those I usually do those in batches as orders come in, and then they all get shipped in you know, big in big piles, which I did last week. Uh, you know, shipped out right. over 100 orders, and some of those are from before wow. PRG. And I still have a few more to do. And I know one of the questions yeah. I'm going to be asked is when are the new games going to hit the store? But I'll wait for you to ask me that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll be like the last question. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a little sneak preview for people. So, so it is a lot of work. Uh, it's not like yeah. mass production. And ultimately, you know, there are things I want to do to make it easier to do this. Uh, for instance, having cartridges, flashboards in cartridges that I can program with the car the, the board in the cartridge so when i get orders right. i just plug it into a fixture program it put the label on test and put the label on and that will save me a huge amount of time and uh that's what i'm going to do plus there's a new store i'm working on which will make things a lot easier for me from from the, the back end as well and the front end will be a lot yeah. better and i can't wait to get that online because i currently i do not like the current software i've been using it for over 10 years now <laughs> and it has to go away i'm getting the, getting the form upgraded earlier in the year and moved to envision hosting yeah. was one big thing thank goodness and i'll be doing yeah this. it's great now well yeah. there are still problems the search i have to fix the search is really slow there's something called elastic search <laughs> <laughs> that does work but i want the search to be fast within the form itself because most yeah. people are not going to do yeah. that it was fast before yeah there's, there's something called elastic search which is a much better search engine than the built-in mysql search uh but because the server is unhosted solution now it's a little more complicated because there's security concerns because the elastic search right. is not running on the local server so you need to make sure no one can just connect to your search engine and query anything in the database uh so that's yeah. that's got to be done that will fix a lot of pages <laughs> and make them much faster than they are now uh oh, great. but the store is the next big thing and uh that has to get upgraded and you know to move to entirely new software and i'll be so happy when that's done uh so oh, I bet. <laughs> so that's a long answer to your question there with some with some tangents well uh, I, I expected a long answer because it is—it's a huge process making these games, and 
and probably not a lot of a lot of people know that you hand test each game to make sure yeah. they work before you ship them out which is very smart as well yeah um which uh maybe some other companies could take lessons <laughs> from you about that i'm not i'm not gonna, <laughs> but that's not that's really great that, but, yeah. no no don't um uh, but yeah it's it's really great so that people know that the game is going to function when they put it into their their systems yeah. when they get it home and most games are actually tested twice they're, especially the ones like the flash program they're tested immediately after i program them before they even go into a cartridge uh and then because it takes time about to pull the game out of the shell and then they then fix it or whatever and put yeah. it back in uh so yeah some games are tested twice same with the jaguar games since they have you know like 90 connections that i have to solder for each game <laughs> uh i want to make sure Ugh. all those work as well and the jaguar is very oh finicky because it has a huge connector a cartridge connector the cartridge connectors on those systems are flaky as it is uh so yeah. you know with a red screen of death on those <laughs> uh yeah yep yeah. yeah. uh so like i said this is probably the this is so you confirm the largest releases of games you've ever done in one go the jaguar games are in the store right now um but um the sheer coordination of getting all these working parts plus getting ready for prge oh that <laughs> happened just just recently yeah. so um PRG. must have been overwhelming uh it must take a lot of organization to keep everything on track can you Talk a little bit about how you're able to manage like all these working parts, not just the games, but the developers and talking to them, yeah. just the, the organization of everything. I've, is, I've heard you work a lot with spreadsheets. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. It's, and the more games there are, the, the, basically each game is a separate project with usually different people involved. Uh, sometimes it might be a little overlap with, with like with John Champo's games, like Nathan might work on artwork. Sometimes David, David Exton will work on artwork for those. And, and he'll do a few games like he did Load Runner as well uh and obviously yeah. and uh kicks for this for this round uh but yeah so it's basically yeah. like a little project with different people involved uh for each one and trying to line up everything to get everything printed is is probably the biggest challenge uh because if you've got 24 games you're you're trying to release you've got 24 boxes 24 manuals uh maybe you know like 40 something labels because there's two labels for each of 2600 700 game uh right. and getting everything to printer in time and then getting have time for hard proofs where you get physical proofs you get to look at everything which is always a good idea so there are no surprises uh and then yeah. you maybe have to go through a couple rounds of that and then when that's done then they go into production and that can take a week two or more like boxes are the worst boxes can take a month or two to get done uh and then getting it all in time for when you have a hard deadline like prg and obviously that, yeah. didn't, all, that didn't all go to plan this year uh because the boxes for yep. the new games did not show up in time they showed up on the tuesday uh, after the show oh. and i stayed in portland to collect oh. them and I didn't even get a chance to look right. at them before I got home, but I was able to go pick them up uh, from Toby's store in, in, in Portland. It's Coin Collector, or ah, I can't remember the name name of the store now. Coin Something Collector, but it's in it's just north yep. of Portland. Uh, and he was nice enough to they were nice enough to let me ship a lot of stuff in advance there, which we collected on on the Wednesday before the show. But anyway, that's irrelevant. Uh, so yes, it is <laughs> it is a lot of work getting everything. The coordination is is a huge pain in the ass, and that's one reason, another one of many good reasons, not to release so many games at once, but to do smaller batches of yeah. releases, so they're more manageable. And then people can predict, uh, like you know, if we do games in in April and then in the middle of summer and then in, in the fall for PRG, it's more predictable, and right. people can expect, you know, oh yeah, there's going to be some new games from the Atari store in April. Uh, or whenever, yeah. you know, as opposed to just the one big dump in in uh, in in the fall for PRG, which of course didn't happen for 2020 and 2021. Uh, so yes. that was just in the store alone, <laughs> and the, those shipped it very that that those didn't actually stick to that same kind of schedule in the fall. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so it's it is a lot of work, and like you said, spreadsheets. Uh, there, uh, I must <laughs> I must have had 25 spreadsheets alone just for managing everything. Uh, wow. I, it, I mean, and also you know. I basically need like project management software, but that's even more complicated yeah. to deal with uh, to manage all these <laughs> yeah, projects. Yeah, then you have to deal with the project management software. Yes, exactly. On top of and it. learn how to use it. Uh, but yeah. uh, I mean, it works, and you know, pretty much everything. It, the show was great this year. Uh, there were a huge number of people at the event. Uh, you guys, you know, you were there, of course. You know, uh, there was yeah. there was a yeah. lot of pent up demand for uh, the show since it hadn't <laughs> happened in three years or two, yeah, well, three years. It, and yeah and uh we had more systems there than we ever had before there were more developers oh my god present than so had ever many. yeah it was absolutely crazy it's great people came away came from so far away uh you know it was in australia it was really and europe a fun all time. over canada yeah and of course you got to interview a lot of people 
Uh, and yeah, it was a great opportunity to talk to all the developers. And, and for next year, we'll have even a larger booth again, like a 30 by 30 booth. This year it was about nice. T- uh, it was 32 by 21. Uh, and oh, wow, we, uh, so had to bigger go, next yeah, year. we had to go with a, a strange layout this year. Although I like how it worked out where the, it had kind of had that yeah. center column where we were sitting and then the game systems all on, on both sides. That worked out pretty well. Because it puts us close yeah, to the Yeah, so front you could address booth. people on both sides exactly. really easily. Yeah, it worked out pretty yeah. well. I, didn't, I honestly had no idea how it was going to work. Uh, because it was a really strange <laughs> booth. And just seeing it like in a CAD, like on a, a design program, and you, you see it from the top down, you don't really know how it's yeah. going to work out. And how, you know, if you really have enough space between those aisles, if you really have enough space to put all the merchandise down, if, and just every, you, know, yeah. you have a lot of, enough space to have huge piles of games as well without them getting in the way. Yeah. Plus all the banners we wanted to have. You know, we had 20 different banners at the show, yeah. games. It's very because, impressive. Because there were so many games from the last three years, I wanted to at least highlight, you know, not just games from this year, but some from the, the previous years as well. Uh, and again, next yeah. year, and then now a lot of this stuff is also up in Portland. I, I have a storage unit now in Portland. Uh, because, oh, wow. Because I definitely, <laughs> needed, definitely needed another expense. Uh, so <laughs> That's right. Next, but it's, exactly. probably, it's probably still cheaper to have that storage space up in Portland versus driving everything or shipping everything back or driving it back with a trailer or whatever. And then, yes. and then bring it back to Portland next year. Since right now it's the only show that I'm doing that may change in the future. If I can streamline, you know, things where I can do yeah. a smaller, bring a much smaller subset of, of hardware and games, uh, and then be able to just drive to yeah. shows or fly into shows. Oh, Oh, my earbud cut out. Oh, are you there? Al? Yes. Oh, weird. Wonder why this one's bad. Uh, oh no. Well, one works. <laughs> you take it for now. Okay, Tandy can't hear you. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry that about that. Um, so I, I, I'm guessing at the storage unit you keep all like the hardware, the the monitors and like consoles and stuff. Probably not the games as much. No, the yeah, it's like you said, a lot of those Commodore seventy two hundred two monitors. Uh, a ton of systems are there now. Uh, and plus all the hardware, power supplies, uh, the AV cables, the, the, the controllers, uh, the banner stuff is all there for the banner stands and, right. and a lot of the banner hardware uh, and just a bunch of other stuff. No, the, like you said, the games definitely had to come back. Uh, the boxes had to come back with me. Mm-hmm. And there's a bunch. You know, I, I did have to bring enough systems here back home so I could test everything, test, continue to test games and with monitors. So I did drive up and I did drive back and the car was completely full on the way going on the way back as well. Uh, but at least yeah. next year, I know that there's you know a ton of stuff already up there in advance. I wanted to. Sh- I spent over a thousand dollars just shipping everything up to the show this year. Uh, so it's a lot of time, plus a lot of time to pack everything well. But you know, obviously, expense in getting it shipped up there, and then hoping everything arrives, and hoping that things don't get damaged, yeah. which you never know until you can you collect the boxes, and then you take a look at them. It would have been better to ship yeah. everything on a pallet with a freight company, but. That requires a bit more advanced planning and having everything ready on that pallet well before the show so they can pick it up and bring it there. <laughs> so uh, that wasn't going to happen oh this God. year. Yeah. 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 Well, PRG is the biggest one, so it makes sense to, to concentrate on that. Um, but uh, obviously, it's nice to go to some of the other uh, ones, maybe closer to home. <laughs> would be good, too, right? You mean like the Classic Game Fest that's here in Austin every year? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably people in, in Texas are like, why is an Atari age here? What it is, is going it is on? a pretty big show. One one, <laughs> yeah. one issue that I've run into going into different shows is the, the collection of people who are familiar with uh, homebrew games and, you know, not just for Atari stuff, but, you know, in general for all these yeah. classic game systems is really a very small percentage of people who attend m- many of these shows. So they go to the Atari yes. and say, I went to some random show in the middle of the country. Uh, you know, they may see the Atari each booth. They see we're selling games for the Atari 2600 or 5200 or whatever. And then they see the games at $50 each. They're like, what the hell? You know, when they can, <laughs> when they, when they can go, they see other booths or vendors where they've got yeah. old Atari games. that are just a couple dollars mm-hmm. each or a few dollars each or $10 maybe for a box game or something. And so you, yeah. you kind of have to teach people that like, these are brand new games. You know, they're, they're, they were made yes. 40 years after the, the console came out. You know, they're made by yeah. hand. You know, we had to print everything in much smaller quantities than, you know, Atari and these other companies did. So, yes, they're going to be more expensive. Plus, of course, the games that cost $40 back then, you know, that was a lot more if you adjust for inflation today. Oh, yeah. And they were, like, you know, th- These games, like $50 is cheap yeah. for a game now. Like, like yeah, it does translate to $90, $100, $110. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, absolutely. And that's that's real expensive. And people comparing like a one two dollar loose cartridge in a box with a scratched up uh, cover and no manual and no boxes. Yeah. You can't really compare those kind of things. No. So so PRG. Uh, of all the shows, not including at the old Classic Gaming Expo, where everyone was familiar with this concept, uh, but uh, PRG definitely has, I think, the largest collection or a, lot, a very high percentage of people who are uh, familiar with Atari Age, uh, yeah. and familiar with the, the entire you know scene of developers that are creating new games for these consoles, uh, and so you know you get a lot of people coming right to the Atari Age booth when the show opens uh, to buy those new games, uh, and then just a lot of traffic yeah. in the booth throughout the show. Uh, playing games and then talking to developers. It's great to have developers there so they can see people playing their games and enjoying them. Plus, talking to other developers yes. and you know, it, it, so there's a social aspect of it as well. Uh, and again, and, pr- and probably like the ports draw people in because they're familiar with some of the games that you're you're showing and putting on display. It's like, oh, I know this game, and then they can come in and see, oh, there's other other games or they go in and go i didn't know this was released for the 2600 it's like well now it is yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> and then they can see yeah. the original games yeah. that people are making and go oh this is a really cool concept or it's similar to something i'm familiar with oh it's a platformer it's a shooter or, or whatever yeah undoubtedly the, the ports you know the the nostalgia for the old arcade games or, and not even just arcade games but things like load runner now uh, or Boulder yeah. Dash, which we've released Boulder Dash before, but now we're doing it again in an yeah. indefinite release where it's not just limited to a certain number. Uh, but those games were really right. popular for anyone who had, you know, a Commodore 64 or Apple II or Atari 800 or something like that. Uh, and, you know, yeah. so those games have continued to live on with ports on modern platforms and phones and things like that, especially Boulder Dash, but I think they've ported that to just oh. a ton of different platforms. Now. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Uh, so you know, yeah, yeah, between the arcade games and and old classic games that were popular on consoles and and computers, uh, that definitely gets attention. You know, from people it's like, wow, I didn't know this was made for the twenty six hundred. Holy cow, I can't believe this was done on the twenty six hundred. You know, like <laughs> like yeah, John yeah. Campo definitely gets that response from a lot of his games. Oh, uh, you know, hundred percent. Like seeing Robotron running uh, on the twenty six hundred oh with the it sounds great, the graphics look fantastic, and then being able to see you know have two player simultaneous. Uh, on that, two, yeah, two which, double joystick like, yeah, simultaneous, which the arcade game obviously <laughs> didn't have, and uh, you know, so yeah. just even adding features beyond the arcade games, uh, plus options yeah. and stuff, which you never had in the arcade games. It was just you put your quarters in, it was one or two players, and you go. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Uh, so it was really exciting, so, and, yeah. and, the, and the hardware being pushed to limits like that is just—it's absolutely insane. Oh. So it is, yeah. Things that you never thought could be done are now possible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, lots of tricks and uh, new things being discovered all the time that make things possible, like the bricks in Zookeeper. Oh, it's yeah, like, okay, yeah. here's a new trick. Yep, that and was it remarkable. just opens up a whole new world of, of games mm-hmm. that can now be developed because of a new discovery. Yep. Yeah, yeah. and Zookeeper... Uh, new... Sorry, go ahead. I'll... I just no, no, I was no, getting ahead. off another tangent. But Zookeeper <laughs> is another interesting one as far as anticipation for a game that was supposed to have been released or developed back in the day and they did start on yes uh and you know like audio was done and just some basic stuff uh but that was the game you know there was always people may have believed it was out there in some form finished but obviously it never was but for for john and 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 crew to to actually take that and turn it into such a great facsimile of the original game and like you said using those tricks to get the bricks to differentiate it is just absolutely remarkable it really is there, I, every time he comes out with a new game like that, I'm like, man, I never thought I would see this game on the Twice Center. Uh, and not 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 just see it in the Twice Center, but see it done so damn well uh, that you know you have as much fun playing this game on the Twice Center as you yeah. as you would have on the arcade game. Uh, and yeah, you know, that's that's the big thing is the playability yeah. of a lot of these homebrews is top notch. Like. Um, yeah, you can compare a 2600 game to something on another platform. And maybe the graphics will be better on the other platform. But I find the the gameplay on the new homebrews that are coming out are astounding. Like, they just feel so right. They're honed in so well. And they go through a lot of testing um, with the community that by the end, it just feels as good if not better than maybe the arcade version yeah because of all the extra things that are thrown in yeah absolutely like uh you, you, you know again john has a lot of that stuff you know medieval, uh, medieval mayhem is a great example of that where you know it's oh, warlords yeah. and it's much closer to warlords the arcade version of warlords than atari's version was back then even though i played the hell out of warlords and it's still oh, a ton too. of yeah. fun especially <laughs> if you get four people together 
Uh, but just having oh all, God, just having best. all the options in the menu when it boots up, you know, just gives you so much yeah. more than the arcade would do. But you still get the same fun experience, you know, if you enjoy the arcade game, just with you know icing and everything else on top of it. And of course, I love yeah. the original games as well. I don't want to slight them. And you know, I, I no, no, no. You know, they're having the original games that have come out of nowhere, especially with some unique idea that hasn't even been done before, is just fantastic to see. Uh, you know, yeah, on, I, on the I, I love see, playing those new games that that uh, yeah, the original games that people yeah. come up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like, oh, this yeah, this is a, a new twist on you know even maze dot eating games or oh, yeah, you know, yeah. platformer. Um, let's let's use like Dragon's Havoc for example. <laughs> the power up system in Dragon's Havoc. It's like I've never seen this before. It's <laughs> It's really unique, and yeah, uh, yeah pe- there's still fresh ideas be- oh, being developed yeah. for all these systems. Yep, absolutely. So I really appreciate the people who come up with original games for these systems. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really you know doing ports. You, you know, you worry while you have the idea and the and the the, con- the gameplay. You know, you don't have to really come up with yourself, and you know, you're mimicking the graphics. It's still really difficult yeah. to do that because you're trying to duplicate the playability and the graphics and the audio for uh, an arcade game that was con- yeah. considerably more capable than a 2600. Uh, and so the that, added pressure of expectations. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, people know what it's the like. The people yeah. that are going to buy the game, they're like, oh, this isn't quite like the arcade or, yep. you know, this could have been better. It's like, you have to bring your A game when you're making a port. Yep. And whereas an original game, you know, you don't have that nostalgia and familiarity. Uh, so you've got to come up with something that's original yeah. and fun to play and that's really hard to do is coming up with a, a game that's actually fun to play you know you can do really good yes. graphics and sound and, and whiz bang title screen and stuff like that but if the game's no fun it doesn't matter uh so that's yeah. you know it's a challenge <laughs> versus you know picking up a port at least you have that aspect of it done uh but they both present you know both camps presents completely different challenges uh as far as you know making something that people are going to enjoy so it's nice to see both yeah so I know this question comes up constantly in the forums and online whenever new games are being released. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk about uh, any upcoming plans for the future ability to offer digital releases. Yes. That's every single time any game from Atari Age is talked about anywhere. Yes. Oh, when, yeah. when can I get a digital release? That's another so thing. So I know you're working on the new store. Yeah. Is that part of it? Yes, absolutely. The, the current store has very poor support. Uh, for di- digital downloads, it does have it, but it's very mm. basic and it, it just sucks. Uh, the new store is, is much <laughs> more capable on that front, and mo- among many other fronts. Uh, so yes, and it's taken a long. You know, I've said, yeah, I'm going to have that new store online. I wanted to have it a year ago, and it didn't happen. But it, it's absolutely, you know, basically, I have a few things I need to get done uh, before that happens. One, you know, I need to be caught completely caught up in orders. I need to ship the developer game, the developers, all these new games uh, before right. the games are added to the store. Uh, I need to get right. all the, the Jaguar games. I have two weeks of orders for those. Those have, those are all going to be going out this, this upcoming week. All the new, like God's Cast Engine and Stormbringer. Uh, and right. I have to ship, I still have to ship all the games for the PRG people who bought the games. The boxes, I'm sorry, the mm. boxes. Uh, boxes. So I, yeah. I, you know, I bought stiff cardboard mailers and bags and everything and put the, uh, the glued boxes in and so they get there safely. Nice. And those are all going to get sent out early next week. Uh, and then I can add all the new games to the store. Uh, which okay. would be good. And then, you know, then I have to go through, you know, it's going to be a good month, month and a half of just nonstop building games and shipping. And then some, yeah. <laughs> then sometime in January, I, I can take a day off, relax. And then one, one, yeah, right. yeah, one day, maybe on a weekend, New Year's maybe, day. One, maybe two days, <laughs> maybe on a weekend, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like this weekend. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. A day off. Mm. And then, uh, <laughs> and then after, you know, I'm caught up in all those things. And obviously I still have to worry about orders coming into the store. Uh, but then I can yeah. basically focus my efforts on getting the, uh, uh, the new store online. And I've already played with the software right. a considerable amount and okay. I know what I want to do with it, but it's still getting it's, there's hundreds of entries in the current store for games and other items. Uh, and basically yeah. I, I had to pay a and third the party and graphics and yeah. Well, yeah, you got the, you, you know, getting the, the database from the, one store to the other that's a lot of work because their database format's the difference so basically i had to pay another a third party to do the work right. of actually translating everything converting everything from the database tables from the old software to the new one uh and some things i have to do myself like the reviews uh i'm gonna have to you know write scripts to do that manually oh boy uh, and then the yeah. theming the theming is a lot of work making it look like it matches the rest of the yep. site at least you know somewhat uh that's also really it's a lot of work uh, getting the shipping, yeah. getting the shipping all set up properly is a lot of work. The the payment right. processor, I'll be using a different payment processor. 
so right. that, you know, getting that set up and tested is a lot of work. Getting the, the UK VAT stuff set up properly. You know, I have a UK VAT number now or certificate for, right. for shipping. Yay. And That's the store, current store highly can. Highly called for. Yes. Yeah. The current store can ship now to the UK. And I do have, you know, I have been shipping to the UK. Uh, That's great. But, you know, there's still there's a threshold of 135 pounds where you don't need to collect that. And the current store doesn't know that. And it's just stupid software. Right. So that's one thing that's we worked out. <laughs> <So you, laughs> because I, I'm, at some percent, at some rate, I don't remember if that 135 pounds or at the UK rat rate actually is different. Uh, so to do it properly, you had to, you had to charge a different rate at that point. For like for the first right. X amount, it's the 20 percent. And then something after that. Uh, and it doesn't do that. So basically what you're supposed to do is after 135 pounds, just ship it normally. And then the bat will be collected uh, when the package is incoming into the UK. And I'm going to have to do the same thing for EU soon as well. And given how much of a pain in the ass it was to get that done for the UK, I really look forward to doing it for, you, for EU. Uh, but it's yeah. necessary if you want to sell <laughs> into those countries and, and do it properly. That's true. So, But yeah. yes, yeah, so, yeah, so, so digital downloads is definitely you know one of the most important things about getting the new store online. A lot of people ask for it. The home authors ask for it. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. Customers ask for it all the time. Uh, you know, There's so many methods of playing games now. Uh, without needing a physical system and, and hardware, yeah, there uh, are. that you know, yeah. you know, being able to expand and offer the you know digital downloads uh, for people, you know, not just you know, a lot of people do give away the the binaries for free, uh, but being able to give them something extra as well, like if you buy the game, you know, doing some kind of deal where you can get the digital download with it, and then of course they're selling them by right. themselves, and you know, including like a manual, so you still know what the hell you're doing. As opposed to a physical right, manual, a PDF manual or yeah. something, yeah. So, and then you know, working out with each author, you know, the you know, working out how much we're going to sell the games for, how much Atari Age will get, how much they'll get, uh, and you yeah. know, to try to be fair with everyone too. So it is a lot of work, but it'll be really nice to get that uh, implemented finally. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so we need to move on. I but anything else you uh, want to add that we didn't cover that uh, well is important? Since I know a lot of people are asking, I did. Out Mentioned this briefly as far as when are the new games going to be in the store? Uh, it, it's going to oh, be, yes, there's other yes. aspects besides what I mentioned, the things I need to get done, like getting the developer games out, stuff like that. Uh, we have, we have, for the 7800, we have three new circuit boards that we designed for games that were released at DRG. Uh, and then nice. Grizzards also had a new board for the 2600. Uh, that board's already done, that just needs to be ordered. But yeah, for, uh, let's see, uh, Popeye, Petsky, Attack of the Petsky Robots, Pac Man 40th, and Keystone Coppers all use. Uh, brand new boards, uh, and you know, they, some of them also use the Hokey, which is the new Pokey compatible chip. Uh, so right. while we did have those games available at PRG uh, with prototype boards, uh, you know, d doing all this and getting it all done for the show, we, you know, there were some issues with a couple of boards, just minor tweaks had to be made. So we have new prototypes yeah. that should be like here any day now, and those be tested, and then once those are done, we'll get them pr into production. And once they're in production, then I'm more comfortable adding those games to the store, but that'll be the main holdup. Uh, I'm not really in a okay. hell-bent rush to get these in the store, but obviously I do want to get them because I've spent tens of thousands of dollars up front on getting everything ready. You know, all the hardware, all yeah. the the, the boxes, manuals, everything else for the show. So obviously I'd like to, uh, you know, recoup the investment in that. Uh, yeah. So, but so is it going to be a, st a staggered rollout? No. Or are you going to wait for all at once? No, I do it all at once because a lot of people do order yeah. games for the 2600 and the 700 and the 2200 and some and the Jag right. Jaguar. So it's. Shipping wise, especially yeah. for international customers, it's a lot better if they can just do one big order. That's uh, true. That and it's a little sense. easier for me too. Staggering releases, like I did it for the Jaguar games, because those are typically Jag people who are buying Jaguar games aren't also buying games for the twenty six hundred, twenty seven hundred. That's not always true, but a lot of times it is. Uh, and I, yeah. I have everything for those games. I do have a bunch that are already built that, that I brought to PRG, uh, so you know I can get those out pretty quickly this upcoming week. Uh, but no, I'm definitely not going to do any more staggered beyond that. It's just everything else. So the other 21 games will all hit the store at the same time. <laughs> well, that's that's good, yeah. And I will send sense. email out. And I will spam <clears throat> the store waiting list if, or mailing list. If you're not on the mailing list, you can go into your account in the store, and you, you know you, there's a checkbox somewhere to, to receive uh, emails from the store if you don't mind getting spam from the entire store, which is not something I do very often, usually just with new releases. Pretty seldom. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, and um, a couple of people mentioned, yeah, they like to keep their boxes sealed and play the ROMs. That's another yeah, yep. uh, demographic of people that, that I didn't think of. Although, yeah. technically, the boxes aren't really sealed. Like, I don't shrink wrap them. No. I don't I don't put kind of yeah. some kind of sticker on it that's difficult to remove. <laughs> the only thing you could consider seal is, yeah, they do come in a you know fairly thick bag that has an Atari sticker on it uh, to, yeah. to close it. But, you know, that's a removable sticker. 
you know, you can remove it pretty easily. <laughs> so I do want it people. To, I do, yeah, I do want people to play the games. I mean, if you want, so I'll yeah. send you stickers. You know, I'll send you more of those stickers if you want to be able <laughs> to right. put it back on the on the, the plastic Resealed. afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I can understand people want to. You know, obviously people want to play the game just in, with using a flashcard or something else or an emulator, and then yeah. keep the game on the shelf. So. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you uh, for doing all the work that you do and making these games possible in the box and getting out to people and and being a hub for the community and uh, yeah, just being a conduit for all the creativity that goes on uh, uh, by the community and all these developers. It's it's uh, it's great that there's a place that we can all go to and uh, and uh, you know come together. Uh, thank you, but you know, a ton of thanks has to go to the developers themselves and the community in general, supporting yes. developers. Without people making these games, spending a lot of time developing new games, without the just the amazing amount of talent on every front, you know, the, the programming, the, the design, uh, pixel art for the games, uh, you know, boxes, you know, the artwork and the designs for the packaging, and then that's audio and music and everything else, and the people doing the boards as well. I mean, there's so many people involved. Yeah. Uh, the hardware, there would be nothing. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, people enjoying the games, people giving feedback, you know, as developers developing. Yeah. There's just, there's so many facets to it. You know, while it's great that, you know, Atari Age uh, has become a hub of, you know, development, especially for, you know, the old Atari systems and, but even ColecoVision and television and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, you know, I can only get so much credit because it's just all the people in the community <laughs> just make it possible. So, and then you guys yeah. as well, I appreciate, you know, all the attention you give to the, the Homer games and not just Atari Age stuff. Uh, I know you spent a oh, lot of time you. doing this. Going to PRG and interviewing the developers is great as well. Uh, you know, doing yeah, these doing uh, these Atari Age days uh, is is fantastic. You know, especially with these big <laughs> batches of games. You know, being able to talk to the developers all at once or oh my God. or in two days, uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and I know it I'm, going, I'm yeah. going over my time. I'm looking at my time. Oh yeah, it's twelve thirty-seven. I better let them go. Uh, but again, yeah, this one, yeah. Money thank... Funsters get mad at you. <laughs> yeah. Is he next? Oh boy. No, no, no. So... It's fine. All right. I, I'm sure we'll catch up. Um, yeah, it's it's fun and uh, to do this, and lot, I yeah. saw uh, a, a need for it. Uh, I saw a, a place that uh, oh, nobody's you know really celebrating these in video form and showing them off too much. So yeah. I thought, uh, yeah, I could step in and do that. Absolutely, with the, with the, the knowledge that I have. So and it's, it's, great it's, it's have, a lot of yeah. fun. Thank you. Yeah, and we're you know we're going on to year five next year. Wow. That's so. insane! I can't believe that. <laughs> or, or year six next year, actually. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Well, you know, uh, so I've, thanks so much, Al. Well, I've, I've been doing this for, this is not including the Atari 2600 <laughs> Nexus. This is, Atari yes. launched in April of 2001. Uh, 21 so, years, yeah, yeah. 21 years, plus the, the Atari, 2600, Atari 2600 Nexus was several years before that. Uh, but obviously, yes. that was a much simpler, you know, site and didn't have homebrews or anything like that. But yeah, it's, I yeah. can't believe it's been that long. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So I can't believe you guys are really going is. on your sixth year of this as well. It's just I remarkable. Can't believe it either. Yeah, <laughs> no. it's, it's, it's flown by. I'm not sure if that's fun, also guess. the yes. pandemic as well. The pandemic oh, yeah. helped. Yeah. yeah, it just it, the it's last like few years. Two like, years yeah. gone like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, I'm, uh, it's been I'm amazed so I didn't get COVID at DRG somehow. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. I know. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All yeah. right. Okay. Well, we'll say goodbye right. to you bye -bye. and thank yeah. you thank once you. again and for look, all your efforts. I look forward to continue watching everything today and tomorrow. So and have fun. <laughs> you bet. Bye bye. Talk to you thank again you. soon. Yep. Bye bye. Oh, thank you, Al, for everything you do. The cats are nice and calm. That's good. They just got fed. Okay. So uh, we're going to be going on to our first game which is Keystone Coppers for the 7800. Let me go find the box, if you could queue up uh, Lewis on there. All right, hopefully he's ready to go out there. Hopefully. Yeah, sorry for uh, running into your time. There we go, it's just too much fun. I always do that. I always talk, uh, talk too much to the developers and it just keeps getting later and later, especially during the awards show. Yeah. Um, well, we've got Keystone Coppers here. We'll start the unboxing once we have Lewis on the line. He's thinking about it. I think we're connected. I'm not sure his video oh. is on yet. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. Um, so we just need for him to... Uh... There how, we go. How, there we go. <laughs> helps Hello, I, Lewis. Helps if I turn the camera on, right? Ah, uh, it's just a... <laughs> uh, 
a minor thing in the whole scheme of things. So here's your game. <laughs> wow. Look, in the box. Keystone Coppers. Awesome. We're ripping off that Atari age seal. Oh, yeah. It's going to be oh, unsealed. Oh, I'm going to turn off the spammers calling us. Yep, there we go. Okay, so let's unbox Keystone Coppers here. So I'm going to um, flip over to the webcam view so people can see it up close. So are you uh, watching the Twitch stream as well? It's on the other so screen. Can... I'm doing my very best to not take sneaky looks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. That's what you want to you be able to see your new game. So there you go. There's yeah. the new box. Well, it, it's, it's the first time I've actually seen the box in, in, in a physical um, format because I'd only seen the mock-ups before. And as Al mentioned, we had some, there were some delivery issues getting the actual physical boxes to Portland. So, yeah, That's wow, right. that, that yes. does look good. Let me try and get this straight. There we go. So there's the front of the box. Excellent, excellent artwork. So maybe if you want to talk a little bit about the packaging for this release and who was involved and, and what went into it. Yeah, so that was a, a, a from from the forums, Atari Boy 2600, he did the um, the, 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 the art design for the box. Um, and I think the cool thing with the box is the art actually wraps around. It's actually a wraparound design. Oh, let's, let's show this off then. So while you've got the... Oh, Text and screenshots on the back. It does actually wrap. It's a th mm. it's like a 360 wrap around of the um, um, oh, officer yes. chasing the robber down. Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, when, yeah. when I, when I first saw excellent. the concepts, the pencil sketches, I thought, wow, this is this is good. And as it developed, it were I was blown away by how how well this one turned out. This is really a fantastic piece of art. Yeah, it's beautiful. No, there's not a public order of show. It's a surprise. <laughs> which developer's coming up next and which game? Uh, except to the developers, because they know when to be, to stand by. Okay, so uh, even the top flap, it extends right to the top. That's yep. excellent. Let's take a look at the cartridge in the manual here. Oh, oh. Oh, there's something else in there as well. May have to go to the uh, full frame for that. So let's. Here's the cartridge. Fitness. Obviously, most of the cartridges are the same as the front of the box. Um, looks awesome. I love the green color. It really pops. Yeah, it, it's it's such a such a beautiful piece of artwork. I love it. Yeah. And okay, well, look at this manual. Now this is not your normal manual. <laughs> uh, this is a newspaper, the Muddy Vision Gazette. Now is this actually the manual? I don't know if I can fit all this in actually. Let's get this back a bit. And I noticed in the chat, uh, Al mentioning that um, it's white, but it'll ship Love with that. a bit of an aging look to it in, in the um, in the in the release. Oh, really? Yeah. So this yeah, will be like aged. a sepia tone. It'll have an aged look. Yes. Oh, nice. I got a crisp uh, white one. <laughs> yeah. James hasn't been aged yet. No, it'll, it'll have to happen we need to get some tea bags. Yeah. Rub the tea bags over it. That, yes, that's, that's true. Right. I have done that for a film, and I did use tea bags to age something. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Did, it worked paper, really well with paper. Yeah, yeah, with normal right. paper. I do remember that. So this is this is great. Oh, new instructions enclosed. Okay, so this is the actual instruction manual. So very innovative design. Did you come up that's with this? Fun. That's a lot of fun. We, we the, the design idea was actually completely borrowed from the the 5200 and A8 version. They do a similar thing with the newspaper, and I thought, you know what, that would be such a cool way to um, to do the manual. You know, to follow that that style. Um, oh yes. And, and you get a mini poster with it. Beautiful. For, yeah. for those it, people who want to uh, post it on the wall and hang it up. Yeah, and in, in the that newspaper manual, we, there's a few um, there's a few Easter egg adverts in there and things as well um, that some folks yeah, might I especially recognize. love this one, real culprit revealed. Who is who is who's that? <laughs> so uh, this is the mastermind behind the the uh, store theft, I'm guessing. Uh, apparently, apparently, so I have no idea. <laughs> no if, idea you, if, if you flip it over to the <laughs> other side, there's um, of the manual. There's um. A few. Uh, there's, there's a shameless plug for Artie in there as well. Oh, 
And there's a, there and also, we go. Uh, ivory tower console mods. Nice. Yeah, ivory tower console mods. Love the art. Yeah, who could that so, be? Huh? Jesse, yeah, you, you, owe me some dollars. you owe me some advertising dollars, Jesse. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. A dollar every uh, every uh, every box. Well, this is great. So let's pop it in and check it out. Switch, switch away from that. Okay, here we go. Atari Oxmas, ready. You have it. We used it. Pokey detected and used. Save key detected and used. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> I've got all the add-ons. <laughs> You're good to go. Oh. This guy? Uh, yes. There you go. And Tanya will be uh, playing it there. Um, so, um, there is a huge nostalgia for Activision games. Let's get past that. Um, myself included, of course, because they made some of the best, uh, the best games of that era, especially for the 2600. I, I, I don't so, think we have any sound, James. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm I must have, anything. I think I muted it for, we, um, uh, let's restart it. Yeah, because we, we did don't a, miss we did, we, um, we did a complete revamp of the Atari Age oh, jingle to match the game. Awesome. Ah, Ready. that's, yeah, we definitely don't want to miss that. So press button. Nope. Is it, is it coming through? Oh, we can't hear it here. That's fine. Oh, that's us. There we go. Yeah, they heard it out here. We didn't. Press this button. isn't no. the stream? No, okay. we hear it here. Okay, fair enough. So did everybody <laughs> hear it? We can hear it. Good. Okay, good. Press button. Keep going. Okay. That's loud enough, right? Uh, maybe one, a little bit one louder. notch louder. I can. There. That's better. Perfect. Okay. So, like I was saying, nostalgia for Activision games. So, how important was it um, to retain the looks and the sounds and the feel of the various original versions of the game? Because people are going to be familiar with, very, very familiar with the with this game. Yeah. Like, for instance, I always. When I cap catch the um, the crook, I always jump on his back. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're not jumping on his back, are you even playing right? I mean, that would be the question. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, I don't know why it, it, everybody did that, but it's just something that you know, it's just happened, right? I think we should have put a check in there. If you don't jump on the crook's back, you get less <laughs> bonus points. <laughs> oh, that would be so good. Must be in air while jumping. Yeah. yeah. But... It's, it's a good question, James, and what I tried to do when looking at Keystone, I there are, there are a lot of other versions you got. The 2600, I think there's um, either a Coleco or an MSX version, I think there was um, the A8 version, and then later a, a C64 version. And this version, it, it doesn't really follow any version 100%. I kind of took the bits that I liked out of all of them and mixed yeah. them all together. So it has a lot of influences from the A8 and the 64. For example, in, in, in the 2600, right. when you're on the same screen as the crook, you'll get no obstacles. This version you That's do. That's right. That's right. And because you can. So, uh, and yeah. there's no rules. Why not do a mix and match of how you want to see it or the best of, you know, yeah. add in extra graphics, um, like the, the stuff on the tables in the background. And, and it's great that you made them, you know, more like a, a background black or a, uh, but by a the time brown, I got so to, they don't... To figuring out that feature, sure. I was seriously, seriously running out of palette space. So that was, it worked out <laughs> nice, but it was a necessity. It was, they're going to be black and brown or they ain't happening. Yeah, because right below them is the counter, which is black and brown as well. So yeah. it worked out really, really well, obviously, um, because they don't interfere with the things that you have to collect or avoid. Um, yeah. So it just it's not a nice distraction. Background. You can see that it's the background of the play field and it's not going to be getting in the, you know, the player's not going to be mistaken for something they have to interact with. Yes. And, and, um,. Spiceware says, I like the directory uh, pointing hands by the elevator, and that's very handy as well to know which direction the elevator is going up or down. Yeah, and I think that was one that I saw in the, I think it was a C64 version I had there. I thought, you know what, that, that's a really nice 
it's just a fun feature to add, and it was relatively, you know, there was no real overhead in, in doing it. It's like, well, I can rejig the tiles no. and feed that in. Yeah, it's it's great. It's a, a great add-on. Um, and were any of these um, things that you added in something that you always wanted in? Like, actually, which which version did you play growing up? <laughs> So growing up, it was very much Mostly. the 2600 version. Um, I used to play, right. um, it was one of the few games, because my, my, my mom was never really into games at all. So this was one of the few games that she would have a crack at. And it was the usual parent joystick thing, where if they jump with the joystick, obviously it makes him jump better. Um, <laughs> and, and that was like, all, whoop, yeah, exactly whoop. that, exactly that. <laughs> so that was, um, this was a game I used to play or, when I was when I was a young or, kid. If you're flying, you turn, yeah. or... Oh, yeah. it, it just makes it easier to turn and jump and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, definitely. <laughs> so the, 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 the 2600 version was my version for growing up. Um, and the, the 2600 yeah. version was the inspiration behind doing this port. Um, I, I was tinkering around one of the evenings, and I just thought, you, you know what? This this would really work well on the, on the 7800. And then before you know it, you're into that rabbit hole of... You know, well, I'll just put a screen together, and then well, I'll just throw a few lines of code to make the. <laughs> and before you know it, you've got a half a prototype that kind of works. And that was um, September 2021, and then the game finished. I think it was August of this year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Oh, congratulations, Tanya! You got to the fifth screen. <laughs> you earned a promotion. And there's all these extra things that you've added in as well. Were there any of these on any of the versions? Um, Not that I'm aware previously? of, no. These were little touches, I thought. I, I got the idea for this from, you know, like on Pac-Man when you get the intermission and Mr. Do. Yes. And I yep, thought, you know yep. what? Key Keystone could have its own little intermission that doesn't really, it doesn't change the game. It's just a little bit of extra fun. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, make it worse or make it it doesn't change it at all. But these are really nice animations. Mm -hmm. Really reminds me of like um, Cinemaware uh, games mm. where they had uh, very cutscenes. Yeah, a lot of really elaborate cutscenes in the game. Mm -hmm. um, so great, great job on that. Um, you actually usurped one of my questions. Um, <laughs> where <laughs> it is. I've noticed a resurgence as of is of late porting Activision games um, to platforms that didn't really get uh, certain releases of them, especially the C64 and the yeah. Atari 8-bit consoles. I don't know if you've noticed some of that, um, especially on the C64. I wish I remember the group or the person that's doing the C64. Antonio one. Savona and, and Steve, I, I don't know his real name, Steve 83, I think, from the. Cause I've, I had a chat with him about a few things because um, he. he he wrote me and mentioned that he liked um, the 7800 version, so we we had some um, we had some interesting discussions about other things, maybe. But <laughs> a conversation for another day. That's right. There's always there's always things in the works, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so so was this um, more? Of Filling a missing piece in, say, the 7800's library of like um, games, or more of a love of the game that motivated you. I, I think it was a combination. I think it was a combination of it was a game that the 7800 didn't receive back in the day, and I think it could have. My, my thinking was always, it, it could have done a really good job of this game. Um, yeah. And also, purely, it was a game that I loved. It was one of my all-time favourite games on the 2600, and it was... I think when, you, when you're making any game, especially a port, if it's not a game that you enjoy, then <laughs> it's... Because you, you code, you test. And even with a test group, you're doing lots of testing yourself. And if you don't enjoy the base game, that testing becomes really monotonous really quick. Um, and, yes. you know, it's a lot harder to make a good game when you don't really enjoy the game. Yeah, I think that's a big uh, difference between, um, say, the industry, the video game industry, where it's work for hire, and the homebrew scene, where you have a vested interest in mm. making the game the best it can be, and there's there's not really a deadline, you, nobody's on your back. There are deadlines, but they're, they're self-imposed deadlines, if anything. Yeah. 
So it really well, works I'm, out I was, well. I was really lucky with, with coppers that I could work with. Um, my my three musketeers of, of 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 Jesse, Robert, and Steve, who who tested yeah. the game to within a, literally an inch of its life, and they were always. Um, making suggestions for, for tweaks and they would test every version of the game out and, and without those guys it, I'd, I'd probably still be testing it myself and it wouldn't be finished. <laughs> yeah and you know having that variety of people testing it out and, and even us on the stream where Tanya was able to jump past the, the escalator <laughs> somehow. I, 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 um, I was scarred by that Tanya that was uh... <laughs> <laughs> if I can break it, I will. That's, that's I used to how, wake how, up in cold works. sweats and think about Tanya. <laughs> oh, how did she get past horrific. that escalator? Oh. <laughs> you run Which over to the computer but, and But it was, it was fantastic bug to find, even though it was live in front of all those people. Um, yeah. But it was kind it's of... I'm sitting bug. there looking at the code thinking, I have no clue how you've managed to do that. And it turns out there was a, <laughs> there was a one pixel gap and you found it. <gasps> Oh, really? It's, it's one like, pixel? It's yeah. like all those speedrunners wow. that you find that jump perfect at one frame. point, you could yeah. jump on a perfect, you know, perfect arc and you jump through the collision detection and, yeah, and you found it. Oh, my God. Good job, Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, if, if there's a bug to be found, I will find it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, inadvertently. <laughs> um, yeah, there's something to be said for a good, a good uh, beta testing team. Yeah. Um, not only to find the bugs, but to suggest things to make the game better. Um, to not only improve what's going on that's already in the game, but to add things to it as well to make the game even better. Yeah, definitely. And and I have to just reiterate how lucky I am to work with you know other folks that want to be involved in these projects, like um, you know Steve, Jesse, and Robert as testers and. Um, yeah. My daughter did a bit of artwork on this as well, Bethany. So I have to, I have to give her a shout oh, out. All along, she'll start making me cups of tea. So, <laughs> uh oh, and that's, um, that's not good. And people like Bobby. I mean, Bobby did the music since Papalooza. You know, he's he's always a willing, a willing contributor yeah. and collaborator on these projects. Um, you know, and I've, you know, Matt Matt Smith. He always helps get the, the, the pokey stuff into the ROM. So it's there's a bit of help there. And folks like Mike, Mike Sarno, Mike's always on hand with the wealth of knowledge and, and experience that he's had. He, he'll, he'll always answer a question and help out. Yeah, I always see him on uh, the forums uh, interjecting and, and giving helpful information, so it's great. And we'll be talking with him as well. Um, so, uh, anything else you'd like to add about uh, Keystone Coppers before we move on to your next game? No, I think the, <laughs> the only thing I'd like to just by closing to add is um you know just thanks for everyone that's shown an interest in the game on the forums people that are you know lots of nice messages and um messages of um you know um encouragement and, and for al for all the work he does i i got a glimpse behind the scene because we got to portland today early i flew over from the uk and i got a glimpse right. behind the scene of the, the the effort that goes into setting that event up and and having worked with Al on a couple of releases, the, the, what goes in behind the scenes on getting a game ready oh, to go amazing. out the door, and it, it's it, it's it's a phenomenal, phenomenal amount of effort. I cannot thank Al enough for what he does for the community in that respect. Oh, I, oh, exactly. The, the, the amount of coordination um, and organization that he needs, that he puts into it, mm -hmm. I I just don't know how there's literally enough hours in the day. Yeah. To do that, that's it's unbelievable. Like on the previous screen, I saw you walk under a ball. Like you can. I swear you can. I saw you walk. You, you can. can. Okay. If you time it just well so enough. that it's consistent with the A8 and the 64 version. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Tanya might be having some trouble. The, the I just... ran the wrong oh, way sure. earlier as well. Um, and that's uh, also uh, um, another version bug which we, we replicated and kept it. It's actually mentioned in the manual, crook confusion. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, what was I going to say now? Damn it. Oh, well. <laughs> um, any, uh, anything else you'd like to add? I think... No, I, I, I think we're good to that it. one, James. And just, yeah, thank you for everyone that's um, just shown interest in the project. Yep. Definitely. Okay, so right. let's move on to the next uh, game. One second. Oh. Yes, because Lewis has two games today to show off. Two? Or is it three? Nope, two. <laughs> you guys make so many games. Uh, it's unbelievable the output that the uh, developers have, the community. So there's a number of people that we're going to be 
talking to today that have more than one game that are being released at the same time. I don't know how you guys find the hours to do it either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Try and keep a semblance of order going on here. I don't know if I can. I want to throw these on the floor where the cats can get them. Okay. So the next game under the Muddy Vision label mm -hmm. is 2048. Look at that beautiful cover there. Um, so let's talk, uh, if you could talk a little bit about um, the artwork and the packaging and uh, who worked on it. Yeah, pleasure. Um, so 2048 was one where I, I really did this as a bit of a, it was an experiment that just turned into a game. It was one of those, it just went that way. Um, the artwork on the box was actually done by my daughter, Bethany, Bethany Hill. Um, she provided oh, yes. the, um, the the initial um, the drawings and the sketches. And then we pass that on to Al, and then I think Al worked with John, uh, Atari Boy, to help just to hone that and, and streamline that a little bit into what we have on the box now um, for that for, for the for the view that we have. Um, yeah, really, really nice artwork. Is beautiful. She, yeah. Uh, does professional art in any capacity? She, she does it as a bit of a bit of a bit of a side gig, if we can call it that. Um, she has her own little label right. going on called Pocket Carrot, and she does all kinds of art and prints and designs, bags, and but she she does love to get involved in you know different projects like like this. And I mentioned as well, she did some of the artwork for uh, Keystone, the game over screen in Keystone. She designed that, and I then coded it into the game. Oh, very nice. There's the cartridge, all shiny. Let's just tilt it. So there we go. Well, I, I do like how this one turned out as well with the you know the dark, the contrasting black background and the really bright tiles as well. Just like in the game, it's uh, it work. It came out yeah. really nice. Very very nice. And it's like, well, how can you do artwork for numbers? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so let's put it in space. <laughs> that was so. that, that was the that was the exact challenge we had, James. It was kind of, well. Oh yeah. Bloody hell, are we going to make a, a decent illustration for a game that's just about numbers on a grid? But we, <laughs> it's it's we got a challenge, a decent, but she... Uh... We, got a decent, we got a decent picture in the end. Oh, yeah, it looks wonderful. And you've got that um, nice, squiggly, colorful rainbow line that's uh, often associated with uh, yeah. 80s uh, Atari bit, games. A bit of a nod to a, a certain brand. Yeah, that has Vision in their name as well. Indeed. <laughs> It would, have been, it would have been churlish not to. <laughs> That's right. There we go. Very nice. So let's pop this in. And uh, we'll see if we can pop it out afterwards, because I don't think Tanya will let me. Because <laughs> um, she loves puzzle games. I so do. I get, uh, I get sucked into, the, into this game. So, so you've yeah. made an excellent game for her. Yes. So let's. Uh, and she won't give me the joystick either when we play a puzzle game. She's no, like, no, true. let me do it. I'll get it's it. Like, okay, I'll we're moving on. I'm like, no, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> not <yet. laughs> Muddy Vision reproduction. That's an interesting. Because um, not a port, not a reproduction, or a, not a, uh, you know, other, other words. How did you land on uh, Muddy Vision I, I, reproduction? I kind of have the idea that. When I do a, a port, they're never a 100% port. It's always a port with my own kind of, you know, because there might be multiple versions of the game. And I'm not porting one right. version, so it's kind of a blend of all the versions. So I thought reproduction was just a more a fair way to describe it. Yeah, that works. Um, so this is a very well-loved puzzle game. Yeah. <laughs> That most people have played at least once in their life, I would suspect. At least, at least gamers, people who play games, because it's just it's very approachable and understandable instantly. Like you, okay, you move it, you combine them. After, I mean, there's once you understand how everything moves around, yeah. then it's the, the, it's there very are some, quick. There are some strategies that you can pick up and you can hone in on, and and yeah, I, I'll go back to. My, my original comment was it, this was this was an experiment that turned into a game. I mean, if I'd have decided, <laughs> hey, you know what, we're going to make this into, we're going to have all these different gameplay modes, then then there's probably ways you can. There are other variants out there we could have mixed them in, and but it was right. just one that was just. Um, I, I actually looked at when I 
when I, I looked at the dates on the files for this one, James, and I started it on the 1st of oh, November, yeah. and I completed it on the 12th. It was the, the shortest game I ever... It took, wow. It was 10 days between <laughs> starting the file oh, and putting the release candidate, which is what became the final copy last year. Yeah, I... I mean, for a more advanced programmer like yourself, that that does make sense because it's a single screen game. And once you've got the basics down, it's all about making sure the rules are being adhered to uh, while the game's being played. Um, yeah. So that things aren't combining improperly and it's displaying the, the resulting addition. Um, yeah, that's really fast, though. <laughs> very, very fast for a turnaround it, it, for a it game. It was one of those where you, you just get into a project, and it, it, it's not an overly complex piece of, you know, software. I mean, the, the original concept behind the 2048 game, it's very well documented, uh, you know, in, in, in lots of right. places. And there were lots of source materials to work from to figure out how a port on the 7800 would work. Um, right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Can you make that full screen and get rid of the mouse cursor? Yeah. Double click. There we go. Thank you. Probably driving some people crazy like me. <laughs> um, so, was it was it the popularity of this game that drew you to it, or your own love for the game that convinced you to bring it to the nope. seventy eight hundred? <laughs> what was the motivation for this? It was, it, was, it, it, it was bugging me how they did it. <laughs> I tried uh, to figure okay. out how to write a similar game. It was more of a, it was a technical challenge. It was a case of, they've made this game on other platforms, and it's not my usual yeah. bag. I don't normally do puzzle games. I normally do little action games <laughs> yeah. like Keystone or EXO and stuff like that. And I just thought, I just want to do it just a, a nice simple puzzle game without hundreds of different sprites and just do something simple. Yeah, it does seem a little bit out of your wheelhouse. Like it doesn't, it doesn't follow along with some of the other patterns of the game. It was a nice change yeah. of pace from from the other game. Yeah. It was just a nice. There's a, it's a technical problem to solve, and I just I solved it, and then I figured, well, you know what, with a with a bit more polish, we could just I could release this, and people could have a bit of fun with it. And I think that's a, a common theme for developers. Like it's it, a lot of games start with. Can I do it? Is it possible on this system? Can I overcome the limitations of this system to display this graphic or fit a game this big into this small of an area? And yeah, yeah. that's the can I rabbit hole, and they're very dangerous. <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah, usually they don't publicly reveal and. Uh, their findings unless they can do it because yeah. uh, oh, wh why play? announce something I, I, if you I've go got a whole oh, or sometimes of, they do yeah i've got a whole directory of broken projects that never got past the that they, they, <laughs> they never emerged from the can i rabbit hole yes and, and i know a lot of uh games have developed from people going i don't think it could be done yeah and that's 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 a bit of a, a, a dangling carrot as some people do for like, oh, I bet this game couldn't be made on this system. It's like, well, maybe it could. And then a developer takes it on and yeah, which is a lot of fun. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Um, so some developers are really good at their own games and uh, some admit that they're better at making games than playing their own games. So how good are you at 2048? Have you been able to make it to 2048? I, I have once. Um, I'm much, much better at 2048 than I am at Keystone Coppers, believe me. Um, 2048, it was, um, it, it is the kind of game that I, I do play games like this for a bit of fun. They're easy to play, easy to pick up. They're not stressful. You can, you can almost go into autopilot. It's like taking your brain off the hook and you can just play. And for me, that's yeah. a lot of, it's a lot of appeal in that type of game. Yeah, I, I actually showed him my, um, my, my father-in-law, um, and he's totally not into these kind of computer games at all. And I showed him right. this version of it. Um, I put it, I, I hooked it up on my mister and, and, and got him playing with it. Yeah. I, I couldn't get the gamepad off him. He's now got it on his phone. He's playing 48 <laughs> all the time on his phone. And he's like oh, 70. That's great. He loves it. And that's that's a, an interesting aspect of it. I know VHZC makes games for um, younger players. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, a lot of the games aren't, some of the other games aren't as simple as this, where you can just pick up and play it, like you said. And it has this mass appeal that yeah. may draw 
people into you know buying the game or even getting interested in the console it's like oh there's games for x demographic as well so it's really good to um make these types of games because you know there's there's a hole in the the number of types of games like this where you know puzzle games or matching games or you know mostly rpgs for the 2600 and 7800 but there's always room for puzzle games and and that's that's a good point james because i think there are a few gaps in the catalog for for the for the 7800 because it was such a yeah. You know, back in the day, I mean, there was only so many releases for it. Nothing, nothing like the other consoles. Many. Yeah, and there are. And it's a, a very gaps. capable machine as well. Yeah. So there's, it's wide open, and and uh, games for the seventy eight hundred for development, and you know, I I see it picking up quite a bit in the past couple of years. Oh, like it's gone crazy. The 7800, it's gone... It, I mean, I came across Matt. doing work yeah. on the on the, on the 2600, and I blame... I, I fully blame Matt Smith and Mike for that because <laughs> the tools that they produced it kind of you in. got my interest. I thought, oh, wow, look at this. This, is, this makes it really easy to develop. Um, so I, I fully, <laughs> totally hold those. All my games, if you hate them, you, you, you have to hold Matt and Mike responsible fully. <laughs> That's right. It, it is. It is the tool makers that really um, make it available for the developers. You need the both. You need the developers to be interested in, but you need the tools to be able to make these games. Yeah. And I think that's where the uptick. Uh, after speaking with so many seventy eight hundred developers, it's it's the tools that really has pushed um, yeah. the ability to to create these games. It, it does allow you to rapidly prototype as well. I mean, Keystone. I mean, I've got stuff running around and jumping within a day or two of of, of starting to figure that project out and. Without those tools and that accessibility, that would have taken a lot longer, I think. Or, mm-hmm. or I'll rephrase that. It would have taken me a lot longer. Right, yes. Because <laughs> uh, the 7800 Basic is quite uh, quite robust. And oh, yeah. So a lot yeah. of people use it and turn out unbelievable games. Like, just take a look at EXO as an example. Um, I know Pac-Man Plus makes his games in um, assembly, I believe, right? Um, but you, you take a look at a lot of these other 7800 games, and they're really pushed to the, the limit of yep. what the 7800 can do. So it's, it's really the, a capable the, language. The, the beauty of 7800 Basic is you can you can mix in bits of assembler under the hood, which, right. from, from my own perspective, as my ability with the language and, and with the, the, the platform and, and with assembler has, has, has increased through that you know more and more. If there's a problem, it's usually a case of, well, there's an under the hood solution. We can throw a bit of assembly in there and fix that. <laughs> yeah, which is which is handy. You can mix and match it for things that you need a little bit more speed or you need a little bit more lower level access to the to the yeah. hardware. Yeah. Um, so you've posted that um, the royalties from 2048 uh, will be going to charities that support research into dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, after I'd completed the game, um, the code in, and I put the ROM out onto the forums, I, I got into reading um, an article some, somehow, somewhere about how puzzle games and memory games have been scientifically shown. There's, there's a white paper, and it helps folks that have um, um, dementia and um, memory loss problems, Alzheimer's and things like that. And then I got to yeah. thinking about that a bit more, and I thought, well, you, you know, the game's available in so many places for free but if people want to buy a copy um if i get any royalties for that then i'm quite happy to just to donate those i mean it's it's it just seems like a a a good thing to do um there's no other agenda it was just i figured this might be a good thing to do Mm -hmm. yeah i've heard uh various things like games or uh, music really help Mm. Uh, like familiar music for people who have dementia or Alzheimer's really help them to, um, you know, create a spark in them and bring them back yeah, a bit. Yeah, so that cognitive recall. And, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's really great what you're doing with the with the game. That's that's great. Um, so are there any upcoming uh, upcoming games that you'd like to talk <laughs> about or anything else you'd like to add? I know EXO is still in uh, development. A little bit. Yeah, no, um, e- EXO's done. Um, I'm, I'm working and talking to Al. Um, I think we're probably going to slate that for the um, the spring releases. I'm, I need to confirm with oh. Al what the what the plan is there. Um, that's great. Well, we've even got you know boxes, manuals. That's that's 
that's in a very advanced stage. Um, so there's no. The, yeah, there's no, really looking forward to that release for yeah, sure. Yeah, th that's going to be a, a, a one I'm excited for. Um, I, I, I do oh, have. He confirms um, it. Definitely yep, spring. Uh, <laughs> it, it's in writing. Somebody screenshot it quick. That's right, quick. <laughs> but um, in terms of other projects, um, I do have another couple of projects that are kind of um, cooking along. Um, one yep. I'll mention a little bit about um, without going into too much detail. Um, so I've got a new Bernie game that's coming along. Um, that's great. Th there yes. was a prototype of an older game that's still kicking around on the forums. That's not abandoned. It's just parked. But there's a whole whole new game um, that I've been working on. Um, Art is also coming along as well. Um, that should be completing probably early next year. I'm doing a bit of a code rewrite on some aspects of that with the stuff that I learned on the new Bernie game. So I thought, well, we can bring that oh. forward in. We can bring that into the arty code base and make that even better. Are you talking about the Bernie game where you're hopping on the, no, on the no, squares? No, this is oh, a whole new, one. new Bernie game. Whole new Bernie game. Oh, that's excellent. That's exciting. But that, that one's probably going to have a demo ready um, in a couple of weeks, so I'll, uh, I'll be sure, sure to send that excellent. your way, James. Oh, excellent. Looking forward to that. And um, I really love RT. Um, I, I can't stress enough the, the control of RT is yeah. so good and allows me to play the game with some competency it, <laughs> over it, Hero. It's it's one of those where um, I loved Hero, but I hated some of the control aspects. So I thought, well, oh, if I'm going to make oh my, my own God, version, yeah. I can take a few artistic liberties and tweak the things that I like and, and the things yep. that I don't like. Um, RT is probably about 40 to 50% done. It's going to have a little bit of a Great. rewrite. Um, but then that should be one that completes probably, I would guess, early next year. So you've got a, a lot of pokers in the fire, mm. which is which is great. <laughs> so that's excellent. Um, anything else you'd like to add about uh, 2048? No, just just the usual um, big thanks to Al for helping to get it into the store. Um, big shout out to my daughter Bethany for helping with the artwork. Um, the usual folks who did some testing. I think you also did a bit of testing on that one, James. So uh, thank you to that to you on that. And um, no, thank you. Yeah, just a big thanks to uh, the community that support the developers that offer encouragement and suggestions. We might not always listen and take them, but you know <laughs> it's always appreciated. Um, yeah, and a big, for sure. Yeah, and, and, a, and a big thanks, James, to you and Tanya for putting the show on regularly. I don't always get to watch it as live as often as i would like um being in europe it's uh but i, I do yeah. get the catch up ones on youtube that's always great to catch up with. oh that's great well thank you for for watching and it yeah we put this on at noon so that we can incorporate the european uh viewers and yeah i, I yeah, call this pretty much cover every other year when you had daredevil um and i think you'd forgotten yeah. i was in the uk and i was on at 3 a.m <laughs> oh, oh my god oh so, I, I apologize for that. Yeah. When you open that thread up, like straight away, yeah, I would like to be on early this time, please. <laughs> yeah, specify that. Not and then that's really. why I put it out to make sure that I could accommodate everyone at their at a time that they don't have to, you know, wake Reasonable up for. Reasonable at least, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then go back to bed after as well. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Um, yeah, thank you for so much for uh, coming on nope. today. Pleasure. Thank and, you for having me. And, and for making these unbelievable games, and I'm, I'm looking forward to all the new ones that you're coming out with as well. Yeah. Great stuff. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thanks, Tanya. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. I'll have to pry uh, the joystick out of Tanya's ah. hands now. <laughs> um, so we'll talk with you soon. Bye-bye, Lewis. Thanks, guys. Bye. Oh, that was great. So we're, we're caught up with time. I thought, uh, you know, we'd fall behind a little bit, but uh, we're doing really well. So if you could message uh, Thomas, make sure he's good to go, coming up. And I can, uh, oh, I can clean up some stuff, I think, maybe. That'll be good. <laughs> Al says he can come on and uh, chat some more. Uh, maybe, if, if Thomas isn't ready, that'd be good. <laughs> we'll see. Because everybody has their own assigned time. We, I allotted a half an hour for each person. Oh, let's not pull out the game while the console's on. That's a good idea. Um, oh, he's mostly joking, building games. So he's not... Oh, so you can't come back on. Maybe we can uh, feed the cats or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so yeah, next up we're going to be having uh, Thomas Yen. Thomas Yen, sure. uh, And he has two games that are, that are coming out. Um, Vroom and mm. Boulder Dash, mm. which is very exciting. I don't think I'll be able to put these back in there in their holders very easily. Let's see if I can build up a stack here. Mm. Mm, not too easily. Let's try not to get it all cluttered. Any response from uh, Thomas yet? yet? We are a few minutes early. Yet. We are, yeah, so. Yeah. Let's put that there. How's everybody else uh, doing out there? Emergency update for James. Jeff has a power outage, no internet access. Oh no. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, he's got a bit of time for it to come back on. Someone tried to re redeem tree time. Oh, that's okay. Why Becca's don't we? Once uh... tree time, we can do that. We can do it on here. Yeah. Why? Why can you even redeem it? Uh, they can still redeem it, unfortunately. Oh, okay. But that's fine. Sorry, Thunkus. We'll, we'll do tree time. <laughs> we'll do tree honor time. Honor of Thunkus, because I turned off everything so it wouldn't um, oh, uh, interrupt too much. Okay. What's so we going are. On oh, here? we are going to do treat time. Yes. There we go. So let's do the bells over here. Get the bells going. It's over there. Over there. Over here. Come up here. Up here. I, have to, I don't know if they'll understand. This is a completely different environment. Yeah. You maybe, maybe. Over here. Over there. Ring, ring the, the bell. Bells. There's ring the, the bell. bell. Okay. Now ring it. Ring it. Ring the bell. Put it right in front of the camera so he's facing the camera. There. Oh, there we go. There you go. They can't really see the bells. There we go. Yeah. Ring the bell. I don't know if there's, I don't know the if there's space for two cats up there. Oh, he's not understanding. No. Maybe Atari can figure it out. Atari, Ring the get bell. up there. There Ring you the go. Bell. Ring it. Ring, Ring the, the bell. bell. Oh, he's thinking about it. Oh, oh, don't do that. <laughs> He did touch it. He did. Do you want to give him one? Yep. Here. There you go. Good kitty. Okay. I have to ring the bell. Ring it. <laughs> he ran off with the treat. Ah, uh, hurting cats. <laughs> I will put it there. Ring the bell. You're going to get cat butt. Well. Attack of the giant cats. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh, can you? Oh. What? Do you want me to switch? They can see the chat. Oh. It's okay. Here. Let me just fix it. One second. I can put up something else. Hold on. Nope. Nope. I got it. I got it. I fixed it. No, don't hit my hand. There we go. Okay. Okay. No, you have to ring the bell. Ring the bell. This. There we go. Good kitty. Ring the bell. Come on. Sprite. Ring this bell. He's too crazy. <laughs> He's too crazy. He's too crazy. He hears the <laughs> other cat each eating and he ran he keeps running off. Uh yes. A phone we call could do a good. phone call, yeah. yes. That would be good. Thank you for sending the phone number. So if he's not able to come back, uh, we can do the, the phone. Chelsea Doni Mao says, uh, pushing the bell off the edge is totally valid. <laughs> it yeah. would be. Yeah, yeah, we'll accept that. Ring the bell. Ring it. Atari's figured it out. Black cat. Sprite. Ring the bell. Ring it. This. Oh, yeah. Good kitty. Good kitty. You got it. Oh, well, that's all. I don't want both of them kind of. Yeah, give them two. There we go. It's cat <laughs> chaos. One at a time. I don't want to handle Cat chaos. Cat chaos, indeed. <laughs> That okay. works too. <laughs> That's valid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where'd that bell go? Oh, it's way over there. That's okay. There's one on. There's one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're so funny. Oh my god. Good. That was a good solid ring. Okay, ring it. Ring it. Good kitty. Now they got it now. Yeah, they've, they've it got out. it now. <laughs> this is the biggest anybody's seen the cats. Yeah. Oh, press it. Ring it. No, don't push it. Ring it. Come on. Good kitty. Yeah, they're quick learners. Yeah. Did you give him? 
Oh, don't. Give yeah, I gave it. I oh, gave okay. it. So, yep. Good kitty. Tari, Tari, don't watch anymore. You full of treats? Hit it. Hit it. No, hit the top. Hit the top. In the cat's defense, the table Good is kitty. quite slippery here. It is very slippery. Close. You're close. <laughs> Bring it. Ginormous gray cat. Ring the bell. Got two left. A cat's natural instinct is, <laughs> yes, it is to push everything off the de desk table, etc. <laughs> okay, we've got one more. Who's going to get it? Sprite's right by the bell, so there yeah. you go. All right, good kitties. Good kitties. Might be easier to just put out one bell. Yes, they don't need to compete. Yeah. Good cats. Anything from Thomas? I Nothing yet. Oh, spots. Thomas. Thomas. It's green, though. Okay, so, so... he might might be ready. He's got five minutes, but... Yeah. Um, we'll we give him stall. five minutes. Never had this back. problem before. <laughs> <laughs> Where we're Usually ahead of we time. Ah, oh, you still got the... Oh, there's Sprite. Now they're looking for more food. Oh, poor kitties. <laughs> poor fluffy cats. Hi. Yeah, no, you got treats. Are you happy? <laughs> so the... the Oh, you guys can't see the consoles, but uh, yeah, we've got uh, we've got a bunch of consoles. I have to bring up all the consoles mm. from downstairs, recreate everything mm -hmm. with the uh, audio video switcher, the upscaler, tons of cables. Oh my God, it took all of yesterday to set all of this up and to test it all. It was a lot of work. Unbelievable. I'll post a picture uh, tonight. Setup? Yeah. Uh, after mm -hmm. and of course the green screen as well. Yeah, yeah. We don't actually have a moving Moving blocks in behind us <laughs> and and today the the green screen works really well It, did turn like, out really it looks good. great. We were quite surprised because this couch we're on is kind of an aqua color Yeah, and it looks blue. So we think it's making it slightly transparent, but I don't not really enough to see it. through it yeah, it's I don't think funny. anybody can see no, it looks um, fine. the green through it. Oh no. Thomas is online. Hey there we go. Okay. All right. Let Shall I connect? Turn back on the laptop. There we go. Yes, please. So we're going to be talking with Thomas Yench. In his new game. Vroom. <coughs> Hi, can oh, you hear me? Somebody's there. I can hear you now. Uh, the audio is not right. I don't know what it is. It's not going via the headphones. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's it's there. We can hear you. But mm -hmm. you can't Full see screen, me, please. right? Not yet. Not yet. No. Hmm. This. Oh, it's there. We go. <laughs> but I want. Hello, Thomas. Hi. I would. How are you doing today? I would like to change a setting here. Ah, wait a moment. Sure. Okay. You've got time. <laughs> you're, you're earlier than expected. <laughs> I was, yes. It's surprising. We, we're, yeah, very surprising. <laughs> Normally we're quite late. It, uh, it builds up and builds up until we're like an hour late by the end. But yeah. I think we can stay on track this time. Yes. Thankfully. Yeah. Funny. Oh, we've got different sound for you now. Excellent. Sounds a lot better. Less it, echoey. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so we have two games for you today that you're going to be talking about. The first one is Vroom. And uh, so let's take a look at the packaging for this. So maybe you can talk a little bit uh, about the packaging for Vroom. Uh, the artist and uh, what went into putting together the packaging. Um, yeah, the, the, the packaging is by Corey Kramer, and um, yeah, it, it, it was a pretty simple job compared to how much and I annoy my other designers, so this time it was <laughs> quite fast, um, I think. Maybe you ask Corey and maybe he thinks different. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you settled on two O's for Vroom. <laughs> yes, um, I think two is enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not vroom. Yeah. So great artwork really reflects uh, what the game is about. Um, a lot of colors for the different cars, and the flames are excellent, and the uh, 
the the flames extending into of the uh, title there as well. That was my idea. <laughs> ah, excellent. Glad I highlighted that then. Um, and it shows uh, screenshots on the back, which is always nice to show off exactly what's inside the box and showing off, you know, the great graphics ah, we that made are in it the game. Blurred intentionally because when you play the game, um, ah, yes. everything is blurred except of your car. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it shows the action. So that was definitely a choice that you made to uh, mm -hmm. to make it blurry on the back. That's great. So let's open it up and take a look at the cartridge and the manual. Colors look nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the colors turned out really nicely. The very, very colorful, very bold colors. Excellent look on the cartridge there. Cool. Plug that in. Yeah. Let's take a look at the manual. Really look ah, very forward nice. to getting it, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's beautiful. And the acceleration stripes along the top, that really is nice to... to that surrounds the, the name of the instruction manual. Yeah, that's and they continue on idea. inside. Corey's mm -hmm. idea was ah. a, was an acceleration, and my idea was to wrap it around like we did for Robot City as well, and oh. so I, I like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. It goes all the way around the top and the back. That's great. And, uh, yeah, great instruction. In, and in the background, there's the flag and the car. It looks really, really good. I think there's a warning some kind of a warning about the game because it, it's a pretty oh. tough game i remember Alan, it's intense i remember Alan had some problems playing it <laughs> <laughs> yes yes yeah it's it's an intense game it's it's very fast paced very fast moving yeah and uh can be challenging for some people to to get the button pressing right but uh that uh, makes it so you get a lot of practice in it. Yeah, yeah. it feels almost like a music game where you're timing. Yes. It's all in the timing of, of hitting hitting your mark as you, as you play. It's really a rhythm game. It is a in, rhythm in, game in its essence. Yeah, yeah. But there is no <laughs> there is no rhythm in the game. I mean, it's it's only reaction. Really. That's true. Yeah. You yeah. have to you have to be prepared and on your toes for the rhythm. It's yeah. an unexpected rhythm. Yes, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's pop it in and uh, check it out. Am I playing with this controller? No. Okay. Well, now this game is unique in uh, many ways. First of all, it's probably, yeah. I can probably confidently say it's the first eight player game to be mm. re physically released for the Atari 2600. Eight players simultaneous yeah. for the 2600. Uh, are there any, any other ones that anybody knows of? Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it does. It does use the. Uh, you can use the Quadtari, and it is it playable without the Quadtari as well. Yes. Yes. Mm. So people are asking, well, how can you play eight people with a Quadtari? There's quad right in the name of it. <laughs> That's impossible. It's only four. Well, thanks, Oops. Kat. <laughs> Well, the secret is that, yes, it has four ports, but if people remember, you can plug paddles into it, mm -hmm. which two paddles per port, which equals eight players. Now, no, it does not directly support a full paddle control, but every single button on every single paddle mm -hmm. is supported. And uh, Thomas has cleverly made the game fully playable with just the buttons on the paddles, mm -hmm. which is ingenious to be able to make it up to an eight player game. Yeah, that was, um, I mean, when the Quatari came out, we were talking about the possibilities somewhere in, on Atari, I just suppose. And, um, play on this. and I think I talked, I don't, I don't remember who it was. And I said, uh, yes, but it does not support pedals, which is a shame. And he said, yes, mm. only the buttons. And then I thought, yeah, I should do a game with which works with eight buttons. And yeah, from then, yeah, I had the idea with the accelerators, and then it was pretty straightforward. 
Most, and, most um, challenging part was balancing the gameplay, so it's not too easy. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, you succeeded not, uh, in that, easy. that's for sure. It's, <laughs> but it's not too hard either. Not too hard. You know, like it, it is you definitely... Get, um, you get to own your mistakes. Yes. Like yeah. you know that your, your timing is off or your timing is on right away. Yeah. So, okay, so let's pop it in. And I'm putting on the 7800 because, you know, I have that plugged in. I didn't even think of that. We don't even need the 2600. Well, you have it here, <laughs> just in case, you know. <laughs> yep. Okay, so let's uh, give it a go here. And a nice acceleration noise when you start it up. Mm. Am I going to try to double hand it? I can't hear it, but I think the stream can hear it, I hope. Yes, it looks like it's going through on the stream. So, oh, Tanya's doing two players it's at once. It's very hard. Never works. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> you get out of sync. Not recommended. On one, at oh, least. that's right. Because everybody's playing on the same track. So if you do it exactly the same on both paddles, <laughs> no, she's already out of sync. Oh, oh, that's a challenge. Um, so. Which get one is to the which? Question. I'm getting confused now. Oh, I've totally died. <laughs> yeah, so when you start up the game, you're able to know which paddles are active and who's who, because when you press the button on your paddle, your car will light up. Yes. Which is great. And the scores are, are shown as the distance you went in the time that was allotted to you. Yes, and you have 30 seconds and you made uh, 107... Yeah, 1,750. You can calculate how fast you went on average. It's pretty fast. <laughs> That's right. It's pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> very fast cars. Yes. Um, so this game, for me, harkens back to the horizontal Activision games such as Grand Prix and Dragster, but now with eight players at once. Um, did the idea for horizontal multi-person racer come first, or was the fact that the Quad Tari supported eight paddle buttons that sparked the idea for you? I, it was uh, the Quatari first, definitely. That, yeah. that came first. And, and and did you have any inkling of, of wanting to make a racing game, or it's like, oh, what type of games can support eight people, and then, okay, well, to have eight people on the screen, well, they kind of have to be all stacked vertically or else it's going to be flickering etc etc yeah yeah the vertical separation is very important for eight players um so it had to be something like a racing game because you can't do much when you have only one di dimension to move on um right everything else is flickering and um, i don't like flicker and uh, <laughs> so it became yeah like if this. it can be avoided then it's best to avoid flicker as much as possible yes yeah. And, and what, what I also like about the game when it t turned out the AI, which is um, making mistakes and it's adapting to, 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 to the player. So if you're playing better, ah. the AI is getting better, but only right. within each uh, difficulty. Yeah? So it's a, it's a range, which, which right. covers. So a low to high range of okay it can't do too bad but it can't do too yes. too well and that's and that's really good for because you really you are playing against yourself essentially yes um but you're also playing against them in terms of oh can i come first out of all these people um but you can also try and beat your best score so it plays on two different levels mm -hmm. which which is great but but oh Originally, it was meant as a party game. I mean, it's something when you're in a party with people and play it for maybe five minutes or so. So it's nothing which is... The idea is not to do longer sessions with it. And, uh, right, yeah. And you will... F I mean, you found out that uh, after a while, these intense games become tedious. Uh, tedious, not... not you get... Um, yeah, you get bad worse after some time. Because <laughs> you lose concentration yes. if... And this that's, is, that's very true. And this it's, is, it's a very fast-paced, intense game, yeah. and your eyes start to go, whoa, after a little <laughs> bit. Yes. Um, so a party, party game is, is a great um, explanation for it, and to be able to play up to eight players as well lends itself really well. 
And for people who don't know how this game works, it's, it's fairly simple. You want to press the button when you're over the arrows and not press it when you're not over the arrows. And, don't e and, and you have to make sure you don't press it too early or too late. So when you press it, you accelerate. And when you're pressing it outside of being on the arrows, you Tanya decelerate. Tanya's not playing. Mm -hmm. She doesn't notice. <laughs> you're not, no, playing. not playing. I'm not? No. no. Oh my goodness. You have to press a button. Press a button. There you go. <laughs> That's not have, the first time that's like, Why am I doing so bad and or so good? <laughs> I was doing better than normal. That's the scary part. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so is. it tells you whether you're playing or not by when you press the button and it lights up your car. And your car is a bit lighter when you're, when you're a human player. So these computer player cars are a bit darker. So that's why right. how I notice. It's subtle, but once you know. Yeah. Andrew Davies says, Metric is period correct. In the mid-70s, President Ford signed the Metric Conversion Act, so Metric for an Atari 2600 game seems bang on to me. <laughs> yes. Well, outside of the U.S., it's very normal for us. <laughs> of course it's normal. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> and, and even for Andrew, it should be <laughs> as well. Um, so, like I said, this is probably the first simultaneous eight-player Atari 2600 game to be physically released on the system. So do you, do you actively seek out ideas that push the limits of what can be done on the console, such as Boulder Dash and Vroom as a programming challenge, or is it just a side effect of trying to make the get best game as possible? It's more a side effect. I mean, um, I, I'm trying to make each game as good as possible so that I like the result. And yeah. um, sometimes there are challenges, challenges which I have to overcome, and then, yeah, then the new ideas come up and um, trying to bring them to life. Yeah, and this one was probably a, a a thing of opportunity where where it sparked the idea. Yes, with the quad. Target. The coding is not was not really a problem. I mean, the AI was a bit of a problem, and getting the sound right was a bit of a problem, but everything else was right. pretty simple. Ah, and, and the CPU time, because you have to track eight different cars, and the, the <laughs> yes. 2600 runs out of CPU time, and because this is a real-time game, you you must uh, process each car, each each frame, else it, it won't work. So, so you didn't you didn't cross over any frames uh, uh, while doing the processing. Tan Tanya missed again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you missed. Press the button. Oh, there you go. You got it. <laughs> she was playing. I was not playing oh, at all. No. <laughs> your car. Because you're 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 just paying attention to the arrows. So. Your, yeah. Your car has to be Good. right when you're playing. It, no, it's right. Yes. Yeah, you can see there are all the other ones are a bit dull. Yeah. Right. But you yeah. don't notice it when you're just paying attention to oh. the arrows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's so concentrated on the arrows. <laughs> um, talking a bit about the uh, sound, actually, now that you bring it up, there's eight cars, and you wanted to be able to have the sound of eight cars at the same time, but you only have two channels of sound. How how did you manage to do that? Lots of cheating. Cheating. Um, I mean, um, <laughs> I think the top, the, 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 the human player cars have priority. I, I don't remember all the details. And I think okay. the cars in front have priority above, uh, before the cars behind. And um, right. so it has to sound right and it has to give feedback. So I think Tanya will hear the squeaking when she misses the, the bus because <laughs> she's the only human player. And right. um, I think the, the computer never gets, um, that's, that was the plan, never gets uh, black bars. So it's not never missing, but it's missing the, the acceleration bars a lot. So that's how right. it right so, Then you have um, free space for, for sounds for the human player. So it's right. it's all all about compromising and and thinking about how to solve a problem, which is yeah, it's a bit of, yeah, it was a bit a bit thinking. Yeah, but that's that's the fun in developing a game. If it was easy and quick, and I'm sure it'd, it'd still be fun. But I I think the troubleshooting is is part of the part of the fun as well, and and yes, making yes. a difficult thing happen and make it work. Yes, yes. That's why I love the 2600. You have to come up with with with, with new ideas within the limitations. 
and um, that's why I stick to the to the console as it is and not mm. going ARM because I like the to yeah. work in very close um, yeah situations. Yeah, there's limited uh, CPU time. There's limited sounds, limited graphics, uh, very uh, flexible graphics, but very limited graphics at the same time. Um, yeah, so 2600 is one of, I think, a perfect cross of all these things to uh, make it challenging for a developer that wants to uh, push themselves mm -hmm. um, as opposed to other systems. And I, I think that's probably why it's one of the most active homebrew scenes. I, I, I mean, I don't know how many releases there are on, on other ones. I know there's a lot of ports on other uh, homebrew scenes, like on the ColecoVision side, they port a lot of games. Um, but in terms of um, original homebrew, I think 2600 is one of the most active ones, and I think that's why. And this is quite unusual because um, usually I'm doing ports because I'm lacking my own ideas. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true, that this is, this is a, a unique one. Yes. Um, but, you know, when ideas strike, you, you can't deny them. You have to just follow them through. Sometimes. Once in ten years or so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Once in ten years, yeah. Well, it's, it's great. Uh, your ports and originals, like uh, Robot City is an excellent, excellent game that probably most people wouldn't even know that it's a port. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's such a fun game. And, and so is this and, as well. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add uh, about this game in terms of development or its release? Mm. Um, yeah, it took a long time until it went out. That's uh, the, what you have to get used to when you do homebrewing today. Because there's a right. lot of things slowing down the release process. Which as a developer yeah. is pretty frustrating sometimes. <laughs> because... Yeah. I don't like working on too many things in parallel, so it's blocking a bit. Uh, I see. So, like, you once this is released, then you go, okay, it's 100% done. It's out of my mind. I don't have to worry about the boxes or when it's coming out. You can, you know, have a clean slate and start again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, you know, the whole pandemic thing and, and delays in equipment and parts for... Um, you know, hardware and everything like that with uh, shipments around the world. It's, yeah, it, it could, it, I can see where it could be very, very frustrating yeah. <laughs> to, to wait so long for something that you finished quite a while ago. But now it's out, yay! <laughs> yes, and I have free time and I started developing on a new little game. And, oh. um, yeah, it's, it's not released or shown to public yet. Um, yep. And maybe I can tell about if you want, or maybe you do it in your show in the next show, or whenever you want. Yeah, uh, maybe a, a tiny hint for the people that doesn't give it away too much. Tiny hint. That? It's a clone. Like, mm -hmm. It's a clone of a game which was recently released for the Atari 2600, and I got permission of the original author to make my own version. Oh wow. Yeah. And you had it in your show. It's a work in progress, and your, it was a work in progress. You had it on your show. And oh, that's a big hint then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but that's a big hint for somebody. But, uh, oh, that's excellent. I, I can tell you. I mean, it's it's not uh, it's not no secret because I, I will try to get uh, get it on Atari Edge. Um, I was reluctant to re release it uh, to public because. Uh, I wanted to give the original developer more time to finish his version, uh, even oh, okay. even though he gave me his okay. And the funny thing is, um, I was looking for ideas end of last year, and there was um, I, then I'm browsing the web for 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 game games which might be fun to implement, and I stumbled mm, okay. a, stumbled across this little game and I liked it and. And then I started developing, had a working kernel and some gameplay, and then real life interfered and other stuff came up and I want to f finish Boulder Dash and Room. And after mm. summer vacation, I continued development and then the orig original author of the game, which I found on the web, released the 2600 version and, and you showed it <laughs> in your show. And I said, 
sort of fuck what, what is it what, what should I do now I mean <laughs> I have a working game and I want to one oh. which I want to finish and um, now he's doing and he is original also I cannot um, release it without <laughs> his permission oh, that would no. be brutally yeah. unfair so mm. I contacted him and contact was a bit slow but he was yeah. re very generous and said, no, it would be a shame if your version is not going to public. And so I did it. And uh, to make Interesting. a big difference, I added some bells and whistles to the game, which is not in the original. Oh, okay. And, okay. The, and the game is called uh, Top and Tom 2. And this is... Okay. Oh, my God. I play so many games. What is that one about again? Okay, well, we'll have to, I'll have to look it up again. Top and Tom is about uh, two connected cars, which uh, where you have to jump about over obstacles, and uh, the top car controls the button. Oh, that's right. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah, we played it just recently on on mm -hmm. the show. A very interesting original concept. Um, yes. Yeah, it was. It, his version is challenging, like super challenging. Yeah, so mine is a bit different. Good. It's not that challenging, and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, it's. I made it different, and when you try it out, and I think you will show it, present it in your show, pretty soon. Oh, I yeah. hope. Um, yeah. You will find the differences. Um, so, yeah, I'm. It's motivating. Then I can finally talk about it. I, I contacted Al to ask him about my dilemma and what I should do, and he <laughs> yeah. replied. To it's me, quite yes. a unique uh, situation. That's yes. for sure. And he replied to me yesterday and, and said, no, if he, is, if he is fine, go ahead and talk about it on the show and release it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, very looking forward to that because I really, really like the concept mm -hmm. and how the mechanics worked in that game. And I thought it could be, it could be taken further. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, finessed and refined. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really looking forward to what you to see what you've done with it. That's exciting. Yeah, it's it's my type of game. It has physics in it, some interesting physics, yeah. and so that's the type of game I like. It's not yeah, exactly, exactly thrusting, but it's it has gravity. <laughs> it's... It has gravity. <laughs> Yeah, it, one car pushes the other car. There's gravity. There's there's mechanics to the to the gravity. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Okay, so let's go on to amazingly another release um, by you and Andrew Davy as mm. well, uh, which is Boulder Dash. Um, so Actually, maybe re, re, uh, re release. Huh? Re, it's not a really re released. <laughs> That's right. Um, so can you talk a little bit, well, let me get it out first so we, people can see the, the new box and what it looks like. Let me find it in here. Probably it's, covered over it. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's an interesting story uh, because yes. the original release was limited to 250 copies. And it took a year to sell. So, it, which was really slow, and um, we were really afraid because um, uh, First Star Software, the license owner, uh, yeah, demanded the li license fees for all 250 copies. So, if it's not right. selling well, then um, you make <laughs> you lose a lot of money. And um, so, we were very reluctant, Andrew and I, that it and it's finally sold the last copy. And then over the years, more and more people asked us if there would be a re-release and yeah we had our contract and we couldn't sit so, oh, right and um, negotiations with first star software were pretty tough uh, and yeah. did, did, did the major part um, but then the license uh, got bought of Bordadesh got bought by a German company BBG and then we saw it, or I saw it, I think it was me, but Andrew can correct me. Oh, that, that might offer a new opportunity. And um, what right. we really wanted, or I really wanted, is to get the ROM out so that people can play the game without having to invest money. And so, anyway, we tried, we tried really hard to get the ROM out and we were quite close. And then some lawyers clicked in and said, no, we can't do it. But nevertheless... <laughs> The big 
difference is that this one is um, unlimited. So it will stay in the store until nobody is interested anymore. So um, <laughs> That's great, yeah. So, so anybody who's able to get this anytime, they don't have to worry about uh, paying scalpage, scalping prices. And it's on it's on eBay. eBay the original is on eBay for five thousand dollar. <laughs> I saw that. It's I, ridiculous. I, I don't know if they'll get that, but I they are offering I hope it for not. five thousand dollars. I hope dollars. not. I might be tempted to sell one one of my free copies. So. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it, no kidding. Five thousand. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, it's like how much is the plastic and paper worth, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So beautiful, beautiful artwork. Maybe we can talk a little bit about the new artwork that has gone into it and who uh, who did it. Um. Yes, I have forgotten the name, but it's on the box, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, William Thorpe, yes. uh, Bitjag on the Atari Age forums. Yes, it's it's beautiful. I mean, he made I think six sketches of ideas he had, and um, I think the sketches are in the manual if I remember correctly. That's these are in black and white. If you look through it, um, I think towards towards the end. Okay. And uh, Andrew and I had the same mm -hmm. idea: which one is best. So it was pretty easy ah. to find out what we liked. This is one of the sketches, I think, on the right. Yeah, this is one of it. Mm. Very nice. And another the, one. The front one is really great. Mm -hmm. the, the one you decided on. Yeah. It, it shows the danger. It shows the goal. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. And it shows um, some of the, the enemies in the game. Yeah, it and, was tweaked a lot. Yeah, it was tweaked a lot uh, during the process. Uh, even BBG had their opinion, and um, oh yeah, we changed it a lot. But it's it's looking really cool, and I think I, I like it even more than the original one. So um, it's really nice, yes. And um, uh, it's a cool, cool label. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. So let's pop it in take a look at the game. Oh, I need this. One second. Yeah. Let's switch it over so everyone else can see it too. Also, is it plugged in? Uh, yes, the, that one's plugged okay. in. Okay. There's a cat on the cords right <laughs> now. Of course there so. is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't um, tell. Just reading was Andrew was writing. Ready. Yes. Oh. <laughs> It was so, an iterative, iterative process, so the final one went through many revisions as we asked for changes. Uh, we, Thomas and I, are very frustrating to work with. <laughs> yeah, I, if there was ever a dynamic duo, that would be uh, it, I you guess. You have to change it to Switch because I think you're playing it in PAL. Oh, okay. Let's, uh... I have to change it. Give a that a try. I think it's a difficulty switch. Oh, it's too, too long ago. Oh, okay. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Now it's shaking. Ah, yes, that's better. Yeah, that looks more familiar. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Um, so, besides demand for more cartridges by those who missed out on the initial run of 250, what precipitated the new unlimited re-release of Boulder Dash? Was it the changing of hands of the IP rights in 2018, or... Why, why it did it reset? Why did it reset? Was there a crash? <laughs> oh, what happened? No, just I think the demo started. Oh, it was just the demo. Ah, you, the was, you were, were not playing. It was yeah. a demo. Okay, okay. Yeah, she yeah. was letting Ooh. it run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no nope. recall. Another recall. <laughs> now we don't want to revisit that, do we? <laughs> yeah, I mean the the original idea was um, from from my side. I cannot speak about um, Andrew. From my side was. Um, I want this game in the hands of as many people as possible to play it. Uh, that's right. true for all my game, all of my games, and that's why I'm releasing the ROMs regularly when I can. And um, I was hoping that um, might be possible to get the ROM out so that people can play the game whenever they like without having to buy the card, or at least right. to get a cheaper card-only version. 
Um, right. So that because the original one you had a, a limited number. There's no digital possibilities other than a demo, mm. and and I'm guessing as well no standalone cartridge license for standalone cartridges either. Mm -hmm. Right. So and how how has that changed for this version? Yeah, we can we will offer a standalone version without all the boxes and stuff for a lower price. It will not be as low as you would like, but it's definitely cheaper than um, the, the full version. Yeah, because there's, you know, more than yourself and Andrew and Atari Age involved in this. So there's the IP rights holders that, yes. you know, they, they, hold, they own the game. So they want, uh, they want some, some of the cut as well. So that's, that's probably what the extra, extra additional cost is. Hmm. Yep. And so someone has I, to pay it. <laughs> that's right. Somewhere along the line. Yep. Somebody has to pay the extra dollars. So I asked, asked this question to Andrew as well. Um, but is it hard to believe that there are copies of the original run of Boulder Dash being listed for sale as high as $5,000? I don't even know if that price is like serious or not, but it's, it, it's incredible that that if somebody thinks that they can list it for that how does that you know what's your reaction to that i mean it shows greed which i yeah. never wanted to support but it also shows that there are people who pay any price and um yeah. that's and, and who can pay any price and that's a situation i don't like because yeah. um that shows that uh, the, something is not balanced anymore but, but I'm going into politics. <laughs> <laughs> That's so right. Yeah. I am. I will stop here. Um, no, I don't like. <laughs> I, I don't like this at all. I mean, um, you're running out of time, Tanya. Yeah, she ran out of time. <laughs> She's being careful not to get I squished. I am being careful. Oh, press the button. So, I I, I I hope nobody buys it. But you never know. I mean, we have seen other prices for other games which were obscene and uh, they were bought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, 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 cannot, I cannot understand collecting by using money. And uh, so you, you build up your collection because you have the most money. So what, <laughs> That's right. What, 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 what is the challenge? I mean, making the money? I mean, the collection is no problem. If you have the money, you can buy almost everything. So yeah, instantly you can buy a full collection off of somebody, but where's the fun in that? Where is the discovery? Even even if you have the money, I would think the fun would be finding the games in the wild, going yes. to flea markets, going to conventions even. Yeah. I mean, that's a little bit easier to find the games, but or yeah. making a good deal and not paying obscene prices because you can. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. That's, that's something right. I will never understand. It, uh, it doesn't show tenacity, it just shows how rich you are, but maybe that's what they're trying to prove with that. Maybe yes. Going if, a little off track, but... <laughs> yeah, if you're looking at some car designs today, they are only made to make the owners show that they are rich. Something. It, yes, exactly. And that follows with like branding on shoes, t-shirts, handbags, yeah. etc., etc. It's, yeah. it's not about the quality of the thing, it's about how it reflects on you. Yeah and who you are and, uh, actually and to I'm, me that uh, paints a different picture of the person yes, than they I think mean, the, these are very sad people in my mind uh, but probably they will <laughs> not feel like being sad but for me they are sad people i mean if you yeah. define yourself by other people's thoughts about you something is wrong <laughs> yeah that's right oh, you don't need one. um okay um i am going to flip over to Andrew Davies interview mm -hmm. and then we'll come back to you to finish it off if that's okay I have the, I have the last strike right <laughs> that's right you have the last word on it and you can and you can refute uh, anything Andrew says <laughs> so let me see how I've got this going I think we can still hear and see the game while I play this. So let's give this a try. Yes, uh, good day everyone. Uh, Andrew Day here from Queensland, Australia. I'm sitting in my garden and uh, I'm surrounded by mosquitoes. So I 
Hopefully I can... Uh, I can see Andrew, but I cannot much, hear. Uh, damage, but, no? Um, no I'm hearing. delighted okay. to be on the show. I'm very happy oh. with uh, James. Hmm. Maybe I have to mute my microphone and make on uh, Twitch, Twitch on my TV. Yeah, can people hear it in Twitch? Because we have a different, totally different feed than everyone else. I bet they can hear it. Oh, you could hear it. Okay, well, I'll play it again. And uh, I've listened to it already, so everybody else can hear it. Yeah, if you want to switch over to Twitch, uh, Thomas, then you'll be able to hear uh, what he has to say. <clears throat> so I am going to um, play it again. Yeah, Here so we go. Good day, everyone. Uh, and <sighs> From Queensland, Australia. I'm sitting in my garden and uh, I'm surrounded by mosquitoes, so hopefully I can uh, get through this without too much uh, damage. But um, I'm delighted to be on the show. I'm very happy that uh, James has asked me, and uh, hello to everyone watching and the guests. Uh, I've got a few questions uh, from James so, uh, about Boulder Dash. So, uh, just quick background. Uh, Thomas Jens and I wrote Boulder Dash and released that in 2011, uh, but we actually started working on that about eight years before that, almost ten years before that. Uh, it was pretty much considered a holy grail on the machine and impossible. And um, Thomas and I kind of thought, you know, well, if we were going to do it, how would we do it? Uh, and we did a lot of uh, experiments and almost a uh, competition back then to see who could come up with different ideas uh, for... Uh, the graphics and the processing uh, and the end result uh, I'm still very proud of. It's one of the uh, most complex programs I've ever written in Assembler anyway and uh, it certainly uh, still holds up. Even with today's um, um, supported uh, cartridges, programs, it uh, still does a fantastic job uh, pushing the Atari to the limits. So I'm very proud of it as I said and I'm also uh, very fondly remember working with Thomas on this, even though we got on each other's nerves so much during the development. Uh, he's, he's German, of course, so what can I say? You know, we're both perfectionists and we had a, a hell of a time uh, agreeing on things. But, you know, without Thomas it wouldn't have been possible and uh, I'm just delighted to have um, gone through that process uh, with him. So, thank you, Thomas. So, questions from James. Uh, First question, with this unlimited release, uh, you've noted there were some improvements and bug fixes. Uh, were these changes that you wanted to make for a while, or was it the new release that prompted you to relook at the game? What were the improvements and bug fixes? Well, when we, uh, when we first uh, released Boulder Dash, that was with First Star Software in 2011, and I went through quite a few years trying to get the rights to the game and it was not an easy process. Uh, we had to establish trust um, with Richard Spatani uh, for First Star Software. But we got there in the end, but uh, the best we could do was negotiate a 250 limited edition release. So that was not uh, our choice. Um, we did not want to do that. We wanted to have an unlimited public release, but it just wasn't possible to negotiate that. So it's always been a bit of a disappointment for me and probably Thomas that uh, Boulder Dash couldn't be in the hands of more people. And it's particularly uh, frustrating seeing, you know, two and a half, three thousand dollar US price tags on the game. So uh, when, um, when BBG Entertainment uh, bought the rights to, bought the IP basically from First Star Software, uh, we were able to negotiate uh, a new release this of Boulder Dash, Dash. And, and, uh, so, so that, that gave, gave us the opportunity, opportunity to go back, back and, and fix some of the uh, errors yes, we had made. made. There, there weren't any, to tell the truth. truth. And also make a slight differentiation between uh, the original and the new version. So there are some minor graphics tweaks. Uh, not a lot, because it's pretty good. We fixed uh, one bug can't remember exactly what it was. It was a minor bug. And uh, we also made the Easter egg actually accessible. So yes, there is an Easter egg in Boulder Dash. And uh, in the first version of the game, the first R software one, it was, I think uh, we found out it was actually theoretically impossible to get to it. So there you go, the new one, you can get to it mm, with a bit of, let's say, luck. But, uh, Hopefully someone will find it sometime in the next 10 years. So, uh, 
Question two, uh, reflecting back to the original release of Boulder Dash over 10 years ago, did you imagine that the homebrew scene for 2600 would be bigger than ever and that you'd still be talking about your game? Um, I never really thought about other people um, collecting or programming the 2600 as being a driver for why I did enjoy it. Um, so I think uh, I hadn't really thought about it being alive uh, so long uh, after when, when we did Boulder Dash. But uh, what, what I have really not foreseen is the amazing advances in um, software uh, support, like the amazing Atari Developer Studio. Uh, or the additional hardware, like uh, the ARM um, support. So those have both been literally game changers for me uh, in keeping the machine alive. And certainly the ARM, although it's a very contentious area, I think it has enabled programmers like myself to continue to enjoy pushing the envelope beyond the limits which we might have stopped at uh, had we not had such additional support. So uh, yeah, I'm working mostly in ARM these days. I understand purists uh, uh, who want to stick to just 6507. Um, I think there's room in it in the, in the uh, hobby for all of us. So, you know, um, I definitely do not imagine that we would be uh, doing some of the things that the arm enables. So, but it all comes down to that TIA chip, you know, and it's still an Atari at heart. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, who knows, where will we be in 10 years time? That will be interesting. Um, so, on to question three. Uh, was I surprised at the demand and aftermarket prices of the original 250 cart round of Boulder Dash? Um, no, I was actually uh, not offended, but annoyed to see people scalping Boulder Dash for thousands of dollars. Um, you know, I had uh, sold my own for a decent price. I had two copies, three copies. But um, what, what annoys me the most is other people profiting off my work in a way that harms the hobby. So uh, I don't like it at all. And uh, I guess with the um, the new release, hopefully we'll see uh, demand uh, for ridiculous prices drop. Uh, there's still gonna be collectors who want the original version, but uh, at least we can get a playable version in people's hands for a decent price. So, uh, yeah, as I said, I'm annoyed about all that, trying not to think about it. Alrighty, two more questions to go. I'm being eaten alive out here in the garden by mosquitoes, so we'll get through this pretty quick. Uh, the new release of Boulder Dash, anything I'd like to add about it? I think, uh, you know, looking back at it, it, it holds up pretty well. It's now 11 years since we did that initial release. I think that the gameplay is pretty smooth. Uh, certainly there's things we could do better if we used an ARM processor, but that's not what it's about. It's about, this one is about recreating the original game, like the C64 game for Thomas, the Atari game for me, but basically recreating the original uh, almost perfectly given the limitations of the machine. And I think that, um, Although this is a re-release, I think it still holds up pretty well um, 10, 12 years later, and I'm very proud of it. And uh, I'm also, uh, as I said, very happy to have this uh, memory of working with Thomas on this particular title. So I think, uh, I hope this gets into as many people's hands as possible now that the price is, uh, is, is reasonable. and that there are um, copies for everyone. So I hope you enjoy very much. 
And so uh, finally, I think the last question from James is, uh, are there any things I'm working on that I can talk about at the moment? So uh, yes, there are things, many things, many wonderful things. <laughs> I'm, ta uh, I'm, I'm working on a lot of stuff, uh, but you know, my general way of working is I lose interest in something um, maybe when it's 85% complete. So I released a lot of demos as my, you know, when hop, which is actually a pretty funny idea. I, I really should get to finish that. And uh, my Rubik's Cube and my Spinning Planets, these are all um, ARM-based demos. My chess program, so I dabble a little bit and work on some of those things for a few days and then go on to the next one and on to the next one. But I do have a secret project, um, which uh, is currently in playtest, uh, is pretty much complete. But I am not able to announce it until I get permission from the IP owners. So there's something good coming. Um, it's an ARM-based game, so uh, certainly I've been pushing the machine as much as I possibly can. Uh, given all that extra processing power, so if you've seen some of those demos I've put out, uh, this one's going to knock your socks off, hopefully. So anyway, uh, hello and goodbye to Thomas. Thanks Thomas, I've really enjoyed working with you. And uh, James and everyone else, thanks for having me on the show and uh, I'll see you next time. Let's get that. There we go. And we are back. Thank you, Andrew, for sending in that video and uh, adding to the conversation and answering my questions. Are, uh, are we back with you now, uh, Thomas? Oh, nope. We're not. But why not? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Go here. Can we hear you now? Laptop is. Wait, wait. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. I was mute, mute because, um, of course. <laughs> ah, makes sense. <laughs> I muted you too, just in case. But thank you. Um, okay, so a couple more follow-up questions. I don't know if there's anything you want to respond to in or follow up on in uh, Andrew's video. No, it was no. all. You were spot on. I mean, I think there was no difference between me, me and him. Uh, what he said. Yeah. And we did not uh, coordinate before the show. No. <laughs> <laughs> no conspiracy happening. And uh, Tanya, you can <laughs> grab with a with a joystick button and you can grab. Oh yes. Oh I always forget that too. Mm. Yeah. Um so there's usually not an opportunity to go back and change things about a game once you're finished. But there were some minor bug fixes done for this re release. Um, probably nothing that anybody would really notice except for developers, probably. Um, do you th ever think about past projects and ruminate over things you could change? Or are you more inclined to concentrate on the newer projects and just kind of, I'm done with that one? Um, no, I usually leave them behind. Thrust was a different one because I was not happy with the sound. And, okay, um, yeah. So um, Andrew Slocum did his magic and added some really great music to the game. Uh, but mm. uh, and eventually, amazing music. Yeah, and eventually I added safe key support, which was not existing back then. But uh, okay. usually I don't go back, especially because old source code um, doesn't look well. Usually. <laughs> That's right. Why didn't I comment this? I have no idea what this line does. Yeah. What is this variable? Why did I give it this name? <laughs> yes, and, and, and also you think, oh, I could do better, but um, I don't do the game again. I mean, you remember how much time you invested and how proud you are. And so, no. Yeah. Or were. So, no. Um, usually I don't go back much. And I found it a bit... Right. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't want to go back very much into Boulder Dash as well because I liked right. it as a game and it was working what I wanted. Um, during the years, I had the ideas to make a Boulder Dash 2, 
uh, using yeah. better, banks, better bank switching. Still the same stock uh, Atari 2600, but a more flexible bank switching because we had some really severe limitations from the simple mm. bank switching we were using. And we had to use it because it was the only thing which could be fit into the crocodile card, which we use for development. So it was right, a few okay. bytes free, and um, and I mean, Fugel implemented this uh, bank switching, and yeah, that um, had some severe limitations. Um, we found out during development, and um, we, we didn't know before. So um, I had some new ideas, and I think in Stellar there is the bank switching implemented that I thought about. And but I never went into converting the original Boulder Dash first into new bank switching and then starting on top of this doing Boulder Dash 2. And I think yeah, it's 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 astounding as it is uh, with how much is going on in the screen and how much each each level would take up in in ROM space even. Um, and then being able to keep track of every single item in RAM as well. It's it's astounding that uh, you were able to do this back then. It's unbelievable. Uh, yes, um, there's some magic of oh, Andrew in it because he had some oh, really clever ideas how to manage that all this, the things uh, can be um, can be managed without uh, lags and, and slowdowns. Um, yes. When I came to With the project, the multiple frame yeah, processing, right? When I came to the project, the, the, the framework was there, um, but we went on um, a lot of optimizing and and tweaking and everything. The basic idea was from Andrew, and mm. um, I put in my optimizing um, ideas mostly, and yeah, of course, some some other ideas. The graphics, I think are from me and so yeah it's it's a cooperative work but everybody has its own strengths and weaks weaknesses so um and Boulder Dash shows the strengths i hope from both of us yeah it's a, an astounding game absolutely astounding and you should definitely be proud of it and, and um yeah i can i can see why you wouldn't want to change much of anything in it it, it just works um I find it a very challenging game, <laughs> and Tanya does too as well, mm -hmm. but uh, there's always room for improvement for us to play it, that's for sure. And uh, now that I've, we have a copy that we can play indefinitely, <laughs> it's not on Boro traveling around the world or something like that, um, we can put some more time into it, which mm -hmm. is great. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, that's not good. That's, that's not good. Very strange. The laptop just crashed. Um, if you could concentrate on that after yep. it's well, not yet, but after it's finished doing its thing. Oh my goodness! And um, sorry, my, my final questions were. <laughs> I, I kind of finished up the questions and asked if there's any upcoming games that you'd like to talk about or anything else you'd like to add. But mm. he already talked. Luckily, he already um, talked about a game that he's working on. Um, and uh, um, hopefully you didn't want to add anything because we're almost to the time to the next person. Computer is rebooting. I, yes, I guess it doesn't sad. like uh, streaming that long. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. There's a memory leak in Skype, possibly. Oh. Yeah, Skype is frozen. Um, we're just going to keep Thomas on the screen. Oh, God. Yeah, one second. Let's... Oh. The reboot. Uh, we don't want to show too much. Yeah. And show the uh, nice sheep. The sheep coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Before Tanya logs in. Even though it's an all going to be stars. But we'll go back. Um... So, Thomas, uh, let me know if there's anything you else want to add um, or if you were pretty much done because we can bring you back. We've got another um, eight, seven minutes. Actually, we will bring you back. So, if you can get, uh, get Skype back on and. Yeah, uh, give it a second. And, and just... then just. Uh, call up Thomas when it's uh, calm down because I'm still capturing nothing happened with the broadcast machine so that's all fine yeah at least he has a nice frame that's true yeah it would have been very bad if he was stuck on a one eye open and mouth half open, half open or something like that we are pretty much done okay we're good then are we done or do you want me to I just hit connect again. oh okay do you want to we'll say just have him say goodbye a couple of a couple of last words it yeah. seems to be uh Hopefully it's okay. 
he's connected. It's counting up. Full screen, yes, please. There we go. <laughs> yeah, at least you froze on a good frame, Thomas. That's yeah. good. So we've got you back now. What happened? Oh, on my side or on your side? <laughs> oh, it's completely our side. We got a blue screen of death Ooh. with a frowny face. <laughs> and yeah. And uh, but we've got you back now. We're all good. I guess uh, Skype. I'm guessing Skype has a memory leak because that's all we're running on the machine. Just doesn't like talking for what? Three hours? <laughs> two hours, two and a half hours. Nah. It's a Microsoft it product. What do you expect? There you go. Microsoft on a Microsoft product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Microsoft all the way down. Um, so we were, I was going to ask if you had any projects and, and you did already talk about that. Um, so is there anything else you'd like to add uh, about the re-release of uh, Boulder Dash or, or anything else about the community? Or? I'm very curious how many people will buy it now because we, we were annoyed yes. over the years, of, really annoyed by some people who were very <laughs> demanding and um, <laughs> if this doesn't sell uh, well... See if they'll follow through on their threats of buying yeah, it. Yeah, huh? if this doesn't sell well, we'll never do a re-release of anything. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You better you better buy it, everyone. Now that you've, you've said you demanded it to be back and re-released, uh, it's time to show your show your loyalty to the game. People blamed us for not being able to buy one. That could be very frustrating, I can understand. It's like, you made this game, come on, give it to us. Why did you limit it to 250 and they don't understand oh, they what's going on behind the Oh, they demanded the ROM and stuff like this. And, um, right. and, and, and we, have, we have contracts. And if, if you break such a contract, yeah. it can be very, very costly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's not something you really want to uh, no. shoulder the burden of just to uh, release a ROM of a game. That's that's for sure. And it's frustrating because you do want to do all this stuff mm -hmm. for people. Yes. You do want to release release these release the game. And, and thankfully, uh, you've made it now that you've it happens that the IP changed hands and the new owners are a lot more flexible mm -hmm. in, in terms of releasing the game on standalone cartridge roms etc and an unlimited release but once oh, one thing is for sure now i think there will never be a rom release that's a bit pity but um, mm. i don't think we will ever see a rom release right at least not yeah, from us i mean if somebody cracks it and releases it it's, it we can't do anything but right there will never no. be a rom release no that's unfortunate yeah but it's available, at least now, for the people who want to play it. And it's an astounding game. So that's that's really great. All these years later, it's finally released. <laughs> and those people offering, uh, selling it for $5,000 can uh, just Calm sit down. on it. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people will be able to buy it the exact same game, except with the, just a different title screen on it. Yeah. Exactly. So thank you so much uh, for coming on again, Thomas. And thank you, Andrew, as well, for sending in uh, uh, the video and answering all the questions for the re-release of Boulder Dash. I think that was the first video of Andrew I saw myself, too. I mean, never talked yep. about directly. We always, always communicated <laughs> written. And yeah, I, I think as well i've never i've never seen him on video i've never mm -hmm. talked to him on video and he, in the chat he said yeah he's very reluctant mm -hmm. um and afterward after seeing the video i don't know why he was excellent very eloquent same here yeah and, i uh, have no idea yeah maybe it's so it hopefully... was maybe it was at 50s take or something like this or maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah so hopefully that'll encourage him to uh be more comfortable with coming on video because i would love to have him mm. uh, back on the show to discuss you know future future projects and future games and um you know that'd be that'd be excellent yeah <laughs> carl g says i wasn't sure he actually existed he was an ai <laughs> Uh, an AI from uh, no, Australia. No, it's all me, uh, and that was an actor. <laughs> I hired. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You've perfected the Australian accent, and uh, it was all you in disguise. You're no, trying to it was an actor. impersonate two it people. It was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Okay. So thank you so much, Thomas, for coming on yet again, and uh, and we'll, we will talk with you soon and see you online. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> He's done after this. <laughs> okay. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Excellent. And we're back on perfect time. Look at that. Wow. 229, right Look on the half you. hour. <laughs> uh, so um, let me clean this up. I've got a cat on my lap. I know. Up, they just very nice. They, it's very nice. These cats are very supportive of the Atari Age community. <laughs> they are. They, they show up for the show. They do. And we nothing do, to do with treats we, whatsoever. We do bribe them a little bit <laughs> <Yes>. with some <laughs> treats. <laughs> Hey, Trey Guy. Yeah. Welcome. So the next, uh, we're going to move on to the next game. Um, and we are going to be talking about uh, blocks, looking at the release of blocks for the 2600 and talking with Jeremiah Knoll and Jeff Haber. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, um, who was the person who had? Uh, that was Jeff. Jeff had trouble? Uh, yes. Is Jeff still having some issues? So if we get an update on that, yeah. I'm guessing he is. Otherwise, we might have heard back. Uh, I know Jeremiah was ah. in the chat. Oh, I missed something. I don't know why nobody told me. <laughs> Catnip disabled. Oh, MK Smith. Oh, no. Ah, feed the cats. And get a poster with it. I missed it in there. So there you go. A beautiful, beautiful poster of the um, front of the box. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these games have um, bonus goodies in them, like posters and stuff. It's great. <laughs> the green screen may... Oh, what? Did it go through? Is Because there's so much green in it. Oh, I got to show that again. No, no, no. Up here? Oh, yeah, you can see through it. Oh, funny. Let's try and get the shine off it. You can see blue. Uh, it's green. Yeah. I don't know if I can... I can't fix oh, that. Oh, it is really green. I can't oh, fix wow. that. Okay, it's, cool. It's going to be see-through. You have to show it from that camera. That's why. Yeah. Oh, yes. Floating that's water. Why. Yes. Yes. Oh, Jeff is in the call now. Okay. Jeff's ready? But Oh, he's, he's, he can do it? His Says power's he's back? calling... Oh, missed call. That's okay. We can call you. So yep. It's all we good. We just wanted to make sure we can contact you. So, um, oh, what a mess. so that's good. You got a mess. You got a pile of very expensive boxes and games yeah. in the corner that the cats are going <laughs> to smush they with, their, with their fluffy oh, paws. Oh, God, no. Squish, oh, please, squish. No, that's no. the sound of cats destroying breaking, things. Breaking boxes. It's my yeah. nightmare. Oh, <laughs> So let's no, get the next good. game set up. If okay. you could get them on the Jeff, line. Is it, uh, is this uh, Both Jeremiah and Jeff. Are we doing how, hmm, at, at a person, right? I should contact. Yes. So do um, Jeff first. Okay, we'll try Jeff. Don't switch over yet. No, Let no, me no. get this all set up here. Yeah, we'll get them both on the line first. I think, or do I have to add, can I add someone after the fact? You should be able to. Maybe right click on them or. Let me see. I don't use. I don't think I can do this properly. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Jeff, I'm going to hang up on you. Don't take it personally. <laughs> um, I think. You have to do a new. Create a new group. There, there you go. go. Sorry about that. Okay. Get you going. The cat is being hidden behind the chat, which is funny because chat in French means cat. Oh, that's funny. It's the cat, a cat chat. <laughs> that was quick. Yeah, it's, it's all done. Thank you for answering the questions, Jeff. <laughs> so we're going to be talking with Jeremiah Noel, uh, who's coming uh, through audio only. And we'll be talking also with Jeff Haber. Um, so we're just waiting for them to... So you've invited them, Connect, I guess. Connect, ring the group. Do it. There you go. Okay, there we go. And I've then you'll have before. to like pin both of them so we're not huge. Okay. You can do that. <laughs> I think you can do that right now. I think I can right make click. It smaller. Yeah. No, just right click on both of them and pin okay. them. And then that's actually perfect. Oh no, try and pin that one. See what it looks like. Them, right. Yeah. Well, that's good. That works. Oh no, because we want the other person centered. So can unpin Jeremiah because he's audio only. Jeremiah is? Yeah. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. So uh, the voice you'll hear is Jeremiah's. The face you'll see is Jeff's. Uh, yeah. Jeff does need to turn on his camera, though. Yeah. So we'll transition over so we can hear them now. There we go. <laughs> oh, we Sorry, go. we couldn't hear you. 
we had to switch you over. All right. Welcome, welcome. Excellent. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Full screen, please. If you can. Yeah, yep. there we go. Perfect. Excellent. Welcome, Jeremiah and Jeff. I don't know if Jeremiah can hear Hello. us. Are you good? Uh, can you hear Excellent. me? Excellent. Yep. We got you both on. Excellent. So we have got your new game, Blocks, here. If you can see it on the Twitch uh, stream. If not, I'll hold it up to the camera for you. Oh, nice. There you go. <laughs> and uh, so let's take a look inside at the game. So uh, tell me a bit about uh, the artwork and the design of the box and manual. Who did the uh, did the artwork here? Uh, yeah. Uh, hang on. Let me look at these notes real quick. Uh, I know in the early on when we were first going to release it, uh, we were looking at like uh, sort of an outer space kind of theme, like a 70s, 80s kind of theme. And right. we contacted one of our... Uh, well, we con Somebody contacted us, actually, because Jeff had posted on the forums that we were looking for an artist. So, yeah, Dean Shannon from Australia, uh, he contacted us and did the artwork for us. Oh, excellent. Yeah, all these uh, very reminiscent of uh, old school artwork uh, for Atari releases where all things are done in space and everybody's controlling these games in state space and playing in space. <laughs> exactly. I say, the uh, artwork that I was looking at was from surround. And if you ever look at that box, they're playing in the game surround, but they're at these computers, you know, consoles, they look like they're flying through space and yeah, it's Atari. So of course they're in space. And so <laughs> at that point I made a little mock-up, you know, really pathetic mock-up pasting it together and, and making a, a blocks version of the surround cover. That's kind of where some of that started. Oh. If you look at the final product, there's not, not a whole lot left. But, you know, Those people look uh, familiar on the in the artwork. One of them, uh, <laughs> I don't know what the other one, other person looks like, but uh, yeah. Yeah, um. <laughs> yeah page model. Yep. Yeah, yeah. that's excellent. Pop that in and take a look at the manual. So you've got a handy dandy uh, uh, chart in the back for scoring matrix. And also on the back of the box, you've got all the different um, settings. Uh, settings and uh, play options, which is which is nice. Oh yeah, real quick. Um, Actually, that there's multiple different types of ways to play. Exactly. Uh, our artist did the artwork. I actually was the one who made the box design and the uh, manual, though. Uh, Jeff and I both mm. wrote the manual, but I did the whole layout for ah. it. Yeah. Yeah, we Stylized uh, like four by three uh, screens. That's why you see those things on the back, too. Sorry to say that again, Jeff. I was, so we I was over talking to, to look like something you would find in the store, you know, around launch time and so on. So that's why. I, but it looks like it does, and that's why the instructions tell you how to plug the joystick in and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I always find that very amusing, uh, and even some of the uh, some of the some manuals tell you even how to position the joystick. It's like yeah. okay, red button in the top left corner, as if you've <laughs> never even seen a, a console yeah, in your life. And I always find it. Im I don't know if that got taken yeah. out, but that was in there. That wasn't there. Let me check. Uh, use the joystick. Plug into the left controller jack for one player jack for one player games. Hold the controller with the red button to your upper left towards the television screen. <laughs> Love it. That's hilarious. So let's power it on and give it a go. Oh, let's miss that. Start it again. Ready. Beautiful intro screen with mm -hmm. all the blocks flashing, many, many, many colors. Um, so that's that leads to my first question, actually. Having so many colors on the same line is truly an astounding accomplishment on the 2600. Um, because anybody who's programmed for the 2600 or is, um, knows a bit about how it works, that's really difficult to get eight different colors any color combination possible across the screen because there's 
limited ways to draw on a single line with the 2600. You've got two players, two missiles, which don't count because they're the same color as the players. You've got a ball and you've got the play field, which are both the same color as well. So you've, and you've got a background, which sometimes you can bring in and that's a different color. So you've essentially got, you've essentially got four colors, but really three that are more flexible. So, um, Tell us how it was possible to create this game and how it looks with those eight colors across the screen. Uh, I'll start out uh, back before this was like early 2020. I was looking at ways to do a very similar thing, but using the uh, player objects to make, you know, fancy sprites and all that. So you could have nice shapes to the jewels. But um, the best you right. can really do is like a six by six. And the way the spacing works, it just doesn't look very good. So I kind of gave up on it. And it was like a month later that Jeff posted a demo to the forums. And he had pretty much what you see here. It was the 8x8 grid with the different colors. And uh, yeah, I was pretty amazed. I was like, hey, I was thinking of, had some ideas for how to do the rest of the game. I Let's work together on this. And so we just started working together. For all the weaknesses that Atari might have, you know, the difficulties of programming, why we all do it. One thing that it had, if you think about it, back in the 70s, it had a far superior color palette than, than most. Oh, yeah. Most, I would say most computers. I, I don't know. Far superior color palette. So um, I find that that's something you should almost always focus on if you have that, that advantage from and uh, yeah, if you want a quick answer of how it's done, it's, um, all you have to do is hit the debug uh, key. Yeah. Uh, but you don't have the emulator up today, though. But uh, yeah. So the short answer is there's really no graphics. You turn on those registers and leave them on for the whole screen. And what you see there isn't 64 objects. You see the objects very much. Yeah, there's those stripes going down the screen that change color. You know, yeah, and uh, uh. they're just, yeah, you time it so that the color changes at the right time. And even they're yeah. separated uh, vertically. Those black <clears throat> spaces, you know, between each row like this, that's, those objects are still there. They're just black. So without yeah. make, having to make any changes there at the time to change the color. Probably could have added a couple more. There was still a couple. Oh, there was still we lost our earpieces. One second. <laughs> Batteries are dead in them. Let us switch over. Get that charged up. That's yeah. why we have backups. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully they connect immediately. Yeah. Yeah, they said connected. Check, check, check. I can hear you. Check, check. You can hear us. Uh, let's see. They didn't. Oh, no. You turned it off. They didn't immediately connect, so I'm just going to try and get them going. <laughs> One second. I'll continue to play. <laughs> I wish I could watch you. I don't see the whole broadcast. Can I have it? I just turn it on. Connected now. Yeah, I just turned it on. Oh. This must be the one to control. Why don't you take that one? Okay. Uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I think, I think we're, we're good now. It's always hard to tell which ear these go in. But is it connect? Has it connected to the? It should. Jeff and Jeremiah, can we Hello. hear you? Test test. Um, test test. Excellent. Oh, yay, we're yay. back in business. Woo. Sorry. <laughs> so much for being on schedule. We'll get back on schedule. We're fine. We're totally fine. Uh, 
so yeah, it's it's uh, it's a matter of timing and color changes at the right time. I mean, because you're do using different objects across on the same line, you have time to change the color well before displaying the next object. Yeah, it was essential to stagger those registers, and and you know it's helpful to not have say player zero and missile zero next to each other. You wanted it a little further down so you could change sort of get some flexibility there. They're all like that. There's never two uh, from the same register in a row like that. You always they switch, alternate at least one, one space down the line. So you have a little more flexibility for that color. Yeah. Um, I also want to thank you for making, including a simultaneous two-player option in your game, mm -hmm. as it's uh, far and few between where, when there, there is that option. Like, there are more and more homebrews uh, including that, but I find a lot of developers uh, don't have the opportunity to test out their own game uh, with two players, or nobody else in their household is interested in, in playing these old, <laughs> ancient <laughs> systems. Yeah, so it's it's really great to add that option in because I, I remember when Tanya and I were playing this game on the show, it was a lot of fun mm -hmm. to play two players, and it adds that element of, you know, removing, say, an AI from the game, playing against an AI, where you add in a player that's you totally unexpected the way they're going to move, and they're able to adapt to different strategies as well. Mm -hmm. So was this something that you plan from the start to have a two-player option or is it something that you worked in uh later realizing you could add in a two-player option um uh can you hear me yeah yep. okay. uh, i think it was early on we had just started working on just the basic gameplay and i kind of i had the idea uh that we could almost have similar to combat how combat's a two-player only game but we could have game modes yes. that were similar to where you have two players fighting each other playing at the same time and how that would probably you know obviously that doesn't happen in the normal bejeweled game that we're clo uh, cloning but that yeah. could bring a whole other aspect to the game and you know really make it better than it ever could have been right it's superior to bejeweled in that respect right? you can't <laughs> you can't play it on your phone people it, it's challenging to have two people play on the same phone. It's a little bit limited of, of a screen, but you know, a 2600 it has the option. It's, it's meant for two players. Like the first game, like you said, combat is, you can't play it alone. It's meant as a console where people gather around it and, and play it together. And, and we try and expose that, expose that on, on the show and play the two player games as much as we can. Um, together and it's it is a, a lot of fun mm -hmm. and I'm really glad that a lot of homebrewers like yourself are taking that opportunity to take single player games and adding in these op these extra options like you see on the back of the box with all the different options mm -hmm. to enhance these games just like John Champo has included second players in games that you would not even think would even make sense like in Galagor or um, in Robotron, uh, Robot War, 20, <laughs> 2684, yeah. um, that really take the game to another level and change it into something that is it, you didn't think before. And same with this. It's like, oh, you can play two players in a Bejeweled-type game? Mm -hmm. Well, you can, and, and it's a lot of fun. It's not just one version, right? There's all those turn-based ones, but then... There's the head-to-head -head cooperative type game, right, where you're both on the same side. But then there's the last version, I right? Number eight was the, as I called it, yep. the head-to-head -head death battle. You know, even though. <laughs> yep. And, I, and if I recall, we had a lot of fun playing that. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, Lots that of fun. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was Jeff's idea to add that in really late because we were like trying to come up with one more game mode, and that was it. So. I really liked uh, that we added that one in. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, 
people are saying, uh, talking about the seven digit score, uh, Revan Tully says, <laughs> seven digit score is just showing off. Uh, and Andrew says, yeah, seven digits looks like a bug to me. Um, so maybe talk about the seven digit score and uh, why you went to the extra effort to put in the seventh digit. Uh, yeah. Uh, er early on, we were trying to figure out how to set the scoring. So how to have a how to make the scoring work in the game. And I know uh, you don't get like one point for things or three points. So rather <laughs> yeah. than just, you know, filling up the score faster, I figured out a way to use the missile to draw an extra zero. So that last, uh -huh. if you notice that last digit is always zero, but that's because we're using the missiles to get an extra digit there. So it's literally showing off. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I can see, yeah, it's two, two, like four wide and then two wide, two wide. Yeah, well, that's that's really clever. And I think Jeff and, had something and I wanted wanna... to add to that. No, I said, well, I said I'll let Jeremiah handle it. Cause oh, okay. He really wanted that zero. And uh, I was like, okay, we'll do it. Uh, he, he came up with the idea. Yeah. And I recall working on it a little bit because um, I had some other font in there. And I don't know, I guess it wasn't working. I don't know how much hard I tried on it or anything, but the way that zero appeared was basically Jeremiah came up with a new font. Because there's only uh. so much you can... Didn't want to have to change the width of the missiles or anything like that. So that right. zero is drawn the same. It's a double wide missile and you never change. Yes. So. Uh, he came up with that. All you, all you do is just move it. You know, just put them back together. That's the zero. Oh, I see. So there's, uh, it's drawn completely with two missiles. So double wide double at the top, point. put together, and then separated. Okay, that's and very clever. The size. So that makes it a lot easier. Four on the top. It's not. Nice. Well, it's one less instruction you have to do. Oh, and one other right? thing. I recall uh, Jeff had come up with a way to to make the score slightly off center so that we didn't have to reposition the missile again for the board, I think. And that saved like a couple bites. <laughs> and, and, and as of note, this is a 2K game. This isn't even a 4K game, it's a 2K game. And uh, it, it harkens back to those old Atari games uh, from, the from the original run where you have uh, a very small game, but filled with options using the same screen. And, you know, you see those games, 128 games in one. It's like, wow, that's amazing. You can pack in this much fun, you know, two players, single players. And um, yeah, and this was nominated for best under K, uh, under four, 4K and under homebrew port. Mm. And also best homebrew port as well. So congratulations on, on making a game so fun in such a small package. Was that something that you were trying to do to, to get this game into 2K or it, you found that it f fell into 2K comfortably? Um, I, early on, we were trying to keep it at 2K. At some point we uh, discovered people really liked it and so we were thinking of releasing it. And we kind of reached a crossroads where do we expand to 4K so we can add some extra features? Because we had used up most of the 2K at that point. And we decided to really just stay with the 2K. I spent a lot of time optimizing because I know uh, the two of us working together, neither one of us I don't think had ever really worked with anyone else before, especially on an Atari game. So mm. uh, Jeff was really good at he'd, he'd uh, pump out a new feature real quickly, like overnight it, we would have the you know the game over uh would it would know when the game ends or something like that and then i'd go in okay. and then in the next couple of days i'd you know whittle it down so that it takes up half as much rom space and nice. then yeah we were just we really liked that so we decided to go with 2k and just you know release it <laughs> as if it was one of the old you know launch titles in 1977 complete with packaging exactly that yep. that, yeah that, that that's why we went that well. route yep and yeah. that's how I write. I, I tend to just write it kind of fat, you know, uh, when i just <laughs> thinking through the logic and so on and then just compress it and compress it. And then, 
yeah, and then Jeremiah looks at it and goes, oh, you know, and he probably, you know, he compresses it even more. But uh, <laughs> I was, uh, you know, we were both pretty solid agreement about doing the 2K game. I, people are coding for Atari, you know, in this space for, re, you know, one reason or another. And for me, it's yeah. uh, more about the original game that I knew as a kid, you know, that I saw my cousin boyfriend bring over and you know yeah <laughs> it out. but um so this game you know it conforms to the hardware design of the original game right there's nothing additional in there no processors no memory anything like that yeah and you can go up to 4k that way but this is 2k and the significance there <laughs> is that you know they those programmers very early days the launch were restricted to 2k I think on every, I don't know if it's every launch title, I think it is. Um, so uh, like, I never really looked at that, no. yeah. Sorry? Oh, I didn't, I, I don't think I've ever looked at, yeah, you know, I, the, I never, when the first 4K sure. game I've heard came into play. The original programmers say things like that. So, I'm yeah. pretty proud of the fact that if you take this game, and if you were to <laughs> launch the Atari in 1977, would you select this game? And I... I have no idea. Oh, yeah. You know, this game would have oh, yeah. selected, if not, you know, pretty popular. Uh, back. Very popular, I would imagine. This this is, I mean, it is it's a than, super popular game in general, this this genre yeah, of game. Not, so I think it would, that. people would be baffled at first and then go, oh, okay, I understand, because this, this kind of game didn't even exist right. back and then, it, yeah. yeah. Compare it to the other launch titles, and I think it's, it's a top, oh. you know. Yeah, top, stands out, top. especially the colors. I think... People would have been like, uh, what? All the other programmers, like, how did you get that many colors in a row? They would, wouldn't understand at first, but then they'd wrap their head or heads around it. I want to go back to um, uh, you two as programmers programming together. That's It's fairly unusual in the homebrew scene. Uh, it happens once in a while, like uh, Thomas and, and Andrew, uh, previous to, to this conversation. Um, how did you how did you find that working together and did you divide up um the different parts of the game completely or were you just adding ideas as they came along uh early on so when i first joined our team uh i broke the file or i broke the one file we had up into several different parts and then i uh both of us had used source control very uh, minimally before, so we didn't really know what we were doing. But uh, together, we learned Git. So I put it up on GitHub uh, so that we could both, okay. you know, open up branches and work on our own things and then add them back in whenever they're done. Which, uh, that that workflow, it was difficult at first because it was new to both of us. So the first week mm -hmm. or so, we had a hard time uh, just learning how it worked. But then once we started yeah. figuring it out, we could we could just kind of tell each other, oh, I'm going to be working on this part, you work on that part, and then right. when they finish up, we'd you know connect them together. So yeah, so when I made that original post, when I had a kernel and I put it up, it was I wasn't looking for partner or anything like that. I, I, if you ever go back and read that post, what I was doing was I was expressing frustration. I. I, I tried a few games in the past, and I get to this point where there's so much code there. Even though I've tried to organize it, I just get lost, and I I, I spend more time. Of, you know, when I sit down the code, I spend more time finding where I am, remembering what I did, and starting mm. and so on. And yeah, then Jeremiah, you know, started responding and stuff, and sending you were sending messages back and forth, and <clears throat> that's relevant because. When we were like, hey, we really should work together on this. I think he mentioned he took the code that I wrote and he chopped it to, uh, you know, like six directories and 12 files or something, <laughs> more than that. And I just, I'm yeah. like, what is, you know, what is that? I, I was more lost, actually. I was like, where's my stuff? <laughs> How do I code anymore? I don't know where any of this stuff is. But, after a couple of days, I, I could, you know, more or less point to, you know, get to where I was going. And then after a week, I was like, oh, this is, this is smart. This is, 
this makes sense. And frankly, that's about the point where he saw that frustration for me. I that, that original post thing. I'm always getting lost in my code. Did it, did it make you step so up your game in terms of... Right away. What's that? Oh, sorry. Uh, did it make you step up your game in terms of commenting your code? <laughs> so Because both of you were working on each other's segments sometimes? I, I, was, I was actually pretty good at commenting. I, it just didn't help much. You know, I, I, it was just uh, too much to sort through. Um, I remember him <laughs> actually making the comment. He's like, yeah, well, your code commented really good, you know. Um, oh, good. He, you know, I, maybe he can tell you where he learned that sort of organization, I kind of got the idea that, see, I, I'm not a, I'm not an experienced programmer. I taught myself and everything. I had, I had the impression that he had learned that in school or, or some sort of formal training. I, I don't know. Maybe you can tell you that. Uh, actually, no. I, yeah. I'm also self-taught. Uh, I first started learning basic actually when I was nine. Uh, believe it or not, this was wow. you know 2007 or so. Good. So. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that's kind of why I got into Atari. It has nothing to do with basic, but I was used to like really small programs that you had to really work for. And the Atari just kind of appealed to me in that way. But yeah, as far as mm -hmm. splitting the file up, uh, I think the main reason I did it is because um, I really don't like when you have something laid out to where you're jumping to different subroutines and then returning back when you don't have to. When at least when you're working mm. on a Atari game, because that uses extra ROM, especially for a 2K game. Right. So I had kind of split right. it up so that instead of jumping, we would just include the different files in the right order. If that makes yeah. sense, I don't and, know. And, a developer and that might can know help what with I'm talking organization. about. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and that can help with organization as exactly. well, knowing I, that okay, I stuck with it. here's a line that just obfuscates the this code, and and it kind of helps just organization. I think, yeah. Uh, I stuck with it 100%. The, the game I'm writing now, it's, the file oh. is the same. The file names are that's, very similar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So it helped you uh, make your next game. And which, which leads me to my last question. Is there any uh, upcoming games that you'd like to talk about or anything else you guys would like to add? Uh, not not from me. I'm still uh, I'm working on some other things right now. But, you know, never say never. <laughs> yep. Am I pretty busy? It, uh, um. Yeah. But yeah, I I picked uh, Space Taxi back up and uh, been making pretty decent progress on that. I know. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I'm really uh, excited about that. And um, the, Space and, Taxi is one of my favorite games, and um, I'm really excited to see it both and, on the 2600 and 7800 being developed at the same time. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, so go go over check out the seventy eight hundred forums. Um, so yeah, it's it's excellent, and I hope Atari Vox is used for both of them. James, I, I don't plan on doing that. I I'm going to put voice in it, but I'm going to attempt to integrate the voice. Oh. In the kernel, in the V blank, in the overscan. I have an idea of how to do it. Maybe I'm naive. Well, it. But, uh, it has been done before, and and there's a great SAM program that can that's out there that uh, that's been shown to show things on the screen and talk at the same time. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, and it doesn't seem that complicated. So long as your logic isn't that complicated, and the kernel's not too complicated, that's my big worry because Space Taxi has a lot of you know in individual you know a lot of graphics that. You know, the oh, voice yeah. is going to knock something out, right? That's Atari. It's either one or the other, you know, it's going to knock some little element out. Yeah. So thank you both for uh, coming on and talking about your uh, brand new game that's coming to the uh, Atari Age store. Thank you for having us on. Yep. So see you, uh, see you in the forums. All right. <laughs> thank you, Jeremiah and Jeff. Thank you. Package at the door. Oh, she's got popcorn now. I did. <laughs> Do you want to disconnect that? So we are, oh, three minutes behind. We're doing very, very well. So let's get the next, uh, let me clean up this a bit. 
Is it snack time? Three o'clock? A little bit. I got up. I was a little woozy. Oh, boy. Playing games boy. for so long. So. Yeah, we don't want that. A little bit that. of food. <laughs> we don't want you passing out on the couch. Probably, I probably just had too much coffee, actually. Oh, so. that could be it. Yeah. So we are now officially halfway through. <laughs> wow. The first day. Day one. Day one. Or a quarter through. of the way through. Yeah, a quarter of the way through. Mm. So coming up next, we have uh, Dragon's Havoc mm. by Todd Fermansky. Excellent. Oh, this is getting to be a mess. Is it? Yeah. Getting to be a mess. Oh, boy. I don't know where to put them. Could stuff them under there. You can put them under there. Yeah. That's where I have the plastic, so. So hopefully everybody is enjoying oh, <laughs> cats. The cats. <laughs> um, enjoying uh, the discussion with um, all the developers and having fun checking out the games that mm -hmm. you may have not seen before. Um, and of course, the beautiful artwork that uh, we're able to show off now. Um, it's always. The artwork is so good on these, um, on the packaging now. Uh, it's, it's so, like, they've really stepped up their game. It gets better and better every year, I think. Um, because when you see something at a certain level of, of quality, mm -hmm. uh, it makes, it encourages you to do better in your release. Mm -hmm. And you go, okay, well, that's the bar. I have to be at least at that bar or better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Chao Sidoimo. Now I can see things. There we go. Dragon's <laughs> Havoc. Hooray. So if you can um, yeah. Todd? get Revantuli slash Todd yeah. on the chat. Earpiece in. See how long these batteries on these earpieces last? That's why I bought two of them for these little Well, so we can swap them out back yeah. and forth. Hello? Excellent. Hello, Todd. Hey. How are you doing today? Hey. Doing all right. Let me just get the volume a little bit yeah. adjusted. But can you hear me okay? Excellent. Yep, mm -hmm. just fine. Looks like it's coming through loud and clear. Excellent. Great background, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he always comes with the uh, great backgrounds for for when he comes on the show. Yes. <laughs> always tied into uh, the game we're talking about. Mm. Looks excellent. So uh, we've got your new release here, Dragon's Havoc. Uh, a game after my own heart, a shoot 'em up. I'm so happy you made a uh, shooter for the 7800. There definitely can't be enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always welcome more of them. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, could you talk a little bit about the packaging um, and who did the artwork for this? Yes, the uh, packaging is, um, was by uh, Benedict Schefter, um, also known as uh, Cabbage on the, on the forums. He came in and volunteered. Has been doing the cover art for this all the seventy eight hundred games they've been doing uh, ever since uh, Dragon's Cash. He came oh, and volunteered, nice. and, and it was exactly what I needed because I was to, as I was swamped trying to get everything else done. And you know, well, I well, I, I have done cover art in the past, and might in the future. There are many, many excellent artists out there um, that are that are much better than I am. So this was glad to have have that, and the, uh, the manual layouts all all him as well. Oh, excellent. Yeah, it's it's nice to, to collaborate with other people, not only to find somebody who's, that's their thing, mm -hmm. but to take the burden off of you as well, so you can concentrate on what you enjoy and what you're good at. So let's open up the box. So I try not to destroy the tops of the flaps which I always freak out about it's like oh I don't want to <laughs> put a crease in the top flap I know some people use like butter knives and <laughs> I just yeah those don't work well for me <laughs> speaking of nod to the uh, the, the, the uh, Intellivision ones had a have, have a folder because they're they're meant to be reused um, I was oh, looking at I, the... I love the Intellivision ones that that have a flap and yeah, because they're easily, you can take them in and out. A little bit more complicated, obviously, <laughs> um, but um, they're very nice. Here's the uh, cartridge, looks great. Oh, I keep neglecting to show the end labels. <laughs> there we go. Let's pop that in and take a look at the manual. And uh, beautiful. beautiful artwork, mm -hmm. very reflective of the game. 
um, with the enemies in the background coming to get you. <laughs> Finn did a great and, job. Uh, I, like, I kind oh, of did yeah. that. I, oh, wow. This is a loose trilogy of games, at least. They're all different genres, but all kind of are just my takes on various, you know, <laughs> like I did a puzzle game, I did a, a dungeon crawler, and, and now a shoot 'em up. Um, but it was great to have, to have been kind of do the artwork for all of, the, all of these. Yes, the Dragon Trilogy. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got uh, the European controller there, <laughs> uh, just in case the, the person has a European controller. And the pain line uh, <laughs> joystick there. You get a hint of a dragon tail in the corner. Very nice. All the different enemy types. And some hints. And credits. Excellent. So let's get to the game and check it out. So, ready. Beautiful. <laughs> Has little hints like like in the arcade, very mm -hmm. simple statements. Hit foes to gain. What, what was it? Game rage. I didn't Game touch rage. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> very, very arcade-like. Yes. Very, very simplistic statements to to help you uh, in your in your journey in the game. I was. I, I decided and to put that in the first screen because a lot of people were mm -hmm. kind of missed that whole part of the game and just would would lead finger it and just hold down the button, which is not <laughs> not a good way to play the game. It's, it's yeah, that, like not getting out of no. sticking in second gear when you're in race car. That would be a very, very uh, anticlimactic, frustrating way to play the game, that's for sure, is to just hold down rapid fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, g talking about that, go for it. Um, mm -hmm. The power-up scheme, and I, and I alluded that to this before earlier in the show, is quite unique in the fact that it's directly tied into how well the player is doing in terms of their hit-miss ratio, kind of, Rather than a uh, power up, um, like picking up power ups type of scheme. Now, is this something that you saw in another game, or is this something that you came up with independently? Because it's it's quite unique. It's usually shooters are like, oh, there's the power up for this, there's the power up for that, and this one keeps you very disciplined, like super disciplined about how you play the game. I'm. I mean, I would not be surprised if there's another game that, that had something something very similar. I took a bit of a cue from... I'm, I'm very fascinated by a lot of uh, shoot-em-ups that don't really have a power-up system. Um, Ikaruga comes to mind, where you're not collecting things, but that also is very much... It's about discipline. It's about... You can get more powerful, but it's it's really almost directly related to how you play and how you strategize. Um, and yeah. there's a few others kind of along those lines. And... For me, I kind of liked this. I was playing with this dynamic of, you know, a lot of shoot -em ups use what are called positive feedback loops, where the more powerful you get, it's easy to get more power. And yeah. this is what's known as a negative feedback loop, where, like, the better you get, the harder <laughs> it is to get better. You kind of are trying to fight in equilibrium. Um, yes. And luckily, you're able to regain your strength fairly quickly if, if you go down, because that was... That was a concern of mine getting into and playing this game, and then there must have been a... Um, you had to play around with the balancing act Certainly. a bit, where when you get hit, you go down to zero, or you, you get punished, but not too much, so that it's not too frustrating, mm -hmm. but also that you can go right back up to full again fairly quickly, because I know some shooters, you almost want to put down the controller when you get hit it's like it's over you yeah. literally almost can't continue on playing the game once you're hit because you lose all the power ups. exactly no that's the and i kind of wanted it well not only you know i wanted to make it so that even if you get hit or you're kicked back you can easily get back up to full range but i also wanted to make it pretty easy to lose that power you know it yeah you know if you're just if your mind wanders for a little bit or you're you know you can you'll you'll start slowing down your okay I, I need to get i need to get focused i need to you know and and then that playoff where again the more powerful you are the harder it is to be focused you're you're moving fast you're shooting fast so yes. instinct takes over and you're just and i wanted i wanted to have a game that kind of played with that um and and i feel almost when at, i'm at top full speed that i have to be more careful 
to not lose it. So I'm like, okay, should I take this shot? Should I just avoid this guy? Um, but I kind of need him out of the way because he's he's blocking my path, especially on the later levels where you're navigating through obstacles. This one's wide open. It's a good it's a good level to start on. Um, but once you get into like the second level where there's blocks and you're like, okay, top, do I go up? Do I go below? Which guy's easier to shoot? Um, yeah, there's it. It's it's a very tactical shooter in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, thank you again for making a great and challenging shooter for the 7800. It definitely needs more of them. <laughs> um, the games you develop have quite a variety of different styles, from puzzles to light RPGs to now to now to a shooter, and of course with your your next game as well, it's quite different too. Mm -hmm. um, was this by design to challenge yourself, uh, or you're more drawn to these genres because you enjoy each one of them? Uh, I mean, really, yes to both. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely like. I mean, all the, the games that, that I've made are definitely are genres I enjoy. I enjoy making, but I did want to try. Um, in my day job, I do a lot of kind of fairly large, like multi-year projects, um, where it often takes a long time to see what the end result is going to be. And what right. I want to do in homebrew is just kind of make something that you know something I can finish and go through that process. And kind of while I'm often experimenting, even in my day job, it's it's something I love. It, I kind of just say, okay, yeah, I, I need to get sound. Can I actually make like columns, or can I make a shooter? And then can I can I add just enough to make it, you know? something unique but you know um i work with modern hardware oftentimes and yeah yeah you're trying to, you're throwing megabytes or gigabytes at a problem or you're trying to make everything like oh this scene needs to look photo real or you know and you know i'm like <laughs> yeah. okay like but you know and and that takes you know it, it can be great but it can take a long time to get right and you're working with other people and so for this i'm like okay i, I just want to see you know i like to think i'm good at, at, at this or that I, I i certainly have fun doing it but yeah, like I just yeah. want to sit down. Can I make a shmup, or can I make, you know, a, a, a roguelite, right. you know? Uh, and I, you know, I guess it's really up to folks playing whether whether they're good or not. But it was I, I've learned a lot doing each of them, and I've had a had a blast doing all of them. Yeah, and and you know it keeps things interesting as well if if you change it up all the time and and try different genres and. Um, and, and that allows you to uh, try different things as well. Like in the previous screen, there's parallax scrolling. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's great. Um, so let's see. I hope Tanya makes it to the boss. Because <laughs> that would be great to show. Mm, we'll see. <laughs> you got one life left, but you're doing pretty good. So how... Um, I asked this question to another developer, but each of these genres, are they games that you're good at? Are you good at your own games? Um, pretty good. It's, it's funny. I, I, I'm, the problem is I also, I know a lot of people who are a lot better. Like at Shmups, I'm okay. I, I think I might be a little ahead of the curve, but then it's one of these weird fall off things where I'm terrible compared with like people who are, people who are really good at Shmups are, are, Look, yeah. I feel like prodigies, um, which is <laughs> it's it's hard to balance for because I often do something like where I think this is easy, and then I try to send it to people, and they think it's way too hard. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a thing. It's a balance because you're playing the game, and you're thinking, oh, it's too easy or too hard. But in reality, for somebody who's going to maybe seek out the game, mm -hmm. people who love shmups or are really good at shmups, they're gonna they're going to be like, oh, it's too easy, or it is too hard. Probably not too hard. It's going to be too easy for them. So um, going through this, how many people... Did you did you involve a, a beta test team? Um, I know you did post some, some playable games in the forums. forums. I, I didn't do a whole a wide beta test. I kind of did a, a semi-public like beta test. Um, I did have a few friends try it as well. And... Um, and actually, kind of one of the things I haven't one credit completed it, um, but I have been able to play. I did make sure I could play through all of it um, with continues, and so that yeah, I think that's my compromise at least for this particular game. Um, is like it is it's certainly possible, and you know if I think you know a better player could probably you know do one credit completion um, 
anyway, the really? continues. Wow. There's um, there come out. There are there there are some cheats in there, um, or ways to, to help make the game easier, or at least. Okay. Um, but the, I don't know. You know, not sure if and when people will figure that out, or if something will be posted. <laughs> That's always that's always interesting when when there's a little Easter eggs or helpful things in the game and nobody ever finds them and then the developer keeps hinting and hinting in the <laughs> forums and it's like then they have to outright come out and say it eventually sometimes if they're too too obscure. Well, it was for, that's, it was for that's, debug purposes as well. So it, was, it was much for me as it would be for <laughs> for folks. Playing uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and it's nice that you have the continue in the game so people can. Not don't have to be reset to the very beginning and then go, oh, I've seen level one a million times and level two yeah. maybe ten. Exactly. And so they can keep practicing and, and and there's always the option if the person does want to start from the beginning to just hit reset mm -hmm. and start again. So it's good to have both of those options in there for players that are not as skilled at, at the certain type of genre. And, um, you know, I, I certainly enjoy these uh, the option of, of, uh, of the continues, too, because I want to see the next, the next boss or the next level. There's some stuff, yeah, later levels that I, I, so I'm personally pretty proud of. And, it, but yeah, it also it takes a while and it can be hard to, to, for folks to see. And, and I think that the compromises, again, I, you know, I like continues, but that resets your score so that, you know, if you're playing for score, then yes. that's one way to play. But if you want to just play and see through the game, that's also an option. So I like, I like having that that ability for you know how you play and just how you choose to play. Um, be, be yeah. there. More options are always better. That's for sure. So um, this question I ask everyone: Are there any uh, upcoming games you'd like to talk about, or anything else you'd like to add? I know uh, we've uh, shown. Your your new upcoming game? How is that going? That's I mean that's what I've been working on right now. Um, I'm getting I'm doing some bug fixes and, and doing some polishing on that. Um, so I'll hopefully I'll post more. Uh, it's for those who don't know it's uh, it's called Harpy's Curse. It's uh, basically Metroidvania. Uh, basically mm -hmm. imagine Joust meets Metroid. Um, scrolling levels yeah. of you know multiple screens. There's about over 500 screens worth of, of content. Um, in horizontal scrolling cool. sections. So, um, yeah, multiple bosses. And that's, keys, that's another items. genre that you're. That's another genre you 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 enjoy or interested in. It's another challenge as well because it's totally different uh, than all these other games yeah. that you've made. I think as well, like as you said, the seventeen hundreds a capable machine, but didn't really get a, a fair shake on like. I also looked at genres that you know are, if not non-existent, are certainly lacking on the seventeen eight hundred. Um, you know, yeah. like the for Dragon's Cash, the Columns um, like game. Um, you know, there wasn't really a head-to-head -head puzzle. You know, puzzle game, and the seventy hundred was was totally up for it, and, and, and honestly needed it. Oh, um, yeah. oh yeah. Well, there are certainly like shmups. So there aren't that many that you know, kind of, you know, side-scrolling shmups at this level of you know. Uh, I think they're serious again. There's a you know a couple of prototypes that are you know little print runs, but again, the seventy hundred could use yes. more shmups. Um, Oh, yeah. You know, and so that was, Always. and I think that also allows you to kind of make, you know, put your own spin on it. You know, I also like the 700 is in that weird gap between the second and third generation where, you know, you go from the 2600 and the television and the ColecoVision, and then you have later ones like the, the NES and the Master System. And the 700 is kind of on both. You can have, play Pac Man and you can play something like Super Mario yeah. Brothers or, you know, like R Type on it. It was capable of. of Capable of both and, and kind of, you know, it had it had its foot on either side, which makes it fun to. You can make games that feel transitional or have that weirdness that before things solidified, you know, it, where you thought like a platformer had to have this, this, and this element. Yeah. So. Oh, oh no. Oh no! The computer <laughs> crashed again. What is happening? Can we pause? Is it? Uh, pause what? <laughs> Nothing to pause. No, the game? No, there's oh. no pause on the game. Well, they're still watching you play. Okay. We don't want. <laughs> no, we don't want I, them to I, be I completely you wanted, bored. Would want me to restart that. So. Uh, it does already okay. start automatically. Oh All my right. goodness, that was even quicker. Is it hot? Is it overheating? Maybe. I don't think so. No. It's warm, but it's. it's warm. I don't think it's overheating. Hmm. You'll hear the fan speed up. Maybe right? reboot the computer between interviews. Possibly. Yeah, we don't really want to yeah, cut yeah. off people, no, so that's, that's probably a good very idea. Bizarre. 
Yeah, we'll do that from now on. Hmm. Um, so that was, that was that was the last question. Can uh, you uh, take off my screen, please? Oh, yep. Bah. Bah. There we go. Um, that was the last question, so hopefully <laughs> that uh, wrapped it up. Todd can type in the chat if he wants to come back. We have a couple more minutes. Um, thank you for the suggestion, Spice. Um, oh, yeah, Nano Chess is new 2600 programming book. Oh, it's on the front page of programming. Wow, that's really good. Yeah, Nano Chess is a uh, um, prolific programmer for uh, 2600 and also in television he's he hasn't made a 2600 game in a little while but um yeah he just released a book for the 2600 on programming and he says it's uh good for anybody uh, from beginners uh upward um you don't need to know too much about programming is it warm it's warm but it's not enough to like reboot though no it's odd i think it's a skype thing actually yeah, either Skype, yeah. Uh, I doubt having the extra video output does anything. I mean, that's the only special thing, the webcam, but that's that's Skype. Oh, we've got it back. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Very odd. One second. Let me get you back on the screen. Sorry about that, Todd. Yeah. Our computer is being naughty. Full screen. It happens. I think it heard me rambling and cut me off. <laughs> it's like, ah, it's so enough. The, 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 the hook or the, the playoff <laughs> stage. Pulling you off stage. Yeah, you're done. The gong has gonged. Um, so uh, anything you would like to add about uh, this release? I'm really excited that it's out on cartridge. I can't wait to play this final version on the show. I'm gonna, I am gonna. have content for months now <laughs> uh, for After Dark to, to try and complete all these games, especially mm -hmm. this one. I love shooters. It's one of my favorite genres, platformers and shooters. So... This one I'm going to do my best with continues yeah. to try and get to the end of the game. I'll keep an eye out for when you're playing. I might, might have some pointers for it. But yeah, oh, the great. other, I mean, I guess one thing, um, I mean, it's two players simultaneous as well. So you can play with a friend, which is yes. a, that's right. Which is a lot of fun to program. It was another challenge to make it have something this, you know, with all these graphical effects, as well as supporting another player. It kind of doubled the complexity in a lot of ways, but it was, in my opinion, was worth it. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah, it. and and thank you for making a two-player game as well. There's not enough of those. Uh, more and more are coming out because people are realizing that it's fun to have a, a person to play with. That's right. And uh, so that'll be fun to play two players through the game. Yeah. I can't remember how it works with two players. Does one person just they're done done until you continue again? I believe so. Or it's, can they come yeah, back? Yeah. Basically, both players have to have a game over before you can continue. If, if I remember right. Okay. So they each have their own lives. It's not a shared life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's cool. Yeah. So um, is that'll happen anyway. Continues will occur. Yeah. So the first second player will be able to come back in. Yeah. So yeah. we'll play that two player. Yeah. Uh, for sure. On an after dark. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else, uh, Todd? Not really. Again, like the, I always say like my favorite game that I've worked on is is the one I'm currently working on. But yeah, so I'm working Harpy's Curse. Yeah. I have a lot of other ideas. Great. Um, Again, we'll, we'll see what, what, what we'll see what pans out. But you know, I've been I've been teasing on Discord and the forums a little bit of maybe doing an <laughs> RPG. i also want to just maybe do a bunch of prototype oh. games with the peripherals, like with the Quadtari or or the driving controller. Yes. So we'll see. We'll see what comes up. Yes, not enough not enough driving controller games. It's such a <laughs> uh, a great controller that I hardly ever mm. see. I think I've only played one game on zero page with a driving controller it was a game rare. that you had to spin something right around and defend and was the s there's like a uh, snake game too? i can't remember yeah Is it's super controller? but yeah. it's such a great like it's yeah. it's like a paddle especially with the 2600 it's like a paddle but without all the overhead of right. having to read a paddle yeah it's and it can keep spinning and spinning and spinning cool. it's it's wonderful yeah so that's great that's great yeah, to hear. i was kind of split between making like large grandiose games uh, and then trying to make like <laughs> small little ones that you know would could fit like a first gen atari game you know that were just uh, just a fun little right five minute thing or something you can play on the couch with somebody like you know pick up and play so it's we'll see we'll see how they, <laughs> uh, what the future holds but um but yeah i i, I want to keep yeah. busy excellent well, it was uh, great talking with you yet again. 
and uh, looking forward to talking with you in the future about your uh, next game. Thank you so much. Yeah, so uh, we'll talk with you soon. Talk with you soon. Take care. Bye bye, Todd. Bye. Excellent. So, well, we just rebooted it, so we'll uh, we'll wait to reboot it <laughs> for the next. Uh... You want me to reboot it again? No, no, it just happened, so I think we're fine. I'm just. Uh, there was something in the background, like a, another application oh, was there? that had started, but I don't think that's what caused the problem. No, so. we normal everyday use doesn't seem to crash it. Like no. I'd never see crashes on this. Mm -mm. Always, always during these big events. Mm -hmm. There's always something. I feel like it's when we're we're streaming and. Like doing, doing. It's weird because that has nothing Skype? to do with the streaming. It's, it's, I don't know. It's like basically. The computer's rebooting. Like it never crashes when we talk to family. No, nope. that's <laughs> just, very true. Just when we're doing important things. Mm. It's very <laughs> not odd. the family's yeah. not important. Yeah. Although we're not running it for like hours continuously, so maybe yeah, maybe something catches up. We with only it. talk with people for half an hour. It's super weird. And like, I don't know. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's something. It's very odd. Now we'll <laughs> reboot to work around that. Mm. Um, so we're right on time. 3.30. Oh look at that. Doing pretty good. Excellent. It's the opera ghost. Yeah. Coming to haunt us. <laughs> opera the, uh, the browser? Maybe. <laughs> so the next game, let's uh, pop that out and clean this up. Won't have to reboot this time, but mm -hmm. we will in the future. How are you doing? Should, do we need to have a cat treat break? Cat break? Do you need a break? Um, no, because we're right on time, so I don't want to... You don't want to... You're fine for now. We'll wait till we have a couple extra minutes, and okay. then we'll You'll, do a you, cat you, break. You take and a I'll... quick break, yeah. <laughs> Six hours is a long time to be streaming continuously, so... It is. Uh, we've done much longer. We have. I think we've done a nine-hour... Well, we've done a 12-hour one. We yeah, know that. Cause but we, that's a little different. That was a marathon, mm -hmm. and that was very loose, and mm -hmm. nobody was waiting for us to call them and stuff mm -hmm. like that we could mm -hmm. go in and out of the room mm -hmm. um there's a cat at your feet too oh there's geez. a little black kitten there how many hours left yeah two and a half well we're going to our last one is at six six so and that's a half an hour so it's yeah. 6 30 so three technically mm -hmm. hours left mm -hmm. um so the next game is quite exciting and quite a history, or quite a big, a big production, if if uh, I could put yes. it in those terms. Yes, yes. It is Attack of the Petsky Robots. Oh, that's shiny. Yeah. Can't see that at all. <laughs> um, but I'll be unpackaging it in a moment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we uh, talked with MK Smith, Matt Smith, at PRGE. So, we won't be talking with Matt Smith today. We're going to be talking with the other developer, uh, Mike Sarna, Revenge, uh, today for the, for Attack of the Petsky Robots. So let's get uh, Mike on the line and uh, chat about this about this game. Hi, Kitty. Oh, why is the webcam so dark? There we go. Oh, we are there. Hello. Hello, Mike. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Yourself? Excellent. You sound like a, um, a CB radio. It's quite the headset. <laughs> quite the interesting sound oh. from the headset. <laughs> it's great. Very old school. Oh. Um, okay. So this, this is quite a, quite a big deal, this, this release. Uh, in my mind, anyway, um, because it's part of a bigger picture mm -hmm. um, of, of games ported to many, 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 many systems. I, I've lost count. Um, yeah. But it um, started from uh, the 8-bit guy, and but we can get into that in a little bit. Let's just talk about the packaging and open this up. Um, so let's unbox this. Now this this packaging is is kind of the same as the artwork, similar artwork to the other uh, versions of the game because I'm guessing. They wanted a similar look to all of the Attack of the Petsky robots, so he, uh, David Murray can put it up on the shelf and they all look exactly the same, right? Yeah, correct. It's a box in the Atari 7800 style, but we kind of made it look similar to, to the existing stuff for Petsky bots as well. The C64 release and yeah. so forth. So, 
It uses that same uh, nope. giant robot art. <laughs> yeah, and it's excellent, beautiful, beautiful yeah. art. I love the artwork. Uh, and I was wondering, like you just mentioned Petsky Bots, and I was like, what's the fastest way you can say the title of this game? <laughs> because it's quite a long title. And, and even on some of the artwork, it goes Attack of the 7800 Petsky Robots as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a bit of a mouthful. So, yeah, it, with all the developer conversations and so forth, back and forth, um, Petsky Bots is sort of the, the quick shorthand we came up with. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at all the goodies that are contained within this. So people opening up this uh, game will find out there's something a little bit extra that falls out when they open it up, and we'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look at the cartridge artwork, which is the beautiful robot. Mm. Just bursting out of the ground, threatening to destroy you. Beautiful, beautiful. I love the color scheme. Now, I think the colors are different on each release to differentiate them, right? Correct, correct. So uh, I think they use yellow and green in some of the David Murray releases, so we went with purple just to be a little different. And I love the purple. Yeah. really mm -hmm. stands out nicely. And for the Atari 7800 Pro system, so let's take a look at this. A nice purple landscape there. And we'll flip through this. So just like the other releases at PRGE, the um, the cartridge is there, the manual is there, but not the boxes, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Very nice manual. Lots and lots of instructions because it is quite an in-depth game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so absolutely. Let's, uh, so I, I did open it and uh, have Tanya practice it so that <laughs> she wouldn't yeah. be asking questions every two seconds. The controls, I think, are, are well, something you have to uh, yeah. figure out. So and, we, we definitely wanted to be sure that... That it was, it was working because there's a lot of controls. Yeah. And, yeah, and getting sure. to the controls, yeah. what's in this is a magical device that I'm very excited about. On one end, you've got a uh, DB9 connector. And on the other end, you've got something that's very familiar to probably a lot of people. It's an SNES controller connector. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my god. The SNES has tons of buttons. That's really exciting because there are a lot of controls in this game. And uh, it makes it convenient to have uh, an SNES controller. and. Um, I know a lot, some of these were on um, computers and some of them are on consoles. And was this connector part of all, a connector like this or this connector on other systems? Uh, yes and no. So the Atari 8-bit yeah. did have a, an SNES connector as well, but it's a little bit different. Um, the route they chose used paddle lines, which makes it a little difficult for the Atari 7800 and 2600 to use. Um, but that's another right. another point worth mentioning that this uh, adapter will be compatible with the 2600 as well. So it opens the door. Oh, for, that's exciting for future use. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be connecting in an SNES controller, which is uh, very strange. A very strange experience <laughs> hooking this up to a, a 7800 or an Atari system. Yeah. So here we go. And let's uh, get this on the screen and boot up the game. Oh, it's doing some analysis. Pro System Bot OS 3. Point pi. Human presence <laughs> detected. Oh, I missed it. Attack of the 7800 Petsky Robots. Very, very nice. There are a lot of references to um to pie in the game, so we had to throw that in with the version number there. <laughs> ah, Just a little nod beautiful. to that. Yeah. <laughs> That's excellent. And a beautiful title screen as Gorgeous. well. Gorgeous, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks really, really good. So let's talk a little bit before we get into it, uh, because we have the SNES controller plugged in, um, the different control schemes 
for this game because of the button configuration. There's a lot of buttons and controls in this game. So one of the options is the, seven, uh, the SNES controller. And correct me if I'm wrong, can you, does it automatically come with the adapter every game or is there an option to say, no, I don't want the adapter. I'm gonna use other control schemes. The adapter's coming with every single game. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, tell, tell us a little bit about the other control schemes sure. um, for the system. Sure, so you can control it just with a, a ProLine controller as well. Um, it was a bit of a feat to pull off, and basically, <laughs> some of it is we've overloaded some of the buttons. You hold one for a little while, and then it'll it'll activate mm -hmm. one function versus the other, and, and that sort of thing, as you might imagine. But the uh, the yeah. SNES is detected, auto detected, so you can see you're already controlling oh, okay. the menu with it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, as long as you don't change it from standard controls, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Correct. Um, and then you've got an option to use um, two ProLine controllers, so you can move the, the player with one and then use the other controller to, to shoot or to activate different oh, functions. Okay. Yeah, just like Robotron, yep. movement with one and, and shoot with the other, yep. Yep, and then you've got a, a third scheme that has the standard controller, a ProLine controller, and the keypad controller, like from the Star Raiders or basic programming titles. Um, and you can use that in the exact same fashion. You can use it by pushing the button to shoot or to to uh, items in that group. Oh, oh, your video is frozen. Oh, we're back. We're good. A little drop in uh, bandwidth on somewhere. Yeah, something happened yeah. there. <laughs> we're all good. We're, all we're, good. we're broadcasting fine. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Al says, we used the purple for the art background as purple was the color Atari used on various 7800 materials. So it's a throwback um, to, to original artwork um, that uh, Atari used. That's very cool. It's nice to, to know all these little, little in things as yeah. well. So go for it. Okay. Let's, let's jump into it. So, so you started with map one? Map one. Okay. Yes, yes, That's yes, good. yes. So the graphics are... Astounding, like really, really great. Especially the the face in the top corner. That's that's really, really nice. Um, so this appears to be the seventh boxed release of Attack of the Petsky Robots, if I counted them correctly, um, mm -hmm. including Genesis, Amiga, Atari 8-bit, C64, C++, and C128, and their compatible versions. So how much did you? check out other implementations or communicate with other developers of the games while making yours and maybe talk about some of the stuff that sets your version apart from the other versions. Sure. So we didn't really communicate with any of the other developers. And in fact, um, we just got the source from David Murray and we had a little bit of communication, a little bit of QA testing, but for the most part, he just let us run with it. Um, yeah. There are some interesting graphical choices uh, that we've, we've taken on, like um, we've got the flags at the very beginning of the, the level. They're actually waving in our version and they aren't waving in, in some of the others. Um, uh, okay. There's yeah. all kinds of little graphical tweaks like that. When the player dies, um, they turn into a skeleton and dissolve. That, that, <laughs> nice. kind, of, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, a lot, of, a lot of little graphical tweaks for sure. Yeah. And, and you were able to do this um, just because you wanted to do this or you had the room to do it um, and other systems di weren't able to uh, accomplish it or? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, we came up with a special bank, uh, bank switching format for it. Um, Fred Quimby, AKA Batari, um, had come up with the, mm. with the scheme yep. for us and that allowed us to store a whole lot more uh, information and more importantly, make that all of that information available at one time to, to the processor. So uh, okay. for, that gives for us, the tech, kind of gave us more, an edge, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So th there's a lot of new developments in this, including the controller and the, and the cartridge, uh, the way it's uh, stored, uh, the information. Maybe talk a little bit about the, the special advancements in in the cartridge uh for the techies out there that are that are interested in for the developers that may want to use this going forward 
sure. Um, the main innovation is that the cartridge is, is, is split in two, with the CPU seeing one half of the cartridge and the Maria, the graphics processor, processor on the 7800, seeing the other half. Um, and traditionally, a 7800 game has to um, kind of balance the ROM between those two, those two um, views. So your code is always fighting with, with some of the graphics. You know, you're trying to fit in both, sort of like a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, in this right. case, yeah, in this case, um, splitting it, it makes the game a lot, um, gives you a lot more room in terms of graphics and addressable graphics, sort of, which is more important to the game. So, it, now, was this it, a feature that's just underused or not used on the 7800, or is it all internal in the cartridge that um, this, this um, splitting happens? Yeah, so the splitting is kind of a, a little bit of a new concept. Um, the first game to come across using that in the 7800 was actually Ricky and Vicky. So ah. they're doing the same thing. Um, there we go. I happen to have it here. I was test using it to yeah. test setting this up. <laughs> yeah, and the technology to do it isn't that complicated. In fact, like this, this format could have existed back in the day. It would have been uh, okay. viable to use it in, in the hardware. So it's not that complicated a thing. We're not really doing anything extraordinary in terms of the 7800 and the signals it puts out. So, hmm. uh, it, In my mind, it would have been the, the next logical evolution if the 7800 had been a, a little more commercially viable. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's unfortunate that it, it didn't uh, really flourish in its heyday against the NES because it's more than capable of doing so much as as you can everybody can see on the screen right now it's it's unbelievable what the 7800 is able to pull off yeah um so let's let's go back to the controller uh adapter a bit mm -hmm. for a second are all the buttons accessible um yeah. on the uh controller yep yep they're all they're all addressable um you can read each one um any combination of buttons it's all it's all there. really all independent yep like i know on the intellivision there's some crossover between the buttons and the and the pad and you can press them independently but they me mean other things like you can't press, press them at the same time so all of these are like one two three four five six seven eight plus the directions yeah that's a lot of buttons that's amazing it is it is so basically um when you're talking to the to the snes controller from the console you're reading it like a, a serial device, so you're, you're just pulling out the bits as to which buttons are pressed. So we have them all. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, and I, I was thinking that back back a couple of years ago. It's like, oh, you could do a controller with a lot of buttons, but you'd have to read them sequentially. You couldn't yep. read them all at once. Um, so it, there's a certain time frame where you kind of, I guess, read the controller as a buffer, and then. And, and then look at the the buttons that were pressed within the, that sequence and then use them rather than, oh, okay, these combinations are pressed at this time. It's like, is this one pressed? Is this one pressed? Is this one pressed? Yep, yep, you got it. Very nice. Um, oh my God, I ran out of questions. Um, <laughs> so, um, did you play any of the other uh, versions of this game on other consoles before you ventured into making this one, or did you just strictly look at the original version and the code and make it into a 7800 game? Yeah, so we started just with the original. Um, we had seen some of the videos for some of the other versions, um, but for the most part, yeah. it was all just based on, on what we were given, and then we kind of figured out where we could take it on the 7800. Yeah, and was that a conscious choice where he's like, I don't want to, I don't want to see what other people have done with it. I want to make it the best I can on the seventy eight hundred. Yeah, a hundred percent. And we were talking about some of those things that were unique to to what we've done. Um, one of the things is yeah. our game has like a a different cursor for when you're moving things versus searching. Now that wasn't originally in David's code. Originally, it was just our right. uh, single cursor. But then since then. Some of the other versions have taken on this exact same idea that when you're searching, um, a different cursor appears than, than when you're moving things. So, yeah. we've we've and, and, we certainly we added to it for sure, and uh, some of the other authors have it, taken note. 
<laughs> I see. Yeah, because there's still many, many in development as well. Yeah, absolutely. So they can take on what you've innovated and included in their game, making their game, you know, even better, which is great. Great yep. for everyone. Yeah, a lot of fun, for sure. A lot of collaboration. <laughs> Albeit not at the same time, we're kind of looking over the fence as to what everybody else is doing, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and obviously, uh, yourself and Matt are, are more than capable of making a game like this, but in the eyes of uh, David Murray, who maybe have never met you, may have never heard of you, um, what was the vetting process like? Did you have to kind of, you ask for the code, start on it, and then say, here's what we've done, is this good enough to be an official release? Or how did that conversation happen? Yeah, sure. Um, David gets asked for the source a whole lot, as you might imagine. And so yeah. his, his process just is to, to give the source to whoever asks for it and then see, <laughs> and then see what comes of it. And so, um, right. and so he, he was a little bit worried in that he didn't, you know, he, David doesn't frequent Atari age. He doesn't know anybody involved in, in the project. And then he had heard that it, it involved a special banking format, and, um, you know, up until this point, he's only seen it running on an emulator. Now, you guys are playing it on real hardware, you know, it's working and everything else, but... So, yep, so far, it was so a, good. It was, a bit, <laughs> it was a bit of a leap of faith for him, but um, yeah. he, was, he was blown away by what we could do on the 7800. Yeah. Um, uh, Matt says to press the select button to bring up uh, the menu. A menu. Yeah, oh, the, the, con uh, the console select menu, I think is what he's talking about. Console, console select. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's, here's some options. So you can change yeah. who you are. You can be Mike. Let's see who else there is. Yeah. David. David, Murray, In Bruce. Bruce, somebody. Yeah, so you got a choice of three different heroes, or you can also yeah. change the, uh, the volume as well here. Ah, so if you want, I just want to hear more of the sound effects and the, the music's a bit a bit much at the moment. Smart. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. And I'm, I'm really surprised that uh, more games don't have that. Mm. But, you know, some people are like, this is the game. This is how it is. This is, I've, I've tested it. The balance is great. It's nice to have options. <laughs> but for, this is a long, a long game. So I can understand that, okay, yeah, I've heard the music on this level. I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> and, some uh, people love chiptunes more than more than other people. <laughs> yeah. And I, I love yeah. chiptunes, and I, I play pokey music before the show, so yeah. this, this music is, is really, really great. Mm -hmm. um, oh, switch. it's wonderful. You have to hit select yeah. again. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, let's yeah. get out of there. <laughs> so you want to take a look at another level? Or are you you're like into this level? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Death. Oh, the, there's the death animation. The there death we animation. go. Looks beautiful. Yeah. And you're a pile of bones. <laughs> Um, let's uh, talk a little bit about the music, actually. Now, okay. is this music all original to the 7800, or was it ported over from another system? And has this music maybe been asked by some of the other developers to be ported back to a, another system? Okay, so yeah, Noel uh, Amen, I believe is how you say her name, It was a composer for the music. She had come up with um, songs for the C64 and a few other platforms. And so she's reinterpreted those songs for, for Pokey uh, in this release. Oh. And so that's a, sort of an interesting, you can do a compare and contrast with some of these themes. Um, I think right. Pokey sounds pretty neat. And I think a lot of her music has um, some off color kind of beats. Like in my mind, yeah. it's, it's, it's robotic type tones. And I think Pokey really excels at that, and so it's 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 a neat flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it works. It works really well. So had had she worked yeah. with uh, the Pokey chip before? Are you aware of? No, no. This was her very first Pokey production too, and and that's what makes it all oh, the more wow. amazing. Just just knocked it out of the park. <laughs> that's great. Uh, did she? Uh give you any feedback on how she uh, compared the Sid to the Pokey and whether she's like, oh, Pokey's really capable, this is great, and I want to maybe do some more in the future, or she's like, Sid, Sid, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> she's pretty, um, pretty happy with the way things came out. Uh, we didn't get specifically into, you know, whether whether she prefers one over the other. I think, like anything with, with chiptune composers, they like, they like moving around and trying different things. 
Yeah, it's, it's like getting a whole new keyboard or bank of sounds to play with, so I would think that it would be a lot 100%. of fun uh, for a musician to... Oh, I get to have a, a purpose to try out the pokey, a, a goal to work towards. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's uh, this is great. And um, is there anything you'd like... Uh, any any upcoming games for, for yourself? I, I know I talked to to Matt at PRGE, but uh, anything else you're working on? I know you help a lot with a lot of people's uh, games here and there for code and optimization and, and help yeah. them. But any, wanna... any games for yourself? Okay, so yeah, I do have some work in progress stuff. Nothing that I've revealed yet or ready to reveal, but for sure there's stuff coming in the future. Yeah, oh, that's great. Like you, great to hear. Like you and, said, I've, I've got a lot of consulting going on. So. <laughs> that's right. People come to you for help, that's for sure. 100%. Which is, yeah. which is great. It's yeah. fun. It's fun. Yeah. And um, anything else that I didn't cover that you'd like to add about the game or the release of this game? I mean, it's, it's, it must be a, a good feeling to, to have this finally come out as well. Yeah, oh yeah, it's wonderful. Um, you know, it... It was just a whole lot of work, and, and you know, it's not just me. It's been, it's been, you know, Matt, Matt Smith, and and it's been, um, you know, all, all the people contributing the art and so forth. So it's, it's great to finally see it in physical form. It's wonderful. Yeah, and, and somebody in the chat, uh, Cafe Mantuti asks, uh, what Petsky means, and it's pretty far removed at this point. What the, the origins of, of Petsky, especially being on a, uh, an Atari system, <laughs> it should be Attack of the Ataski, Ata if that's how you say it, Ataski robots. But even then, you're not even using the, the character codes to draw the screen. So maybe we can talk that's just right. to touch on that a, a brief bit. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, the game was originally released on the Commodore PET and C64 platforms. And instead of ASCII, they're using a scheme called Petsky. So it's a little bit of a play on words, um, you know, pesky robots, but in this case, right. pesky. So, um, and again, uh, yeah, you mentioned the original game was, was all um, character based. And uh, yeah. yeah, we've come a long way since then. <laughs> yeah, fully color, beautiful graphics yeah. and lifelike, lifelike renderings of people's faces on the screen. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous, yeah. And um, yeah, uh, looking forward to playing this as, as well on an After Dark and working our way through the different levels. And um, it would be really great to uh, get on uh, David Murray to talk about this as, as well in the future. I'd be riveted. <laughs> yeah. Love to hear him and, talk. And to see, what his, to see his reaction cause, uh, uh, to seeing the final, the, the final boxed <laughs> version of the game and out, uh, out once again on a different platform mm -hmm. so yep, absolutely. well thank you so much uh for coming on uh mike and uh great talking to you for the first time in yeah, person it was fun time thanks for having me yeah so we will see you on the forums okay sounds good cheers bye 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 there we go have fun with that. So much fun. <laughs> I just want to keep playing. <laughs> yeah, well, we have to stick to a schedule today. Unfortunately, yeah. yes. So, actually, you can keep playing, um, and I'm going to take a short break well, while we have a couple we, minutes. Why don't we feed the cats? Well, you can feed the I cats. I can feed the cats. You can take a break. You'll probably yep. want to move that. Oh, yeah, I'll clean this up. Oh, the cats are getting excited. Okay, so... Um, are you feeding feeding the cats? No, no, I'll give Oh, them treats, okay. Treats. That's them. good, because I was thinking, oh, we'll God, there's no, treats. nobody oh, no, on... we won't feed them. No, no. They can fill up on treats, mm -hmm. fill up on snacks, right, kitties? Yeah, like, I know yeah. someone tried to give them catnip earlier, so I apologize, because it's, um, we've got it shut off for that, but... Um, yeah, you can still spend your bits, unfortunately. Unfortunately, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't We'll try to um, give them some bonus treats uh, on the next show. Yes. Um, they lo they'll like that. Yeah, oh, be very oh happy. pathetic cat. So oh, pathetic. so pathetic. Do you want to do it on this table? I'll do it on that table. I okay. think that, that works. You can put the screen. Put the screen on it. Set time for some tree time. Okay, so let me set this up so we don't see the 
the laptop. There we go. Let's switch over. We can have the music of Attack of the Petsky Robots in the background. Perfect. While the cats get okay. fed. Uh, put your earbud out down. Oh yeah, because it gets bad. It, it'll cut it cut off. And if you can reboot the computer. Reboot right now, that actually, one? While you're feeding. Oh, yep. right. And not the broadcast one. So I'll be back in a few minutes, people. All right. So, who wants treats? Anyone? Oh, they followed him downstairs. That is really, really funny. <laughs> yeah, oh, here they are. Over here. Over here. Come up here. There you go. Are you gonna ring the bell? Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Oh my goodness, it's cat chaos. Come here. There's a bell. There's the bell. Right there. Someone gonna ring it? Anyone? Anyone? Here. Ring the bell. Okay, I'll get you started. There's one for you and one for you. <laughs> Don't damage any of the parts. <laughs> Dumping the contents of the container on the floor might be worth 500k. No, don't play with those. Here, there you go. Okay, next. Sprite, come here. Sprite, come here. Come here, bring the bell, buddy. Right here. Oh, okay, we're gonna take that as a, as a bell. There you go. There's one for you. They're, <laughs> they're running away with their treats. What a funny cat. Come here. They're like taking them and running off with them like the other one's gonna eat them. Well, they do. That's the problem. <laughs> okay. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, oh. Eat them. Okay. Meow, meow, meow. Very they are? Oh my god, they're. Oh. They're just running off with them. Ugh. No, you have to earn them. <laughs> to earn your treats. I think it's strange having them on a table. I think they, they're like, <laughs> why aren't these on the ground? They get it when it's on the ground. Ring the bell. Ring it. Oh, I heard that. Someone rang it. Ring it. Oh, he's panicky. Ring it? No, ring the bell. Uh, almost. <laughs> Come on. Ring the bell. This. No, don't shove it. There, I heard a ding. <laughs> he's so manic when I put it down. He's like, oh my god, the black cat's gonna get it. Ring yeah. it? Maybe hold the bell. Because it moves around. Ring the bell. He can smell the treat in your hand, so he's going after your hand. Ring the bell. Good kitty. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna take it away. Oh, I ate it already. Ring it. No, ring that. That top. Top part. Velcro bell. Yeah, we need to. On the floor, it works really, really yeah, well. It does because it's on the. No, ring it. Ring it. Oh, there you go. Just have them. <laughs> We have to move on. Yeah. There you go. It's a silly, silly cat. Okay. What do we have next? Bye, cat cam. Oh, I'm looking forward to playing all these games after. Oh, my goodness. I'm so lucky I get to play them all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Six hours of game playing today. Mm -hmm. um, so, up next, we have... The Pac-Man Collection 40th Anniversary Edition uh, with Bob DeCrescenzo. This is going to be fun. There's <laughs> a lot of games in here. Look at that. Pac-Man Collection. Ooh. So let me get my stand back up here. Mm -hmm. So if you can get uh, Bob on the line, we are at 403. Ooh. So hopefully he's ready. Mm -hmm. He... Um... Here's to be. Excellent. Let's see. Let me just get this out of the package so it's not all glary when I first show it. There we go. Excellent. 
Excellent. Oh, I have to turn the computer on again. One second. Here we go. And there we go. Oh, where's my earpiece? Where'd you put it? There it is. <laughs> One second, Bob. That makes it difficult. Yep. I hear audio. That's good. Hello, Bob. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Oh, you've got your your fully pac man out in the background <laughs> nice. there. Nice. Yeah. I'm in my room. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's the coveted metal Atari age sign. You're so lucky to have one of those. <laughs> yeah. um, so here is the new... Uh, version of your Pac-Man game, Pac-Man Collection 40th Anniversary Edition. So when was the 40th anniversary? Uh, two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but some, some worldwide thing happened two years ago, so now here it is. <laughs> so uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, the packaging for the release, and is it uh, new artwork or adapted artwork from the original? No, it's new artwork. Uh, Nathan Nathan did the, art, the, the artwork for all three, actually, the Pac-Man 40th, Gal Galaxian, and Unilors. And it, it, he's, he's an incredible artist. I mean, he, he just, uh, I just hard to, it's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to describe. It's just, I've been a fan of his, yeah. of all of his artwork for such a long time. And, and just all of it is, uh, um, it, it's incredible, his work, what he does. Yeah, it lends itself really well, his style of artwork, to video games. Because just look at the, the characters. It just screams video games and arcade artwork. Like, you, you think back to the arcade mm -hmm. uh, signage on the sides of the cabinets. And uh, it, any of his artwork can easily fit in into that style of artwork. Uh, Nathan's work is, is astounding. And I love seeing every subsequent release that he does of the, of the artwork and his in-game graphics as well. It's yeah. just astounding. So let's open it up and take a look at the contents of what's in this. Okay. There we go. Did I dent it? No, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> there so let's take a look at the cartridge even though it's rarely contains surprises it's the front of the cover very there nice. we go very very nice very mm -hmm. colorful it's got all the um, mazes a, ver a variety of mazes all the characters in there it's just beautiful mm -hmm. looks really really nice <laughs> now did you uh, get him to just you just said hey make a make some pac-man artwork and I'll leave you to it yeah I, I was not about to tell him. <laughs> um, he's he's pretty uh, trustworthy, and uh, by this point, everybody knows that he's going to come through with really nice artwork. Absolutely. Yeah. There's the uh, uh, manual there. Yeah. Let's take a look inside. Oh, very dense. There we go. Lots of rules and uh, values for because there's a lot of games in this, mm -hmm. so I, I expected it to be packed full of information. Yeah, and it's tried, I tried. I screens. Was, I wrote the 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 uh, text for the manual, and I tried to get as much as in in, in as small a space as possible. And um, it's actually surprising how small the manual is compared to how many actual games there are in the collection, and you're able to pack the the information in so densely. That's great. Yeah, it's it's an well as far and speaking of which, as far as the game is goes, it's it's a 128k game, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, fairly fairly sizable. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so let's get uh, into the game. You ready for some Pac-Man? Yes. Does it let's need to be? Disconnect yes. this uh, strange SNES controller. <laughs> <laughs> it's so foreign to the. Uh, nope. This one. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. So funny, I, I totally forgot. Like, I always use 7800 for 7800 games and 2600 for 2600 games, but now, today, I'm playing them all in 7800, and because I'm like, okay, this works yeah. just great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just didn't need to pack it all full, so uh, I'm going to disconnect that for tomorrow's show. I, okay, so I need let's to get one of those controllers, by the way. I really need to get one of them. <laughs> they, they're fantastic. The, the Bratwurst controllers, yeah, they're just, they really are. they're the right size. 
they're the right weight. Yes. They, they have the right click and travel on the buttons, mm -hmm. and they just look good, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I really love the look of them. Okay, so let's boot it up. <laughs> Ready. <laughs> Pac-Man collection. Excellent. So this, this, you get value for your dollar with this game. Oh. That's for sure. And if yes. you love Pac-Man, uh, you're, you're going to be busy for a while with this one. So um, can you talk a little bit about this 40th anniversary version of the Pac-Man collection that the original one was released in 2006, if, uh, if I'm correct? Yeah. Um, so what has been added and updated uh, in this version of the game? The... Um... Well, it started out, I, I wanted to, I was talking to Kurt, um, and he wanted me to do something for the XM, so I figured I should probably start with, to make it easy on myself, I should probably start with something I know, and try to work on the sound, the new sound, the new, and all well, the graphics. I was going to do them differently, but I ended up doing them like this now. Yeah. Um, and it, it also accumulated from back when I did a 320 mode, which is what this is, version of, uh, of just Pac-Man or just Ms. Pac-Man and the next logical step was just to take the whole thing and put it all together in, in a, like I did with Pac-Man Collection originally but with the new upgraded, upgraded um, video and sounds. So I started doing that and then I got, um, oh my god I'm drawing a blank. Um, <laughs> did the, set, the XM sounds I, with me. Okay. Oh wow. Um, oh, it can come to you later. You can fill in the blanks yes. later. Um, it's, <laughs> it's on the it's on the splash screen. I thanked him for the sounds. Um, oh. But um, let me. Yeah. I've got the manual here, so maybe it's in here. Wow. I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> but he, he... credits. Nope. Uncredited. No. No. Wait. No. No. I can't find it either. We'll have to find it later. Uh, it's definitely we'll look on at the splash, splash screen, screen again. On the, on the okay. Um, I wanted to make sure he was on that. Um, so once, if it's Tanya ever dies, <laughs> <laughs> she's been practicing uh, Pac-Man a lot lately. We uh, can go back to the main screen. Because we did, uh, we did play this. Uh, I'll, I'll let myself die. That's oh. Right. oh, well, or you yeah, can do that. Let's... Either way. <laughs> um, let's go to the splash screen. Again. Anyway, so I, I, hmm. I figured out. Ready. Nope. I figured oh, I would for a second. Uh, yeah. uh, put all, put it all together. Finish. Finish. Um, I'm I'm actually watching because I can't I can't see the video screen of of our, oh, of our thing, so okay. I have another screen going with your with your thing on it so that's why I'm there. We go. YM Sound Perry Twente. Yes, there is there it is, and I am so sorry, Perry. Uh, but yeah, he, he was. <laughs> He was great with that. He knows he knows the 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 YM the Yamaha sound very well, so um, right. you can hear it when you got it when you use it. But um, so anyway, I was trying to get more familiar with that, and we worked we worked together on that for the sound. Um, and I also wanted to make the TS sound better because I heard the better Hackman uh, for the twenty six hundred. Um, right. That yeah. not, which has great probably, sound. Yeah. I don't know what the guy's name, right? Dintari, uh, D I N T A R. Uh, yeah. yeah. Dintari 816? Yes. 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 There and we go. I said, all right, so it, we can get it closer. So that made me you know, really uh, struggle with the uh, TI, but I got better for it. I got better at it for it. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so I, I, I put all that together, and, and that's that's what ends up. That's what you're looking at here. <laughs> uh, very, very, very nice. Wait. <laughs> Yep, and and um, and you thought, okay, this is this is worthy to be re-released. Um, I wasn't gone at first. I, I was, okay. Yep. I, I'm figuring everybody's so tired of, of <laughs> me doing these, but I said, another Pac-Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, uh, I I I finally gave in. I said, all right, yeah, I might as well set these. I might as well put this out as a as a 40th anniversary, and it was around the time I wasn't planned that way. I just happened to be working right. on it when you know 2020 came around, so I said, eh, "Might as well do it that. Might as well do it for that." And that was the uh, that was the genesis of this. Right. And so, uh, 
looking at the screen and the graphics and, you know, 320 mode, I know in the forums you released a compact squished version almost, I guess. Now, is this... Was the aim for this one, uh, and I guess the original as well, to do a, a pixel for pixel style recreation of the arcade game? Is that why um, you settled on the scrolling up and down? Yes. Yeah, I wanted the same aspect ratio, same everything. I, I took, I, I ripped all the graphics from the arcade games, though. It's mm. yeah, and, and that's what I was trying. That was a, that's what I was going after for this one. <laughs> And, and have you any, I mean, you you love Pac-Man, so there's your opinion of this, but also the opinion of other Pac-Man enthusiasts in not being able to see all the screen at once and where the ghosts are. Has anybody given you feedback on that, whether it's like, okay, this is, this makes it a little bit more challenging or it's completely fine. I could, I know, I pretty much know where the ghosts are or it's irrelevant when they're that far away. Um, that's the. I actually was getting feedback on it, and that is why I did the short maze version. Um, <laughs> I had somebody complain on actually it was YouTube. Uh, one of the YouTube videos I did, oh. the work in progress ones, and they and when I died, it, it's it in the video they wrote, you know, and this is why it's not the uh, arcade version of Pac-Man. I'm like, okay. Uh. <laughs> So yeah. that and somebody else, somebody on the, on the forums mentioned that they weren't crazy about the scrolling. So I said, you know, I put two of them out. The maze won't match, but um, so yeah. I can get it as close as possible. Yeah, and I think I, I talked a little bit about this in a, in a previous interview today about the um, when people, the expectations of people with with ports, especially a port as well known as Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man, and he, somebody ports it to a system, there, there's a certain expectation when they play it, and and I guess it was quite quite a huge expectation for Pac-Man because people know this inside and out. There are very specific rules how the ghosts behave, and even quirks in the arcade game where. It's like they expect this certain thing to happen. Um, so how closely do you replicate when you do ports, say, Pac-Man to the arcades? Like, oh, does it does it crash on screen 256? Or, you know, does, you know, the, the score only go up to this this much and things like that? The 256 stage crash is the only place I took a liberty. Um, <laughs> I, I tried to get it as close as possible, obviously, and, and, and knowing... With with what I do and what I was able to do, I got it as close as possible. I even put in the bug, the overflow bug, when Pinky's looking yeah. up is actually four dots. It's four spaces ahead of you when Pinky's direction he is. But, but when he's up, it's right. four up and to the left from, from an yeah. overflow bug. So I did that same thing, just because like, I wanted it in there. Uh, um, and as far as the 56, 256 screen... I put yep. a final intermission in there, uh, and ah, and so instead smart. of crashing, you kind of finish the game. So <laughs> that's right, that was my thing I did. Because you can't really continue or finish the game in the arcade, so yeah. why not put in something special, especially for somebody who can make it up to that level? Yeah, it's like well. You know, you did something pretty, pretty amazing by finishing the game. Here you go. Um, if you want to, you know, have the arcade experience completely, and you know, then you can play the arcade game and crash to 256 if you want. But this is <laughs> this is a home version. It's going to be a little bit different. Yeah. And and I find that with a lot of ports, it's like, well, you know, some things you don't want to bring over, some bugs that you don't want to bring over, that that really detract from it, and you have to kind of work around in the arcade. Mm -hmm. Um, this this appears to be the ultimate comp com compilation of Pac-Man uh, games with so many variations and options and um, and and with this and and other Pac-Man games that you made and especially Baby Pac-Man, you it's seemingly that you've completed your quest <laughs> to, to port all the Pac-Man games to the seventy-eight hundred. Uh, are there? I know. I, I know there's some left, but are there any left for you that you're like, oh, I should do all of them, or that's enough, the other ones, 
Eh, I don't really care about too much because there's like Pac Land, I think, right? Pac Land, I'm like, never crazy about. Um, so like, probably <laughs> not going to happen. But, um, and uh, Pac Man and Chomp Chomp is the other one that I. Uh, I, I was iffy about it for a while, and I, I just. I don't know it well enough, and I. It's not something I want to. I feel my time is spent better spent doing other. Possibly other ports, if I can. <laughs> so that yes. And, so those are the and, only and two do, that, are, that are missing. Yeah, and it's just not worth the, the trouble to just to call it complete. It's like, well, if you don't enjoy those games, yeah. it's going to be a torture fest <laughs> making these games and testing these games out over and over and over again. Yeah. It's like, oh, I hate this game, and what's the point of doing it just <laughs> to say you've done it? So you can say, I've done all the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> and and your ports of other games are astounding as well like, like we're going to be talking about two more games like you've got three releasing today um so yeah i i i would also like you to uh, make games that you enjoy rather than slogging through ones yeah thank you um, so, is there anything you'd like to else you'd like to add about this uh, this updated release of Pac Man collection? Um, it was a challenge getting the colors as close as I could get them on this, this right. mode. Um, and Defender Twenty Six Hundred helped a lot. He pushed me, like, because I was I was ready to um, settle, so to speak, on on not right. uh, one, uh, uh, not so good versions of the graphics <laughs> and he said no yeah. you could do it this way and i'm like wow yeah i never thought of that <laughs> so, I did. so i did so it was uh i mean it's, there's still some liberties taken you know like right she's yeah. playing right now uh, pac-man plus um inky's yeah. green same color i had to share inky's color with the maze because i only had to switch right. out so um so i could find that yeah thing. Yeah, and, and with any system, you're going to hit a limitation, like especially with 2600 or 7800 with the amount, not the number of colors you can choose from, but the number of colors you can d display on the screen at any given time. So, yeah, and, you know, you, you make the best compromise you can. And uh, that's great that you had some help with it and, and were able to improve it. And that's the, the power of the community. Yeah. Um, giving feedback and also you know you sharing with community community because i know you're very uh, open with your games um as as you progress through them and i think that's a big strength um Thank you. so that people can give input into your games and it only really benefits everyone in the end because they also get the game they want at the same time as you get the game you want i agree so maybe talk a little bit about that, uh, about your openness with your games. And, and I, I know, you know, looking through the forums and looking through your postings of the games, uh, people can see the iterations as it goes through bit by bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I, I, I don't know. I've always just felt like, because I'm not hiding anything. I don't, not, not that I'm hiding anything. I don't feel like. Yeah. I, I like to see people happy with what they're playing. So I, I'm I'm also one of those people who, like, when you get Christmas gifts, I can't wait to Christmas. I have to give it to the person now. So I'm, I'm, that's that's yeah. my that's my mo, I guess. I just I like to, I like to put things out there. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I can I can understand that too. It's like yeah, especially with the like gifts for people. It's like well. You've got it in your hands. They're right there. <laughs> you know they're gonna like it. Like why wait till that? Wait till that time. And 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 it's the same for video games. I'm sure every developer is like, I can't wait to release this. I can't wait for see people to to see what I've been working on. And some of these games take you know years before they're finished. And you know to get that gratification and feedback. Yeah. Oh, so close. Yeah. Uh, is, is really, really nice. And, you know, as, as a filmmaker myself, we're, we're a lot more limited because you really don't want to show it off because people... Uh, there's always uh, the scare factor of people thinking that's the end product when you show clips and they're not colored or the sound's not right and, and people dismiss it right away. Yeah. But luckily, you know, people in the forums 
Like, people who follow the development of games in the forums know they have this in their mind, but they know this game isn't done because you've stated that and you're looking for input. So that's that's a big strength, I think. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, it's, it, I just, I like... I, I like putting it out there anyway. I don't I don't I don't feel that it detracts from like I'm not doing this for sales and stuff like that. That's not why I'm right. I, I'm I'm just doing it because I like I like doing it. I like I like putting it out there and um, I like being appreciated. I mean I, I mean that may sound <laughs> but I do I like it. Well we, we we definitely appreciate all the effort <laughs> and and care that you put into these games because I know you really, really do care about them. If anybody has read um, the threads in the forums, like you, you care a lot, um, a lot more than I think a lot of developers do uh, about about the games and how they're perceived, and how how much dedication you put into them and, and making them the best, not not only that you can make them the best that they could be made, and that's where the collaboration comes in as well. It's like somebody you you you, you look. You appreciate help coming in, mm -hmm. and I, I really admire that a lot. That's very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's get on to the next game. Looks like Tanya's wrists are getting a. Oh my hand. Let's go. Let's, let's yeah. go to a two-dimensional game. Okay. <laughs> uh, or or one-dimensional game, sorry, <laughs> instead of a two-dimensional. So you only have to move the joystick left and right. Um, so let's go to Uniwars. Uh, a shooter, which I'm very excited about. So let's go back there. Off that goes. That's enough Pac-Man <laughs> for you for now. Okay. Let me put these boxes over here. Uh, where is Uniwars? There it is. Excellent. So let's take a look at this packaging. Um, and this looks like uh, same artist. Oh yeah. So let's talk a little bit about this uh, this packaging. Did you have uh, any input on this one either? You just said go go hog wild on this one. Again, I, I didn't want to didn't want to say any. I mean, he knows what he's doing, so I'm not I'm not about to say. You know, could you do it this way? The only thing I asked for um, is that the logo be like the old one, you know, like the like the because my I was trying to keep. Right. The the Atari seventeen hundred you know, that that logo, um, and he he did it, but he made it smaller, which actually is better because it takes up so much room. And he made that point that it that logo takes up so it much does. room, and it doesn't need to. So, um, so yeah, they, you don't want to detract from the the beautiful artwork below it um, of the ship and the uh, the great cartoonish. Uh, yeah. People screaming at the, mm -hmm. them being uh, a little bit roasted from the uh, from the ship taking off. <laughs> That's great. So let's pop this open and take a look at the contents inside. There we go. Take a look at the cartridge artwork here. And if anybody has any uh, questions in the chat, feel free to to. Post some questions. Just put put in all capitals question, and then put your question yeah. after. I'm keep I'm keeping Sweet. an eye on the chat as well, but it, it, I don't know how mm -hmm. much the delay Excellent. is between what I'm seeing in the, in the chat. It's it's not too bad, and and for questions, it's not it's not that a big of a deal if if it's like 30 seconds later as well. Um, so let's take a look at the manual here. Video game cartridge for the Atari 7800. Oh. Don't have to have too many pages for this one. Not as big as the, the Pac-Man one. That's great. There you go. There's the back. And I love your uh, logo, the C crushing the M. Oops, there it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> That's awesome. That's a, that's a, a reworking of an old logo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Updated yes. for now. Okay, so let's uh, let's get Uniwars up and going, and we'll take a look at that game. Ready. Um, okay, so Uniwar. I, I looking. I think last time I did research on this when we when we ran through every single game you've ever made. Um, 
it, it looks like it's Unawar S. It's hard to find out information whether it's supposed to be Unawar S, but the S I've seen is capitalized in some places. So I don't know if Unawars or Unawar S, it works either way. I personally like um, Unawars. So that's that's how I refer it, to it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a little bit easier to pronounce and, and not easier, but it makes more sense. Like Unawar well, S, what does S stand for? Why would you make for? it S, not Unawar 1 or Unawar 5? <laughs> that's right, Unawar R. <laughs> so yeah, it, as you say, it might just be the logo has the capitalized S at the end. But, yeah, that yeah. might have just been a styli stylistic mm -hmm. choice rather than, oh, it's supposed to be Unawar S. But and... it's funny that this causes a lot of controversy, because <laughs> you know? I called it Unawar S. And yeah. then you said Unawars, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know which one, but it works. It yeah. works either way. I so, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it's a fairly unknown game, I think, um, but with some very uh, unique levels. Uh, was this a a game you had uh, some history with? Did you see it in the arcade? Did you discover it later on? Uh, yeah, I did. I did see it in the arcade um, in, in like a 7-Eleven somewhere long. I, I was back in the day. And yeah. recently, when I started working on it, I had watched, um, there was a video on YouTube. Um, I can't remember the channel right now, but um, yeah. Arcade USA or something like that. Um, and right. he played this. And I said, I remember this game. And I watched it play and I'm going, <laughs> I could probably do this, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I, I so I started working on it, and it just um, it, 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 it I, I played it. I had it on main. I, I, I what I do is when I'm trying to match uh, movement, I take screenshots of every movement, every every ah. every frame basically, and I count how many frames it does right. in the movement with with direction. So I spend a lot of time trying to you know figure out the exact movement and. The horizontal, you got to divide by two because the 320 mode moves two pixels for every one. Like it, it, it. Oh, so okay. all the all the horizontal yep, movements have to be right. divided by two. So, um, so I, I did that, and uh, that's that's how I got the movement of those UFOs. Actually, she's uh, that right. She's up on right now. So, so you you strive for uh, arcade accuracy as much as possible yeah. in in the character design and also the movement. So I, I remember uh, speaking to uh, John Champo in the past, and I don't know how he does it. I, yeah. He wings it. He <laughs> does not. He does not do measurements. Really? He doesn't look at you know anything. I mean, he has he has uh, Nathan Strum do the artwork a lot, uh, the graphics in the game, but for the movement and stuff, he just he goes by feel. I, I, I don't know how, wow. but somehow they're they're just as good, if not better, than the arcade versions. Yeah. Um, so, but it, it it does make it a lot I don't know a lot easier to I would think to do the measurements first so that you get it perfect yeah. and right. And but how hard is it to code for those those movements again if you don't have say the formula for the arc of the curve or the movements? Um, to translate that into code from what you're seeing on the screen, it's um, well, it, it's hard when you have to do it that way. Um, like when I did when I did Super Circus Atari Age, I, I one thing I regret with that game, I used the same arc from Atari from uh, from Circus Atari, and I should uh, right. and I, I should have should have done my own <laughs> arc. Um, so mm. I just anyway, I, I, that's another game. But um, <laughs> but yeah, when you when when I don't have the the measurements I ha I try to I try to approximate them as well and it just never comes out the same. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So whenever possible, try uh, to get you know that's and I did the the Astro Blaster. I I actually found the area in the arcade ground where the where the enemy uh, ships were moving and how and how they moved and where how it picked which movement to do and I was lucky. Oh um, okay. Um. So I just used all all those tables. They're all tables. Uh, yeah, and, and do you ever? Uh, how often do you look at the code for for the movements? Because they would have. I mean, it would. It, it takes a lot longer to rework the the assembly or backwards and try and figure it out, and you have to um, disassemble it. And yeah, I haven't actually. As far as code, I actually haven't disassembled code. I found tables, yeah. movement tables, like I guess, like you were saying, and, 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 and movement tables. Never oh, okay. Hmm? Yeah. I'm sorry. 
So move, movement tables, yeah, yeah. That's that's more what I'm getting at than, than the actual, you know, code for making, moving things and, and you know, the actual gameplay and stuff. Because that's a, that'd be a little bit more easy than yeah. um, the movement tables. Movement tables would be very hard. <laughs> um, somebody was saying that, uh, oh, these are some, some damn hard enemies in this game, and I concur. This is a very, very challenging game, especially those round guys where you have to shoot them in between yep. their the shields that they have yeah yeah i uh, uh i it wasn't much i could i was trying to get make it somewhat easier but i calculated yeah. you know where the, where the gap was and where the shot was in relation to the horizontal position so uh, the go in and you know but it's just that's how hard it is <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it's a damn hard game and but really fun because it's not the same every level. Every level gives a slight twist on a space shooter genre, especially those guys at the bottom of the screen yeah. poking the bottom of your ship, which is the, the most bizarre thing I think I've ever seen in a space shooter game. <laughs> I know. It's like you're in space, but there's people with legs walking around while stars are going by. It's like... Okay, it was the 80s. <laughs> Anything goes in arcade games at that time for yes, sure. That's true. <laughs> and uh, Jeremiah says, I love the star sparkles. Yeah, it's a really great star field going Thanks. on there. That's actually, um, I reuse that in, in like in Astro Blaster and in, in this and in, in Galaxian. Um, it's, yeah. it, each zone is a different color. For this stuff. So I'm not doing anything except moving them down. And, and as they move from zone oh. to zone, they change color. They twinkle, you know. So. Wow, that's great. That's a great way of doing it. It's like col color cycling, uh, in a way. Yeah. Um, but kind of the opposite of color cycling. The things are moving through the colors rather than rotating the colors. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way. Great way of uh, saving uh, saving uh, processor time. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Um, so, this question may or may not pertain to this particular game, but have you ever been able to talk with any of the original programmers of any of the, say, arcade games that you've worked on, or you've reached out afterwards, or they've reached out to you, or, or you've reached out to them after uh, they've discovered that somebody has remade their game on the 7800, you know, an old console? Um, you know, sometimes 40 years after they originally coded the game. Have you ever had to, any encounters, say, even at um, at an expo or something? No, uh, no. Well, not at an expo. Um, I've reached out to um, Owen Rubin when I did Space Tool. Um, he helped me out a little bit. Um, I, at the time, I, I would almost like to redo that because at the time I didn't know how to do the tethering. With the two ships, oh, I could. Yes. That's why it's not in there. But um, I could probably pull that off now. He was going to get me the code for that, um, and I, I don't know what happened. I, I think we just uh, didn't get back to him. He didn't get back to me. One of the two. Um, at, at Alan McNeil, um, when I did Berserk Frenzy, I spoke to him a lot actually. Um, yeah. When I did, when I was doing uh, Frenzy and Berserk. Um, and most recently, um, Eugene Jarvis, because I'm working on Defender. Um, right. And it, funny story, I happened to tell him while I was, I was actually talking to him on the phone. I had a Zoom meeting with him. And um, yeah. I told him that, because he was telling me about how he did start, uh, sorry, Robotron, uh, with two Atari yeah. joysticks you know, uh, uh, screwed to a plank of wood. And I said, you know, it's funny you should mention that. <laughs> I said, um, somebody from Atari age that I know very well did Robotron on the 2600. He goes, no. Yeah. I said, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, you did a really good, you did a really good job. And I showed him the link, the the the, the thing. And he says, I can't believe he did an amazing job. He said, talking about John. He said, yeah, just, yeah. He did an amazing job putting on the 2600. I never would have thought of that. I'm like, that's, that's cool. He'll like to hear that. <laughs> But anyway, um, so he he was obviously aware of the limitations of the twenty six hundred yeah. and 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 saw the workaround that John did to to get the grunts on the screen by using Playfield. Yeah, it is astounding, and I can see why that would just blow his mind. It's like, oh my God, what? <laughs> and so, did you did you told him that it was on the twenty six hundred before you showed him it? Yes. 
And it, his brain was probably going, uh, uh, what? How was it scaled down completely to nothing at this point? Yeah, that's that's a great story. But yeah, um, so we were. He was kind of explaining to me a little bit how he did Defender. Um, and speaking of which, it's funny we're coming back to this, but um, and I hope he doesn't mind me telling him that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but um, John is helping me with the next with the two games that I'm doing. He's helping me with Defender and with Adventure Three. Um, oh wow! Yeah. Nice. So, so he's gone to the dark side yes. of the 7800 now. Yeah. Oh boy! Uh oh! And Are we going to see some 7800 games from uh, from Champ John Champo Champ in the future? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, He'll be enticed. But um, oh, that's 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 great. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as far as those are the three people, and well, I don't know if you count this, but I, I was I was contacted by the programmer who did uh, Pac-Man um, Super ABC. Uh, uh, oh, I can't think of the name. Ultra Pac-Man. Um, okay. I was kind. Of, he saw that I did it, and this is on the first Pac-Man collection um, because he he's the one who made the mazes for the, the Ultra Pac-Man collection. And oh, okay. he, all he wanted from me was was a copy of the game. <laughs> so I sent it to him. As a, oh wow! Oh, thanks. <laughs> so it's, so it's, um, that was pretty cool. Um, that is very very cool. Well, that's that's really good that these um, developers are are able to see their games in a new light on a new system and and see how well they translate. And obviously, they translate unbelievably. Uh, your picture is frozen, uh -oh. um, but we can still hear you. Oh, so maybe turn on, off and on your camera, and we'll see if it comes back. All right. Yeah, let me, let me do that. Uh. Oh, no, he disconnected instead. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> oh there we go. <laughs> Teddy doesn't want to stop the game. There we go. Did I die? Excellent, you're back. Awesome. Um, uh -oh. oh, and there goes our hypnosis. <laughs> okay, so let's switch back to our. Everything goes at once. That's well, that's kind of good that everything goes at once, because <laughs> then uh, it's one continuous um, issue rather than multiple issues. So let's get out the other headsets, which should be fairly charged up. We'll get, keep on getting diminishing returns from these heads yeah, I think <laughs> over so. time yeah. as they don't get uh, fully charged. So let's see. Do these connect? And let's turn them on. There we go. Should I try this one? Yeah. Try pressing. What happened? I think this is the controller. It's always the left. Is Let me turn them off and back on again. It's not flashing. And this one's off. Now let me turn it back on. And that should initiate the connection. Uh, tech issues. <laughs> nope. There you go, entertain the crowd. <laughs> power on, but not connected. Did you hear anything and in there? It this? didn't say device was connected. So. Oh, you heard the power no, on? No, I now? heard nothing. Nothing. Okay. Oh, no. I'm going to try and turn it on. There we go. They both have to be on. Yeah. Pairing. And... <clears throat> do we hear a hiss? Not yet. I hear nothing. Oh, the last thing was pairing. Okay. Oh. Maybe it's the transmitter. Let's check this out. Oh, Bluetooth. Okay. I just saw Carl, Carl G's <laughs> post nice into one. machine music. <laughs> yeah, at least they can be entertained by uh, well. the games. Oh, off. Yep. Yep. Come on. Come on. Says, mine said power off. Oh! You didn't go on again. Can you press yours in? That's, that's the issue. There we go. Hmm. You said connected right channel. There we go. 
Pairing successful. No! No! Disconnected. No, it worked for a second. I didn't hear anything. Oh. You, you, you try to connect with them. <laughs> Getting murdered by space uh, craft here. Oh, there's a. Uh, I don't know if you answered that question. What kind of model? What model of acoustic, Bob? Cafe Man asks. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I have one Ibanez. Well, this isn't an Ibanez. This is. This is a burstwood. It's uh, this is my Britain, but this is my Jackson. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but I have an idea in the other room as well. Yeah, wired is better than wireless, but also annoying at the same time. Also harder Thanks. to share. <laughs> harder to share too. <clears throat> Yay! That only took a long time. Uh, okay, here you go. So, oh, disconnected. What is happening? Maybe there's just not enough power. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my. Okay. Uh, what are we gonna do? We're going to turn on the stereo very quietly. So that it doesn't feed back okay. into the microphone because we are out of options. No, good, thank you. Luckily, we're well ahead of schedule. <laughs> Hopefully, people are enjoying Unawars so, or Unawar S. It is an amazing game. Hard, very challenging, but fun. It's a very, very fun game. Thank you. Especially these guys. To like slip it right in, get that shot in. Oh, man. It gets really dangerous when they get close to you too. Oh my god! There we go. And oh. so we should be able to hear you now. No, nope, not yet. Let me turn up the volume. Oh my god. Now we can't can't hear it. Um can you say something, Bob? Okay. Oh, it's not coming through the desktop audio. It's not? He is saying something, but I can't hear it. Desktop no, audio. No. Laptop. Oh, what the hell? Sorry for the technical issues. Yep, always fun. It's always something. <laughs> what? Now we should be able to hear it now. That's not coming through. <clears throat> But it's not coming through. Desktop audio, monitor and output. Test one, two. <laughs> oh. Luckily, it looks like Bob is talking about his game, which is good. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, while we uh, figure this out. So just bear with me. Would a wired headset help? Headset help you? Bob just coded another game during the delay. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? 
I mean, if I get another headset, it'll be a little bit before I come back. But a wired headset? Yeah, oh, a wired one. There's one underneath here. Do you want to use that one? It and has to have a long hear. enough uh, it extension. It has a very long extension. Can you guys hear him? Uh, yeah, I'm, we're going to go to that. It's a very big headset, but... You know, it's chunky. It's chunky. Sorry. Okay, you can hear him again. <clears throat> we cannot. But that's okay. No, it also has a mic, but... Um, uh, should... That won't matter to what I'm plugging into. It does not transmit the mic. Okay. So you'll be able to hear. <laughs> yeah. oh, you just tell me what to play. Ooh, that's long, but not that long. Here. It's not very long at no, all. No, no, there's two parts to it. Is that a USB headset? On this end, yes. Okay, we're not, unfortunately, not plugging into a USB device. No? No. But, oh my god. Will that fit? I don't know what stop. We can plug into a USB device, but this might be bad news. Because the computer might react very angrily. What is going on with this thing? <laughs> Sorry about this, Bob. No, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Wrong side. Yes, it was dust in the wind. <laughs> Oh, copyright. I didn't even think of that. Oh, wow. It's a one way. <laughs> ah. Space doesn't okay. have really no. try it. <laughs> yep. Gonna give it a try. This okay. will plug into the computer, which I will have to set the output on. It also has a standard headphone jack, but I don't have a cord. Oh. Or do I? Hmm? Do you have one? Oh, God, that's good. But, but no, it doesn't go into that end. It goes into the short end, so. No, it's not long enough. I don't We're think I'm going to try this. Keep playing, entertaining the crowd <laughs> as much as you can. Uh, it's a, sorry. Yeah, it would go into the end that's in that part. I don't think it's going to be long enough. No, it's not. <clears throat> it's here. We need it. Let's see. How many viewers have we lost in the last time? <laughs> All minutes? of them. <laughs> uh, a story? <laughs> I, um... So mute the headphone, because you don't want it to... Okay, good. That should be in the middle. How did I get into the 700 okay, yeah. machine? Yeah. Um, um, and then there's a red button on the... Still at 45. Um, how did I get into the 7800 home machine? Um, I that started you, you with the, the 2600, over? actually, and it was too difficult. <laughs> um, so I moved... So we've got some, some 70s-style some... headsets going on now. I did some 2600 the hacks, then some there, 5200 it's... hacks, and I moved on to the 7800. Because um, at the time, there was uh, people nope, doing. but uh, I have to set it to output through this if it recognizes, if the computer recognizes this as a legitimate output. Yay! It does. <laughs> now. Still can't hear him. Do you have that controls? There's a there's a volume on the headset, and then that you want in the middle. You want that in the middle. Yep. Then there's volume here. How do I do it? Rocker. Yeah. Oh there. Oh, I hear hiss, but. Yeah. 
Hello, Bob. <laughs> when you make the no. video, you're going to cut this part out, right? <laughs> no. Nope. No, Bob. There were two settings there for the Arctis Pro. Yeah, okay, let's try, try that other. one. Now, the big question is, should I cut all this the out for when one. I post it? <laughs> Your phone, yeah, try that. Nope. Nothing. Even though it did recognize it, which is very, very good. Can we test is there a volume? <laughs> no, it would have... Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of options. A lot of options, and I can't hear anything. Can't hear any of them. And this is. Okay. Yeah, there's no hiss. So go back to the hiss, because that's at least something. Fix it in post, yeah. Looks like hearing test headphones. Yeah. It's programming 7800 similar um, to the 8-bit line. I don't know. Um, okay, I don't, I've never programmed for the 8-bit. Um, I did some hacks for the 15 I'm going to have to uh, I got. get ones that plug into the stereo. Do you have an extension? Not handy. James, like, yeah. could you use I, this? I heard that they both have... At least testing with that. DLLs, oh, but no, they do like different so things, so they don't, they're not even the same thing. You don't have an adapter? Between the 8-bit and the uh, 7800. Yeah. The 7800 is very different. This plugs into half of it? Uh, yeah, so unplug it from Thank that you. controller. I'm, I'm, I'm watching the uh, post, the chat. <laughs> <laughs> If this works, then I can just get an extension cable. Oh my god. <gasps> no, it's fine. It's From what I understand, the 5200 is very similar, almost identical to the 8 bit. But there's some memory. There's some memory locations that are different, or something like that, if I remember right. Switch back the output. Yeah. They both have this playlist, but don't look that for you. I know that's what I that's what I meant when I said they they do different things. At least he can talk to them. From what I from what I understand, again, I. Nothing. <laughs> Is it the volume? <clears throat> but why does it say desktop? Like there's nothing registering on the desktop. That's the issue, I think. Nothing's coming out. Play some music instead of test. I can hear that. Okay. I'm going to switch back to the extension. Leaps and loops. <laughs> yeah. Gremlins won James Zero. Yep. That's they good. definitely did win. <laughs> So got one point on me. I think I'm getting closer.
play music again. Okay, these headphones are good. It's the program. Wow. We're almost there, people. We're almost there. Oh, it does reach. It does reach. I hear audio. The only issue is the program is so. not sending the audio to these headphones. I cannot hear Bob. Even though the, the program is registering that it's uh, working. Desktop audio. It's been the most yeah. memorable programming puzzle you have solved in the Serbian Hermit. <laughs> the whiteboard. Um, actually, do in my office. Still can't um, hear. Oh, God. Um, probably to answer the, that um, question, Bluetooth? most memorable programming puzzle. Uh, the audio is working through this. It's the program. I can hear music when I play it. So the Bluetooth isn't interfering. It's not trying to send it to you. I'm just going to be quiet and respectful. Just so they can get this thing through this. Um, we may have to stop the stream. Really? Um, really quick, so I answer those questions. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Just desktop audio has no volume. Um, uh, programming puzzle that you have solved, overcome, probably... Okay, you can. Probably... Um, <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks, guys. Um, probably the Berserk, all the uh, detection, collision detection I do with Berserk. That was a pain. Um, and I figured out that he had to do it, he had to do it in pieces, each frame. I'm we are going to stop the stream. Okay. <laughs> um, because this is ridiculous and nobody needs to see this. But we'll be back very, very quickly. It'll be just a reboot, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're gonna reboot the computer uh, because something is not working properly. Like everything looks normal, but it's not working. So the computer, probably when um, the transmitter died or something, uh, I don't know. So uh, Bob, if you can hold, uh, we'll give you a call back once we've rebooted everything. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, we'll be right back in moments so yeah. stay tuned <laughs> and we're back probably the timing is off let me fix that there we go <laughs> check 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 um so i will type in the chat that we are back as people still have their chat open it should reconnect And then I'll tell everybody what the problem was. <laughs> the problem was nothing. What's that wire coming for your head? I'm jacked into the uh, matrix now. <laughs> so let's get Bob on the screen and hopefully I can hear his voice again. Oh, I can hear a hiss. It sounds like good hiss. Hello, Bob. Hello. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> And it's not coming through the speakers. Nope, just nope. my headphones. Nope, okay, just your headphones. good. We're all oh, good. thank goodness. Yeah. And now the problem was, I just needed to reboot the program. Uh, that's it. I did nothing else. Mm -hmm. All I did is turn it off and turn it back on, and it magically works again. So that's okay. <laughs> it happens. Computers happen. So you can go full screen on that. Yeah. But actually, we're right on time still, actually. It's 5.05. <laughs> And it's time for Bob's next game. So let's pop out um, Uniwars. And your next game is Galaxian for the 7800. So 
luckily, since now that I've uh, had to stop the recording and start the recording, I'm just going to cut out all that nonsense because I have to splice them together anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to sit there for 10 minutes while, uh, unless you said some good stuff because I couldn't hear you. Did you say some good stuff? Um, a couple of people were asking me questions in chat, so I was trying to answer them um, in between everything. Oh, good. So maybe we can keep that in then. I'll have to review it. Um, okay. Let's take a look at Galaxian. Oh, the game's still on the screen. Let's go to the webcam. There it is. Another beautiful cover. And uh, this one is also by Nathan Strum. You put him to work. <laughs> uh, yeah. Looks gorgeous. I'm so lucky that he, that he agreed to do them. I, I'm very, very <laughs> pleased, very happy. Yeah, the, the, the quality uh, is astounding as, as per usual. Yeah. Sorry. Now, it's got like a, an antenna on it <laughs> with little lines coming out of it. And that's what, what is going on there? Do you know? Is it just artistic license? I have no idea. <laughs> I just, it's artistic <laughs> license. Um, I, mean, I wish he was on chat so he, could, so he could say that, you know, what he did, what he was, what he was thinking. Um, yeah. it, it's like a steampunk thing. Definitely. Yeah. It's like all made of metal, but, and like all old school, but it's also a, um, you know, a spacecraft at the same time. Looks yeah. awesome. There's the back of the box with some um, screenshots on it. That's, I always forget to show the sides because they're important too. There we go, Galaxian, even on the bottom. Beautiful. Let's open it up, take a look and see what's inside. go beautiful artwork on the manual and a single fold out page on this one as well there we go let's pop this in and play some galaxian <laughs> so the cool thing about this yeah is i found the source code Commented, oh. commented source code to Galaxian Online. So I just followed that after I started oh. it. Wow. Yeah, after I um, started playing with it, because once I finished Uniwars, I, I, I knew it runs on Galaxian hardware, so it was using the same kind of oh, okay. same kind of sprites and stuff. So I, I started, I ripped the other stages out, changed the graphics, and I already had a partial... Galaxian, so to speak. So I just, right. I just kept going from there. I said, I, and, and it started <laughs> out as I just wanted to put the source code aside, set it up when I was ready to do okay. it, but I couldn't. Stop. I, I just I said, let me change this. Well, let me do this too. I got to do this. You know, it's so one of those things. And it just so even though you got the source code, um, you didn't really use it then, or did you? I did. I did after. Oh, you did. Had, okay. When I had that part going, all the little, little things like um, their flight patterns are different. Oh. Those. Um. And what happens with the, the um, God, the um, the ones on top, the boss ones. That I can't think of the. Right. Uh, name escapes me. Maybe it's in the manual. <laughs> Let's uh, take a look. Uh, flagships, mm -hmm. escorts, emissary flagships drones. and the escorts, flagships. yeah, stuff like that. I, I, yeah. And like, I had to convert. I had to basically learn Z80 really fast because um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know Z80, but I, I in order to right. convert it, I had to say, all right, this translates to what this on <laughs> this translates from Z80 yeah. to this on the 6802, uh, right? right. Um, so I I did that, and there were a lot of. Um, Branch commands, not, not branch, but um, like branch carry clear, branch carry set, that act differently. So I, I had to figure that out really fast because there was they use a lot of timers and stuff like that, and they oh, okay. use a lot of branch on carry set and stuff like that. 
but it means almost okay. the opposite in Z80 than it does in in, uh, <laughs> in, in 65 or 2. So a lot of translation then, and it, well, it's a good side effect as you know a bit about Z, Z80. Sorry, Z80 uh, for us <laughs> yeah. programming now. Yeah, uh, a um, little. Bit. Uh, um, and it's, it, it's funny because. Um, I think it was, um, forgive me if I'm, I'm getting this wrong, but I think it was, was it app code? Um, somebody from the uh, ColecoVision side, I believe it was app code, asked me a while back, they're developing a new uh, plat uh, platform. They asked if I wanted to be involved. I said, I don't really know Z80 yet. I said, I can't. Um, and now right. it was like, it was not long after that where this happened. So it was, it was weird. It's good. Um, oh, money funds. Sir. To answer your question, yes, I do prefer 320 over 160. Even even though this you're very limited in colors, I still like right. it because it's more arcade like. Um, right. Like what what it, were the resolutions of of the arcade mostly? Obviously higher than one 160. Oh yeah, there, um, it's it's most like most like 320. It's it's the the the, the the pixel squares are more closer to one to one ratio than 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 one sixty mm. which is like two to one on this thing. So one point seven five to one is some some odd um, ratio. But and, um, and obviously the colors are great on your game, so you're able to work around any of the limitations that come with uh, the three twenty. Thank you. I the only thing that bugs me about Galaxian is that the, again the flagship has blue in it in the arcade, but it, it's it's got uh, little, two little pixels of blue which you can you can't even see. <laughs> Very tiny. Yeah. <laughs> um. So it, the port of Galaxian came shortly on the heels of Uniwars, um, as you're able to adapt, adapt most of the code that you're using for it. Was um, was this a happy? accident uh, or something they realized kind of more towards the end of doing Uniwars that oh, you know, a lot of the code is here for a space shooter game like Galaxian. Yeah, that was mostly, because the, the, the way the ships are, are laid out in uh, Uniwars is uh, kind of similar to Galaxian so that's what made me think of it. <clears throat> so, yeah, it was... Uh, it was kind of both happy accident and, and more thinking about. <laughs> so as I finished it, I said I could probably get ready to do glass in there because I was asked about this, and I think it was mm -hmm. Kurt again. God rest his soul. Yeah. Kurt who asked yeah. about asked about me doing it. He, and it's funny because not funny, but it's. But he the two games that he asked me to do, Baby Pac-Man and Galaxian, are finally done now. Okay. He's just can't see them. That's, that is unfortunate, but that's great you were able to finish those games, and yeah. he would have. Uh, uh, enjoyed them. Um, uh, what you do a lot of different genres um, and do them all very well. What are are you? Uh, do you like all of these genres equally? Are there some that you enjoy more over the other? Uh, obviously, you like a Pac-Man quite a bit, hence your <laughs> hence your Atari Age Forum name. But um, you yeah, haven't seen you do a platformer, but space shooters and. Um, any, any, uh, yeah. Anything from the golden age, really, um, like anything like Space Invaders, Asteroids, Galaxy, and Galaga, uh, Pac-Man, of course. Yep. But, um, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's my niche area, so to speak. And that's that's yeah. where I got most of my playing done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's probably Space Shooters after the main, after Pac-Man itself, like probably things like, yeah. like Galaxy and Space Invaders and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm really happy that you do like space shooters. <laughs> oh, that's YouTube. Uh, that, that's that, right. YouTube. Yeah, I love them. It, whether I'm good or bad at one or like a particular one or better at another one, I still love playing them. Even when I'm bad at a game, I, I still love playing them because it's it's the experience. It's not about like reaching a certain level necessarily. It's it's just trying to get better and better at the game. That's me with Defender. <laughs> That's a hard one for me. Um, I, I really struggle with 2600 Defender because of the way the, the enemies almost uh, follow you as you move. They don't seem independent of your movements. They they seem to track you a bit as they move, and that makes it really, really hard. But mm. like uh, playing other Defender versions, 
it's like, oh, this is a little bit easier. It's not as not as difficult as the original 2600 version. Yeah, it's really strange. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> the 5200 version of Defender, I've always found easy for some reason. Um, mm. It seemed easier than than even even the 2600 version, but definitely because the 5200 version I was playing for hours on end. That I that on the arcade, it was I was out in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> something well, that's their whole goal is to get your core yes I... <laughs> <laughs> so they're happy with that <laughs> um, so when I play a game like Galaxian uh, on the stream um, it almost feels like I'm rediscovering something that I should have played more and I'm surprised how challenging and how much fun this game is because I always thought of Galaxian as like oh it's like a simple version of Galaga and it doesn't have the depth of, of Galaga because you don't get the extra ships and stuff like that. But, you know, when I play these sh these games on the show and I actually dedicate enough time to get into them, I really, really enjoy them. And I rediscover something that I should have been playing all along. Um, does porting a game uh, give you insight and appreciation to how much work and thought went into the original game once you start getting into the mechanics of it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, without a doubt. Um, especially when I get to read, like in this case with Galaxian or, or Ms. Beckman, um, I would get to read the, the, the comments in the source code and then what, what they did, and, and it's like, wow, how do you think of this stuff? Like, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, and, and, and especially the innovation given the limitations they had, and, and, um, and the, the innovation of ideas that never existed before you know like, yeah. like you know <coughs> one space one space shooter's innovation over another over another or or pac-man opening up you know maze games to the world and uh, yeah oh, excuse me sorry it um yeah I, I really love you know being able to play all these games on on the show and go okay galaxian actually is a really good game and, and a lot of fun and more way more challenging than I thought. Thank you. I, I, um, I the, the biggest problem I had doing this, they use like eight timers to for to know when the enemies come out and attack you. And all, and I, oh. I still haven't wrapped my head completely around why they use so many, but um, that was right. one of the areas I was talking about before about um, when the high bit set or when when the, when the you know, carries is said or not, or stuff like that. And it uses those timers, use that a lot. And when I saw that nothing was happening, <laughs> they were just sitting up there like that. <laughs> um, I said, okay, I got right. something wrong. <laughs> so I, I was actually going into main and, and putting displays of uh, what their variables okay. were, what they're, you know, what they, what they were using, what those variables were, so I could see this. So oh, this is when it changes. Okay. <laughs> so, right. It's like, oh, it's not not being used, not being used. Now it's being used. Oh, I see that guy's flying. Okay. Because, you know, they all can't come down at once. Yeah. And sometimes there's multiple, like three or four groups coming at the same time. And others are waiting for each of those. So I can, I can see why it would get up to, you know, six or seven or eight different timers happening at the same time. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, kind of wrapping it up here is there anything else you'd like to add to uh the release of galaxian or uh any of the other uh games that are being released all three of them which is quite quite a big thing <laughs> having three games being released at once or if you want to talk about any other upcoming games i know you're very open about uh the games that you're working on um but uh yeah what maybe what's your what are you closest next with which which game are you closest uh, to being finished or uh, be having a release candidate? Uh, I'm not really close not really close to either one, but I, I like I said I'm working on a, a, a defender. And you've seen, you've yeah. seen the, the work in progresses that I've had on uh, Adventure Three, which I'm still yeah. I, I've actually changed some of the rules around on that because I yeah. I see. Saw your post, your post about oh, what do you think about this style and this style of gameplay? Yeah, and even even since then, I've, I've actually changed some. I've, I've been talking with John Champo uh, again on, uh, about that, and he's also a big fan of Dark Tower, as I am. So mm. there's going to be there's probably going to be a little more of that in there too. So figure combination of adventure, Dark Tower, and Television Dungeons and Dragons, Cloudy Mountain. Oh, nice. That's yeah, going to be some elements from all of that. 
So uh, this should be. Uh, this should, I hope I'm not biting off more than I can chew. <laughs> <laughs> but well if it takes lo longer it takes longer but yeah it's quite a scope especially like with adventure 3 it sounds like a, a much bigger game than adventure yeah <laughs> yeah it probably will be and then my my plan from there is to hopefully attempt sinistar wow you're gonna make a lot of people happy i, I always see requests every once in a while sinistar 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 and nobody's nobody's uh really taken on that challenge yet so yeah, I, I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Um, I, I saw one. Settings. I saw one that lately that I that I forgot about, and I played a long time ago. A magical spot. Um, okay. It's another shooter, um, but it seems it doesn't seem that difficult. So I, I may like do that in the interim. I don't know. Um, oh, okay. I hunger. No, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Me too. <laughs> That's for sure. So, um, but I have a I have a list. <laughs> Yeah, Sinistar is, I think, really well suited for the 7800. It would be quite a challenge on the 2600 to do that. Not impossible, but you'd have to probably make some concessions with that. But I think uh, 7800 would be a, a really good platform for that. Cool. Thanks. Excellent. So thank you so much uh, for a lot of your time. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for wanting me here. Oh, oh yeah, always. You're always welcome on the show. It's great to talk to, with you and also play your games. They're always... A lot of fun to play. There's such great ports Thank and you. great conversions, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people out there feel exactly the same way and uh, get excited whenever you talk about making a new game. <laughs> Thank you. I really <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. No, Bob, no problem, Bob. And we will talk with you soon and see you on the forums. Yes, you will. Okay. See you. Take care. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody. Bye. Excellent. Well, we're glad. We're back online mm -hmm. and working again. I was uh, a bit uh, worried there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Everything yeah. I'm doing is right, yet nothing is working. Nothing is working. Well, that's just how these things go sometimes, right? Like. Uh, uh, yeah. And the headset thing. Pay. Oh, Thank you for subscribing, Ground Trooper. I noticed. And actually, I want to catch up on that as yeah, well. Yeah, Neo Media subscribed, but I think he's already left. He left a while ago, but there were a few yes. people who did. Um, Thank you, Neo Media, for uh, resubscribing. Hopefully, hopefully uh, they'll see it uh, later on. Yeah. So, yeah. And the uh, catnip. Yes, sorry. Smith. <laughs> oh, thank you, Charles <laughs> Wheeler. <Hey. laughs> it's a perfect time to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't want to interrupt uh, the talking. And Catnip from M.K. Smith, Treat Time from Thunkist, uh, Following from Agua... Dracon. Agua tra Dracon. Yeah. Thank you. Nathan Strum resubscribing. Thank you. DMX87 following. Muddy Funster resubscribing. And I think we've caught up there. I think so, Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost oh. there, everyone. Almost there. Yeah. Two more interviews. Uh, the next one coming up, we get to switch, uh, which switch game systems. Oh, okay. We're going to be playing on the 5200 Excellent. now. Excellent. Okay, okay. Uh, we're going to be playing Robin Banks. Rob N. Banks. Banks. Not Robin Banks. Robin. Uh, or Robin. Yeah, yep. Robin Banks. Uh, from Ryan Whitmer. Nice. Uh, who we talked to at uh, Portland Retro Gaming yes. Expo. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so let's switch this out right now because there's a tiny bit of switching that I need to do. Okay, to get the 5200 um, up and running? Yeah, because it... Uh, my 5200 is actually getting upgraded right now. Okay. Uh, thanks to Ivory Tower Collections. Nice. Thank you. Mm. And so it'll be looking really, really nice. But right now I'm getting my four port upgraded mm. um, with the power uh, converter. So I don't have to use that crazy zappy box. And also upgraded for video as well. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get my four port done so we can play four player Atari 5200 games. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we're going to be using uh, this awesome beast of a controller. Um, really, really nice. I always like playing on um, nice. uh, arcade joysticks. Um, obviously this doesn't work for um, analog games, but very few analog games are made for the 5200. Mm. Um, but I do have a, I think I have an analog controller as well for it's the 5200. Nice it looks all... Um, it is very nice. Um, it is 3D, 3D printed, printed, but yeah. a very, very well done 3D printed. Oh I, no, it's very nice. Got I don't know on the front. who I bought that from. I, I, yeah, I know. It was I'm, a little while back, so it's kind of out of my 
out of my brain now. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's switch that over. Nice, very nice. Uh, okay, I gotta plug in this one instead of that one. And then I'll make sure, I'll do a test first to make sure everything's plugged in correctly. Uh, just before we get on to uh, Ryan, so we don't have to uh, waste his time. I'd rather waste my time. <laughs> and this is on composite because we're running it through a VCR, it's through RF, through a VCR. Mm -hmm. And this should show something on the screen. Maybe not. Did I accidentally turn off the VCR? Oh, it is off. Oh, probably because I powered it off at one point. There we go. Oh, life. Excellent. I see something on the screen <laughs> and I see something being recorded. Excellent. So we can pop out the Atari Max multi cart. Crunch. That was a crunchy noise. I don't know what that was about. Yep. Rough. Rough, rough. Okay, so let's uh, clean up just a little bit here. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of empty boxes and carts all over the place. Uh, yeah, that'll have to be cleaned up, and we're running out of room here. That's fine. Farsi seventy says I don't even have a fifty hundred, but I want that controller for display. Yeah, <laughs> it a, is a nice. It's a controller. nice. It's very very solid. Yeah. Oh, retro Game Boys. Thank you, ITC. Mm. Check your F, uh, Facebook messages. I've got some updates on that. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Sorry, I've been very busy, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. uh, preparing questions for 24 games out of control and setting all this up as well. But looking forward to reading uh, the updates for that. So how are we doing? 527. Okay, let me put this box away for Galaxian. So I have one last thing in the way. And hopefully uh, Ryan is standing by. Looks like. Good. Yeah, looks like it. Get Actually, I can so probably first. put this back in the box. I've only got two more to go. So let's get this out. <laughs> I thought the moving green screen image was vertigo. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, it's great that the 5200 is um, getting some love, and I'm really looking forward to having it. Can you um, oh, push that cats. back? It's creating a little bit of cats. Shadow. Well, that's what go. that was. There we go. Yeah, the green screen's better. really good today. It does look good. Love today. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Turned out quite nice. Yeah, when I get the uh, 5200 back from ITC, we're going to delve into the world of the 5200 finally. Yes. Uh, now that I'll have good output display, mm. and we'll go through some 5200 homebrews. Excellent. Mostly by Ryan, because he holds down the fort for the, <laughs> On 50 the 5200. He does, really. Okay. So I think we're caught up pretty much, especially if he's standing by. Um... Yeah. Okay. Should I contact Ryan? Yeah. All right. So you can give him a give him a call there. Oh, oh there we go. Like Excellent. Hello, Hello, Ryan. You got me. How you? Or not? We got. We have voice. Not muted. Oh, We're all good for fantastic. voice. Fantastic. Now we just just need some video if you dare. Oh, my video is not on. <laughs> No, not for us anyway. How about now? Oh. There we go. Yay. We got you. Oh, very clear. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see it now. You've got a, a good connection then. Fantastic. Well, I'm just down the road from you, more or less. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So, welcome, 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 and congratulations on your release of Robin Banks. We've got it here. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it was a, a pleasure to do another, you know, another game through Albert, you know. I think I'm finally yes. starting to get good at this process after five <laughs> Yeah, you've got uh, you streamlined it enough. Oh, now yeah, every, every time I think I have, it just gets harder and harder. So, yeah. <laughs> probably just more. You're, you're uh, shooting higher and higher and more complex games. <sighs> yeah, he keeps wanting to do better boxes and better manuals and oh. better cartridges, and now we got to do overlays and yeah. so oh so demanding. Yeah. Oh, that's one thing. Yeah, I can't uh, do overlays with this controller. Well, th this game doesn't uh, have overlays, so don't worry about it. No, just the um, the last game that you did. Yes, yeah. that one does. Very looking forward to playing that one on the stream. Finally. Oh, that's going to be interesting. It, and that does have a four-player mode too. If you're. Uh... Oh yes, that's why I got my four-player four, play, four uh, port upgraded for the the good video output because I know uh, your game and some other games have four-player modes 
and why not take advantage of it and get everybody in the studio and play some four-player hey, games? That, that's why I do them. Excellent. Just for me. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I figure. <laughs> yeah. Who else is going to actually have four people on a 5200? It's it's tough. It's tough even getting two people. I, I've I've heard from many uh, developers. It's like, oh, can somebody test the two-player mode? <laughs> and they're like, oh, my kids don't want to play these old systems. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, when I did... Um, magical fairy force with the trackball controller i had to find someone with two wow. trackballs to test that out but... that's super niche yeah one trackball okay two trackballs now you're asking a lot yeah they... but uh but you're the man of making niche games uh, so why not go full full into it yeah and well get two track if, balls if you're gonna going. do something for the 5200 i figure you might as well take advantage of <laughs> some of the interesting things the system offers so that's right Okay, so here's the box. Excellent. Uh, interest, interesting artwork. Uh, how is this? How is this drawn? Because this is, doesn't look digital. This looks. Uh, this looks hand drawn. You know, that's an excellent question. I actually don't know, but I do have an interesting story regarding the artwork. If you would allow me to tell that. Oh, of course. That's why we're Fantastic. here. Fantastic. So. I think it was about maybe just a week after I announced that I was working on this game, and I announced this very quickly. Uh, where I was contacted by a gentleman who goes by the screen name of Henry Lee. That's not his real mm -hmm. name. His his real name is probably in that packaging somewhere, and I'm not going to try to pronounce it. Um, <laughs> okay. But he had actually done the cover art for Beef Drop, which ah. was, um, if you're not familiar with Beef Drop, that was the um, the late Ken Sider's conversion of Burger Time to the 5200 and the 7800. And uh, this is, of course, a port of Lock and Chase, um, which actually runs on the same hardware as Burger Time does. So okay. I'd always thought of them as kind of related games. So when he just popped out of nowhere and offered to do the cover art for it, I thought, well, that would be great. I mean, if you, to do the cover art for both of those games. Oh, yeah. So I told him, oh, hey, that's yeah, fantastic. Let's do this. Um, you know, I, I've just started the project, so I'll contact you again once it's ready to go. And, uh, you know, once it was ready to release, I talked to him and uh, he went ahead and, and got that all done. Well, that's that's that is great. Yeah, um, yeah, it's very distinct style. That's for sure. And um, this this is I I love this game. Uh, I played this game a whole hell of a lot back in the day. Um, I don't, I don't know about your history with the game. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about okay. uh, Lock and Chase. And did you play that back in the day? And and what platform? Uh, well, I actually grew up with the originally the twenty six hundred version which is, hmm, I would say it, it, it's a decent game, but it's not a decent version of Lock and Chase, is probably the way I would put it. And uh, then later on, I got the Intellivision version, which is, for the time, was a fantastic port of the game. And um, it was a long time before I even saw the arcade game. And I, I think I still haven't actually seen the physical arcade game. I've just played it through emulation. I didn't even know it had an arcade yeah, game. I, I, that's pretty rare, I would think. I've never heard anybody playing it, never seen it in an arcade. Yeah, I said, I, I'm pretty sure I still haven't seen it, but I had played it through emulation quite a bit. And I had just gotten, um, I, I think it was about halfway done with IntelliDiscs when I was thinking about maybe doing another port. And I think in this game, I think with this game, it was actually the name that I came up with first. And I thought it just popped into my head and I thought, you know, if I were ever to do Lock and Chase, that's what I got to call it. <laughs> and then I, would, I wanted to use the name so badly that I decided, oh, I got to do this now. Uh, so I started working on it and I think it took me, I don't know, maybe a little over a year uh, to get it done. Mm. And uh, and there it is. So I guess that's my history. Like a lot of 2600 in television play and a little bit of the arcade game. Yeah. Yeah. I remember playing it on the Intellivision as well, uh, but mostly 2600. Yeah. Yeah. So let's boot it up and take a look. I'm excited to see this. Yeah. Ah, my one use of 320 mode right there. <laughs> there you go. Delve into 320. Um, uh, so. It's my cops. <laughs> so let's see. I always love doing yeah, these sort of title displays. Um, they're great at track screens, screens yeah. like in the arcade, right? Uh, this, uh, and it gets to show off a lot of stuff yeah. in the game that, you know, all the rewards. Uh, there's something that throws me off. You watch his score values here. They go down a few times, which um, <laughs> threw me off. This is actually how it works in the arcade game. The, the uh, bonus objects don't 
always go up in value. I thought that was a bug <laughs> or like bad documentation at first. And then I went ahead right. and did the research. It's like, no, it, it actually does that. Yeah, it's interesting once you start, uh, like, you know, the surface of a game, like when you're playing, playing a game and you, you don't get to the higher levels of the game because you're not an expert player, let's say. But then say like you're developing the game and then you get to learn all uh, about the yeah. game. You, absolutely every single thing yeah, and you have to tear it just tear it apart into bits trying to solve all the mysteries and figure everything out and there's still a few things about this that i was not able to figure out so i just kind of winged it uh, because i <laughs> was just like i i'm just, just playing the arcade games i don't understand why this is doing what it's doing i don't understand the reasoning here um so i just said you know what let's just let's just <laughs> come up with something it. and just yeah. go no one's going to notice the difference <laughs> so d did you look up uh to try and find documentation for the arcade game um i mean it, it must be pretty rare d does it exist online like the manual for the arcade game um, i wasn't able to find anything really great about it actually um and what what i also learned while i was doing this is that there were actually two different versions of the arcade game uh, oh. this and the other one was actually quite a bit different it had a different maze um Wow, that is. It had quite, I can't remember which one was which or what all the differences were, but um, I I settled on the version I was familiar with. Uh, okay. It, it might have been more interesting, you know, if I had more cartridge space, maybe to somehow do both versions. Yeah, and I see that sometimes uh, developers add in uh, multiple versions or options that you can switch back and forth. Yeah. Um, in fact, one there was one feature, unfortunately, I wanted to do with this game that I ended up having to cut, and that was I I did want to do a, a two-player cooperative mode. Oh, uh, which yes, it was in the plan from the beginning, but I knew it was a little sketchy, and I wasn't sure I was going to be able to actually make it work. And unfortunately, I did run into some technical glitches that forced me to cut that idea. And I I, okay. I do kind of regret not being able to do that, but it was necessary, mm. unfortunately. Um, uh, what? For the for the developers out there, what were the limitations? Was was it uh, colors or um, it was mostly objects on the screen? Uh, a little of both, actually. Um, so one thing I learned the hard way uh, when doing this game is that um, well, okay, if, if I don't want to get too deep into technical jargon on the fifty two hundred here, but um, yeah. short version is uh, there are a number of different graphics modes, and it's very common mm -hmm. for both twenty six hundred and fifty two hundred games to. Uh, make changes to the graphics chip mid-screen draw. I mean, on 2600, that's almost right. all you do. Uh, <laughs> every every line sometimes. Yeah. Uh, the 5200, yeah. it's a little, you know, you're a little more, not quite as often, but you still do it from time to time. But It's like zones yeah. that you can define. Uh, but yeah. different screen modes leave you different amounts of time to do those sorts of changes. And uh, okay. what I didn't know is that the mode I'm using here is one of the slowest modes out there, so... The the stuff I needed to do to make this plan work, I just didn't have the time for it. So, mm, okay. uh, so I decided, you know, I I just really can't make this work. So, but I did get the car in there, as you just saw. It's beautiful. Um, yeah. The the car was a big a big sticking point with me because the arcade game has this little car that the the car the robber drives up to the bank to every every life. And I thought, oh, I really want to do the car because so many ports <laughs> don't have the car. I got to get the car. Yeah. I was like, all right, yeah, we got the car. Yeah, because with homebrew you have the luxury of uh, time as opposed to, in like make uh, work for hire and you, oh you got to get it out by Christmas yeah. or, or whatever. I mean this is out for Christmas, but yeah. Um, um, but you can you can spend the time uh, adding those extra things in and working out how to fit it on the cartridge or the limited amount of space you have. Yeah, and. Um... In fact, one of the things I did add to the game, which you'll see here if you get past stage two, is that I added some uh, Pac-Man-style intermissions, uh, which yeah. um, the arcade game didn't have, or at least the version of the arcade game I worked on didn't have. I think that the other version might actually have had those. Uh, okay. But I added my own, and I, I'm going to... I want you to do something real quick, if you could, is to go to the, the back of the manual. Sure. There's a helpful hint section. Yeah, and I think it's the very last item I put in that helpful hint section. If you could read that out for your audience. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, the ca the last part of it. Some stages have intermissions that play after you complete them. Use this opportunity to catch your breath and enjoy the show. Perhaps there's a way to watch these intermissions without playing the game. Ah, mm -hmm. so there is a secret in the game for anyone who wants to find it. Ah, there we go. So you can see some of the uh, intermissions that you may not be able to get to or just be able to enjoy them 
without playing the game and just watch them on their own. That's very cool. So that's in there somewhere. I, it, what's funny is actually I put that in for um, for Bobby Clark, who did the music for the intermissions, uh, so Ooh, so that he could nice. go play them and see how long they were and figure out how to time the music and things like that. And I decided, you know, right. I, I'm just going to leave this in there and see if anyone I, can find it. I wonder, how, like, like that makes sense for debugging purposes and play testing. Uh, a lot of people put in like level skips and yeah. stuff, but then just leave them in uh, and just don't tell anybody about them or make it certain uh, joystick direction controls, B, A, up, down, left, yeah. right. And uh, it's, yeah, why take them out if you can just leave them in and leave them in for fun? That's great. Well, I, I have released the source code for this, so enterprising individuals <laughs> could dig through it and actually find out how to do that. And so, okay. if they want to go to that much effort, yeah. good on them. <laughs> if they want to dig through the source code and, and and find all the all the little bits, well, if it's well documented, it wouldn't be that. You hard, know, I, I, guess. I don't know. I, I I'm not sure how well documented my code is. I I will let other people make a call on that. <laughs> However, I was interested to see that I, I finally have my first hack. Um, so, oh. uh, someone took the code to this and did a Halloween conversion. Oh, wow. Where they, yeah. they changed the cops into witches, I think, and um, turned the player into like a kid in a ghost costume, and the bonuses were given a Halloween theme. <laughs> um, so... Oh, that's yeah, great. Someone, did they keep it on the 5200 or did they, they port it to the 8-bit? Um, it has been ported to the 8-bit as well. Uh, but this was yeah. this was just for the 5200. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, uh, are you, a gentleman who ports you, my games to the 8-bit, usually within a couple weeks of their 5200 release. Okay. Um, are you interested in, like, releasing the 8-bit version? Are there talks on that? Or is it just like, no, you you just stick to the 5200 and you concentrate um, on Albert that. brings it up a lot. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I, I have absolutely no experience uh, programming with the 8-bit. Um, okay. And the guy who does the conversions, he doesn't do cartridge images; he does disc images. So, uh, okay. it, I, so my understanding is that it would require probably a complete reconversion to get them working um, as cartridge images. Right. Another step. Yeah. To, to I mean, one yeah. day maybe if I find one in good condition and I'm willing to spend the money, I might pick up you know an Atari 800 or something and maybe learn how to do it myself. Uh, that's, well, they are fun machines. Lots of yeah, games it's, for them. Yeah, it's kind so. of iffy. Although I am actually in the very early stages of a 7800 version of this game. Oh, okay. Which wow. is going to be my first and, I don't know, maybe only 7800 game. I don't have a lot of interest in the console, but I just felt like, yep. let's try it. You know, Let's give it a shot and see what you know, what come Good out exercise. of it. exercise. Yeah. It'd be a lot of fun to play this on the 7800 yeah, for sure. It barely exists at this point. I mean, there's, there's a maze and a little guy, and you can move him around, but he doesn't there's no collision or anything yet you just moves around the screen but you know, i've already overcome a lot of the technical challenges you have to do so you know it's, it's just a matter of me finding the time to work on it now at this point yeah Atar uh al says i need to release all the games on the 8th <laughs> there there is so yeah there's a bit of a demand for them at least i think there is yeah it's it's a huge community now that I've delved into uh, playing eight bit games on on the stream. Uh, it's it's quite a vibrant uh, community, but they don't get a lot of cartridge releases. Yeah, um, I mean I know probably because of the nature of it being a computer, and yeah. you can just download and run them quite easily. You yeah. don't need a special multi card or anything. I mean, you know, the the guy who does the uh, the conversions of my games just posts discs from time to time with I don't know yeah. nine or ten games on them. Oh, um, I so, see. you know, he, he I, I think what he does is he just keeps converting games and then releasing these big discs every now and then or something like that. I don't know. I may be misunderstanding it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it is. It's a different world, really, um, especially since the, the 8-bits yeah, have just so much hard, more hardware available to them. Yeah, there's a lot out there for the 8-bit and um, yeah, big, uh, big scene in Europe. Oh, now. yeah. Yeah. Eastern Europe in particular. Yeah, um, which makes it hard on the show. Uh, one, pronouncing all the names oh, yeah. on the show, and two, trying to find the information because they're on websites that are, you know, in in Poland, and, yeah. and then I have to look at the page, run it through a translator, and yeah, you know, it's it, it's challenging. And that's uh, before you even get into PAL, right? Because that too, I'm still have to get a PAL because I can't run all the and games. And that, that's properly. one nice thing about the 5200 is that there is no PAL version, so I don't need to care about that at all. Oh really? Uh, they never came out with a PAL. There, on the there were plans for it, but they never yeah. actually did it. Although I, I swear I read one somewhere that there was a prototype that was located, but I'm not sure. Ooh, here comes the intermission. If you get out, 
Oh boy, it uh, dropped signal. Oh no. Or maybe the cat's. Oh boy, the cat was behind there. Oh no, oh, the cat it broke back. it right before the intermission. Oh, it just came back. It's Is... not coming through. Oh, the cat. Now it's back on our screen, but it's not coming through. Let me uh, unplug and replug something. How about that? Ah, uh, darn that? cats. Oh, the darn cats. What did he do? He's very naughty. I got two of my own. I know. I get it. <laughs> and they're hungry. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, and or demanding. No, don't worry about it. Sure? Yeah. It's, um, it's a capture issue at this point. Because it's coming through our screen. Well, you know, since you've got this particular frame frozen on the screen, I can talk about one of the things I could not figure out from the arcade game I was mentioning earlier. Those side tunnels there, there's the two side tunnels. One of them gets blocked every stage, but oh, I couldn't okay. figure out the pattern. Because sometimes it changes every stage, sometimes it seems to change every life. And I was never able to figure oh. out exactly what the, the logic was behind those, so I just flipped them every stage. I, <laughs> hey, why not? It's I like, mean, it's I don't a know. part of the game. You're making it your own. Yeah, it's, it's uh, mine. A lot of things have to be changed anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and a lot of games back in the 80s, when they were porting arcade games, they changed things all over the place. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was bar Not barely recognizable problem. sometimes. Uh, let's say, like, the 2600 version of this game, for example, which <laughs> doesn't look anything like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it tried. Uh, so, uh, there were a lot of dot-eating maze games uh, released in the 80s. Oh, yeah, yeah. After, after the runaway success of the Pac-Man franchise. Um, so what, particularly about this game, other than you know, you did play it back in the day, uh, drew you to port it to the 5200 over, say, any other game? Oh, well, a couple things. I think one was that I always thought this had the best theme of any of the, the dot games. You know, because, mm -hmm. I mean, even Pac-Man, like, what is what is going on in Pac-Man, right? It, yeah. <laughs> or Ladybug <laughs> or, or any of those this... things, right? Like, what what is happening yeah. here? And this game is very clear. You're a robber, you're robbing a bank. This is money, you're stealing it. Yeah, there was no question about what was happening here. There's doors. You're opening. Yeah, you're closing. The cops them, are running after away. You. Just get it, get it, and go. It's somewhat grounded in reality. Yes, <laughs> there was actually, yeah. uh, you know, just something here that you could, you know, kind of work with. Yeah, um, yeah. which I always kind of enjoyed. You know, just just that, and uh, I also like the fact that you had to get out of the maze after you got all the dots. Which, that's true it doesn't just stop yeah, like there's even more yeah. reality injected into it yeah, yeah. um i can't even, there's a few other things too i just like the way you you survive by closing the doors behind you there's no power pills or anything along those lines which i'm not super familiar with games like again like ladybug or uh mm. what's the other one i just mentioned uh mousetrap, oh, mousetrap i yeah. think those both have the same sort of power-up system that yeah, they have the door system as yeah. well. Uh, Mousetrap definitely and, does, because I remember Mousetrap, you turn into a dog sometimes, which is weird, yeah. but okay. That, that that was kind of their innovation. It's like, oh, you have the power pellets, but you can use them anytime you want. Oh, that's you don't right. Have yeah, to, yeah. You don't have to use them immediately. Um, you can store them up, which I, I think that's a really cool uh, one, too. And Tanya and I played a game in the arcade not too long ago, which is kind of similar to this. Cons yeah. What was it? It was like car, blah, blah, blah. It was, yeah. it was cops and robbers. And you were in a maze, you were wandering around, and it had the audio on a tape yeah. in the arcade cabinet. Oh. And it was playing like police radio. I remember you mentioning uh, that on a earlier stream. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here's the intermission. There yeah. we go. Oh, there. Th this is ripped off directly from Pac-Man, like uh, just shamelessly yes. ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's that's. It gave me another excuse to use the car, so that was that was uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So I um, talked a little bit about this to you at PRG, and you're one of the few Atari 5200 developers. I know there's some people who convert 8-bit games to 5200 yeah. out there. Um, you're kind of holding down the fort on this quirky system with its massive uh, f uh, f size of the case, uh, mostly for uh, storing uh, the uh, the controllers, <laughs> and its and its notorious controllers, yeah. uh, which we've since replaced with better ones. Um, what are the main draws of the Atari 5200 to you? What what drew you in 
because there there are those so many limitations the smaller user base it the odds are stacked against you um, i i think for me it was just that uh, when i was growing up i knew i don't know maybe three people that had 5200s but uh, for me especially coming from the 2600 and the intellivision at home i was just amazed by the games so mm. uh, like in my head this was the ultimate game system i mean th this was as good as it got and um, eventually I had a cousin who got a 7800, uh, but I was never yeah. super impressed with a 7800, uh, at least at the time. You know, I mean, he, he probably just had the wrong games, which was very possible back then. <laughs> Could be. Um, but the 5200 was always just the king of game systems to me in that period. So, you know, it... Well, think of it. It's got the pokey in it. Um, it can do... It, it's basically a scaled down 8-bit computer. So yeah. it has a lot of capabilities. Well, not, not just the... Um, you know, the, from the the technical side of it, but I think just the aesthetics of it. Like I, I, I still think that the 1500 is the best looking game console ever designed. Just it, like mm. as a physical object. You know, not even talking about what the system does. I just love the design of the thing. I mean, it's just sort of thing I, I've just yeah. set out to have people comment on. It's like, what is that? <laughs> Yeah, a good uh, conversation piece. It's got some nice lines. It's got that huge strip of silver across it. I mean, it. especially for the time uh, it came out. I mean, you compare it to the, like the wood grain okay. 2600s and what the Intellivision looked like. It looked like something out of the future. <laughs> it was just this amazing piece of hardware. That is true. And it's uh, it's jaunty slant that it has as well. And only one button uh, on the thing, right? It's like <laughs> just this one button. Power. Yeah, and it's unusual uh, hookup to the television, at least the four-port uh, version of it. Yeah, which is it, uh, which is the version I have because I have to do, you know, I have to develop four-port games because that's what I do. Uh, yeah, uh, Cafe Man 2D says 5200 was red hot exciting to myself and friends. And I, can, I can see that when it was, it was released, it would be quite quite a system, probably just impressive with its size alone. Yeah, and I, I definitely owe um, quite a lot of thanks. I think I've probably said this on an earlier stream or not, but to Cafe Man 2D, because um, I think that uh, Adventure 2 was the very first one of these uh, homebrew games that I bought, and it was mm. it was his games that um, it really inspired me to, to do anything on the system at all, uh, because I didn't even nice. realize people were doing these sorts of things. It was I just happened to find his stuff one day, and uh, you know, that inspired me to start doing my own stuff, which is, you know, arrived at this point now, I guess. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, so, uh, wrapping it up, uh, are there any upcoming games that you're working on or that you'd like to talk about or uh, anything you'd like to add to about the release of Robin Banks? Um, well, I, I, real quick, uh, you know, for Robin Banks itself, of course, I want to thank, uh, you know, Henry Leaf doing the box art and um, a fellow whose name comes up quite a bit as uh, Tix, who did this, a lot of the sprite work yes. for me. He's an excellent graphic artist. Uh, and again, he just popped up and gave me stuff. I didn't ask him for anything. And that, that's, that's the <laughs> weird thing now is that people are just popping up and handing me things. Um, and of course, uh, Bobby Clark for doing the sound and music, who mm, I've now worked with yeah. twice. Uh, he helped me with the television oh, as well. So yeah, he's very good at what he does, especially with the pokey. Synth, synth Papalooza. Um, and uh, I do want to mention a couple of things. I, my, my artist would kill me if I didn't mention that I actually just recently got one of my PC game projects onto Steam. And, nice. and it is a follow-up to one of my 5200 games, so it is actually somewhat relevant. And that is the, the PC version of my third game, Magical Fairy Force. Right. It has a Steam store yeah. page now. It hasn't been released yet, but it should be soon. So if, you, oh, if you're interested in that game, go ahead and check that out. Um, and I'm actually working so on, how... on another 5200 game, of course. Ah, uh, great. Which, and I'm, I'm doing a film adaptation. Because, oh. you know, who, who does those? Wow. Um, Pretty rare. So I am, uh, I am adapting um, <laughs> the somewhat classic, in quotes, uh, mm -hmm. holiday film Santa Claus Conquers the Martians uh, to the Atari 5200, <laughs> nice. um, which is a public nice. domain film. So I can yes, do that. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you can go all out. You can copy every single thing from the, from the movie and it's all good. It is still very, very early and there's really nothing to show at this point. Um, but that is what I'm working on now, and I'm hoping to put that on a, a big old 512 kilobyte cartridge. So that's going to be very exciting. Wow! 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 That's 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 very big. <laughs> oh, and Daryl asked a question in the chat. Oh. I asked about the randomization of the doors. Is it semi-random when you press the action button? So I'm guessing the doors you put uh, on the screen. How are those handled uh, in terms of where 
you select them. Um, it, it's the last junction that you passed. So if you look at the walls okay. in the the maze, there's those little yellow lines. Um, yeah. However, defining exactly when you have passed the junction was a bit of a tricky problem. And that right. was one of the late things I had to make some changes to. Uh, I think I've got it working the same way the arcade game handles it, but I'm not... You know, it, it's, it, it, it works well enough you know, especially compared to the Intellivision in the arcade game. So if it's not, if it's off, it's not off by much. Right. So, yeah, you can see any of the, I guess any of the junctions where the two yellow lines can intersect if you put a line between yeah, them. Yeah, but the, the trick is that you have to go all the way through the junction to ah, flag okay. that as where the door will appear. So, um, and you get bonus yeah. points if you can trap the cops in the corners. Which, mm. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, which one of the attract modes, there's just three attract mode scripts if you let them run through, and one of them makes sure to demonstrate that so you can see it. Mm. Nice. Excellent. So, um, thank you very much oh. for coming oh, on. Oh, thanks for having and, me. And, uh, and also, thank you for the interview at PRG as well. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm glad the sound turned out okay, because I remember, <laughs> I remember I was your first oh. interview, and we were, we were a little iffy on the sound equipment there, so... Yeah, and it was very noisy. Yeah, there, I, I so got to do your calibration of... test. For that. <laughs> That's right. A lot of obstacles against us. I had to kind of massage the sound in post a little bit to get it uh, okay. to get it decent, but it, it all worked out in the end. So I'm very happy. And with it was that. it was nice uh, down the, the YouTube posting of that. You highlighted some of the the silly programming tutorials I've been doing there, uh, which I well I I thought it made sense because you did talk about them. So why not just show them on the screen for a little bit? And and those are great that you're you're educating other people that maybe they'll be get interested in programming for the fifty two hundred. I hope so. <laughs> I, I need some, that'd be great need to have some competition some company. here. <laughs> that's right. Mm. Well, that's great. So thank you once again uh, for being on the show and congratulations on your release of Robin. Oh no, yes, uh, thanks for having me. And uh, boy, it's been a long day. You, you got to finish up here. Oh yeah, we only have one, one to more to go, and then I can then I can eat uh, eat some food. <laughs> <laughs> we can uh, placate the cats with some food. Oh, as well. I just gave them cats come oh, gave them food. I just gave them dry food. So. Yeah, cats come first. That's yeah. for sure because yeah. they won't leave you alone. No, if you don't. no, no. They were they were getting ornery. <laughs> oh boy, they needed to be fed. So. Okay, well, thank you very much, and uh, we'll mm -hmm. talk with you soon, Ryan. Right, thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. Excellent. A lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I know you like uh, like the Pac-Man style games. Oh, it's a lot of fun. I, I want to keep this playing. This is a nice twist on it. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Excellent. So we only have one more game. We're two minutes away from uh, the scheduled time anyway. Oh, excellent. That's pretty much on time. So. Yep. So let me clean up a little okay. bit. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about getting the 5200 back. This actually looks really clean. Do you see the stream output? It was like, this is fine. Going through RF and through uh, what was to the, the VCR. What was the issue? Did the the I think the cats bumped something. Oh, I see. And I see. just the encoder stopped, so I just re cats. restarted the the video game capture mm. card, and it was all fine. Bad cats. Annoying, but oh, you know yeah, the these cats. things happen, especially <laughs> given a long enough timeline, <laughs> like something six and a half hours. Yeah, that's true. So two, one minor, one major hiccup. Yeah. That'll just get cut out. Uh, maybe <laughs> I'll make it as a bonus. I'll cut it out, yeah. but put it as a bonus thing. Yeah. So people are like, uh, what is this? Why is there a sudden, like... Fast forward through this weirdness. 15 minute gap in the, uh, in the stream. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, so our last game, last but not least... Yes. ...is Popeye mm. for the 7800 from Daryl Genther. Mm. Very exciting, very fun. Uh, I love this game. So let me hook back up... Uh, the original connection to the 7800 and flip that back. Uh, yeah, when I get the 5200 back, I'm, I don't know where I'm going to put it in the whole area of... I think I'm going to have to put it on the floor when we play the 5200 games. Maybe, yeah. Because it's, it's a lot of a console. Yeah, I don't know where It's a big console. Oh, Let me get to find Popeye before we uh, mm -hmm. connect okay. with Daryl. It looks like he's... he's Got one there, minute left. So He's on there. Get it all set up. I am just so impressed with all of these boxes. The art on oh them my is God. beautiful. I love Robin Banks too because it had that real, you know, natural like, like yes. hand drawn look to That's, it. That's uh, he didn't know, know how it was made, but I think it 
it was hand drawn. Yes. Like it doesn't look like it's computer. It Even looks... if it had been done digitally, it has yeah. that look of like a hand drawn. Yeah, because they can uh, use image. brushes. Like you can yeah. emulate anything. But on the it, but it looked now. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it looks like so almost good. water colors. I'm not. I'm not sure. It had a real. It has a real. Um, oh, there's that that there's style. Lines. It does look like a. Like uh, felt. Like felt marker. It does look almost. like felt. Yeah, yeah, it has that that look to it. Anyway, we're just talking again. about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. It does look yeah. great. Yeah, and a really fun look to it. So, uh, I think. Oh no, one more thing before I have to switch this input back to S video because there is no RGB for the seven eight hundred just yet. Uh, yeah, I think we're good to go. Right. Let's talk to Daryl and see if we can get him on the line. Hey. Daryl! Hey! Welcome! <laughs> how are you doing? All right, how are you? Very good. Uh, still hanging in there. Yeah. Almost, uh, almost done. Yeah. Saved, uh, saved the best for last. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, it's been great uh, seeing everything. Yeah, it's it's really fun to uh, talk to all these developers. Oh, you both got a PRG. I Which know. one did you get, Daryl? You got the Miss uh, Pac-Man or Pac-Man? Oh, we both had the Pac-Man. Good. The Pac both got the Pac -Man. Yep. 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 Good taste. Yeah, they're they're really <laughs> nice T-shirts this year. Yeah. I I wish they showed them before. Well, you can so buy you can them get with the your package ticket. when yeah. you get the tickets, but they they don't release them till afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, this one we had to get this yeah, year. It's just I beautiful them. and obviously a big hit yeah. as well. <laughs> um, so let's uh, let's take a look at uh, the box for Popeye. Um, so let me switch over to the webcam view of this. So tell us uh, a little bit about the box. It's got a very cool, distinct style of artwork on it yeah um, yeah um you know popeye was was pretty pretty community a pretty big community project so there was a lot <laughs> of people that that jumped in um after it debuted on zero page homebrew and yeah. atari <laughs> boy 2600 um he, he had some artwork he just threw some out there and uh and it was it was great like he just had some some great and and al had told me you know that he that he had done some good work for him before so um i just kind of went with what he had and you know threw it together for the box and the manual um i wanted to, to give it a shot laying out a box and manual which was a lot of time with uh with Al because uh, fortunately Al can correct all can catch all the uh, all the spelling and <laughs> words that are not necessary and and all that. So oh yeah, it was it was a it was a process, but yeah, the the artwork um, just came to the forum. It was it was great. And did you give any input on the artwork, or you're just like, oh, that's that's amazing? Yeah, most of the artwork I, I think he had, and I just used what he had, except for the screenshots. You know, I kind of wanted to have right. the actual. Some of my favorite games back in the day were the ones that that had the the actual screenshots. Um, and, and back in the day, you know, I I, I remember originally the, the the Atari games had drawings that were just nothing like the game. Just yeah, kind of, very strange drawings. Yeah. It's like that's that's odd. Yeah, <laughs> and then later on they had they had the screenshots, and, and back then they had to I think actually take pictures of the the CRT in a special. Yes, you know, um, special, a little box. Yes, and they had to. I, I've seen I've seen pictures of people taking pictures of CRTs, and it's quite an undertaking. It looked like. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to try to capture that look in the screenshot. So there's there's you know filters and. You know, pixel filters and uh, scan line filters. A lot yes. of that. Yeah. Because I, I think yeah, these games are great. meant to look. Meant. I think the scan lines add to these games to the Atari games. Yeah, I'm. I'm on the fence. I. Uh, <laughs> I have seen. I've seen games played through uh you know the scan lines and and CRT emulation or even emulation of C of scan lines. Uh, through like the retro tank that I have, and uh, 
some games that work i think more modern games it works more for me yeah. with with a high much higher resolution but these old one old school games i just love the the crisp pixels of of uh running it through without the scan lines but everybody has their own opinion on it so i think i did a poll once yeah. and it was quite quite divided or at least more heavily on the scan lines i'm like oh i guess i'm the odd one out <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so let's get this uh, hooked up. There you go. Let's pop in Popeye and uh, take a look at it. Yep. Nope. Okay. I don't have the output correct. Oh, that's why. Let's try that again. Very nice intro. Wonderful intro. <laughs> uh, little little cartoon with the mm -hmm. with the theme of keeping with uh, the Popeye cartoon. It's uh, a light, nice, fun intro. Um, so you've got a lot of options here, um, which which is great for people of different uh, uh, skill levels. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I remember. Popeye being quite prominent in the uh, in the eighties with this game in the arcade, watching the cartoons on TV and seeing Robin Williams movie in the theater, and uh, the questionable uh, Popeye kid cigarettes, uh, even though he smoked a pipe. So I don't know what was going on with that. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm really surprised there weren't more Popeye games uh, created in the in the eighties. I did look at the list of them, and there. There's smattering over the years that came out, but I would have thought the 80s, they would have really hit hard. Um, but I also read that King Features, uh, the uh, the own, rights owners back then at least, insisted that the video games that licensed Popeye, uh, quote, included a fair representation of the central cartoon characters. And of course, the, the arcade did. It was like stunning. Uh -huh. um, but this, this may have been limited the ability to release games due to the graphical limitations at the time of uh, computers and home consoles. So that's maybe why we didn't see as many come out. So, but do you have a history of the Popeye character and, and wish there was more games that came out? Or or was this uh, port more about this particular game rather than Popeye in general? Yeah, I, I, I watched enough Popeye that I... And strangely enough, because there was there was um, there was a discussion in the forum while Popeye was being created about is it Bluto, is it Brutus? Right. I, I watched <laughs> enough Popeye to realize that this was Brutus. So Bluto mm. was just uh, uh, what's the you know a tough guy who was a bully. Bluto okay. was always, always seemed more like the bully. He he was kind of a menace to all of Ann Popeye. It seemed. Where Brutus <laughs> had a love interest in in olive oil and was more right. courting her and trying to get Popeye out of the way in a bully kind of sense. But he had that daintiness to him. He, he was, was like, like a, a big guy, guy that had this daintiness to him. <laughs> and, and I uh, so the arcade okay. kind of captured, they captured that, that, so I recognize that. that. With his walk, yeah, yeah. Like his, the gait of his walk, you can see that in it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so I... I you know, I knew enough of that, but really it was the it was the arcade game, and you know when I didn't have any quarters left, I would walk up to the arcade machines and just look at the graphics. You know, I would just stare at the pixel art, and 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 that would capture you know me the the movements and all that. And so it was more the arcade game itself, I think, that that pulled me in than the cartoon. Right, yeah, yeah, and and it was a beautiful arcade game, like like visually beautiful. Yeah, like um, like Popeye was one of the first games I think I saw in the arcade that, like, really looked like a cartoon. Like, yeah. To us back then, those graphics were like, oh, how am I? How are they doing this? This this doesn't even make sense. It's so so detailed. Yeah. Um, um, and you can tell in your port that you've strived to be as accurate to the arcade as much as possible, including, including, including Revision F, um, which was 
uh, an easier version. I can't remember. I, I I looked it up yesterday, but I can't remember what the difference was with the revision F. Yeah, yeah. The the revision F. Um, Popeye's a really hard game, so Nintendo wanted to try to draw in players that were a little, you know, n a little less experts at the arcade. You know, yeah. like kind of more casual gamer. That's what I'm trying to say. And so right. they came up with Revision F. If you lose a life, the spinach comes back. Like if you use the spinach and you die, uh. the spinach re regenerates. Um, right. The ladder in the center is full length, so Popeye can use it to go up and down. So it. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it makes that difference. Uh, Brutus isn't as aggressive, and mm. uh, yeah, he didn't reach down there. He's like, man, nah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, and, and so he, I'm trying to think of what else. It's been a while. Um, but why the brown red screen in the arcade yeah like why that's really weird choice it looks like it's washed out well and strength yeah the arcade was more pink okay and that overdrives the 7800 color it it looked it looked really uh, bad okay. to try to make a pink background right and, and some of the the pink background i think some of the the brick might have been more of a gray i don't remember exactly but they used a slightly different palette overall um, okay. so i wanted to capture that but mm -hmm. there is a code that you can enter in on the main screen if you reset and you go to the popeye mural and you do yeah. right down right up up down it just okay we'll have to try this Let's let's give that a go right now. Right down right. Mm-hmm. Up up down. Up up down. Oh, it made a sound. There we go. Now, so and then yeah. you go to level and it'll be novice instead of revision F. Yeah. Okay. Let's go down to that. It is novice. Oh you got to novice. Okay. Yeah. Give it a go. So this is revision F but with the standard graphics, I guess. Yeah. Just yeah. didn't change the oh, color. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about um, your efforts to bring home the arcade experience and the accuracy um, that you tried to strive for in in working on Popeye? Oh, you know, <laughs> I I just I wanted to capture the the feel, like mm. I I. I didn't look at the, the the number of frames that pass before something happens. I didn't analyze it in right. that way. But based on what I feel when I'm playing the arcade, I wanted to see how much I could bring that personality into Brutus. Mm, yes, yes. So really it was just key things uh, like the... The looking around, wondering what's going on, and and deciding right. when I was going to trigger that kind of reaction. Um, okay. Whether or not he's going to reach down and try to to knock Popeye down, or if he's going to jump down on top of Popeye. Mm, right. So those so are kind of so you you made it uh, fun. You you kept the fun in it. You kept the feeling and something that you would want to play. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to, to bring the, the things that captured my attention when I played the game growing up and, mm. and still made it fun to play. And when I played this on the 2600, I always thought the flicker of the Sea Hag was because of the 2600, but the, the Sea Hag flickers in the arcade, and I always wondered, why would they make that character flicker? It doesn't make any sense. Is she a ghost? Is what's happening? I, I think she's kind of witchy, maybe. Ma <laughs> so magical. Yeah. Like, so flip. she's kind of yeah. appearing there, and she's kind of. I think it's kind of a, a voodoo kind of thing. <laughs> uh, so she's, that makes sense. Yeah. So she's all over the place. I mean, she's on both sides of the screens in the arcade a lot. It's yes, actually hits that's from true. both directions, and then she's up at the top throwing the skulls down at the same time. So she's thing. teleporting, and, yeah. and she's doing a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, like you said, it was a big collaborative effort. There's a lot of names yeah. uh, associated with this game. Yeah. Um, Bobby Clark, Matt Smith, Pat Brady, Trevor, all contributed to uh, music, it says. Yeah, and and I, it's been a while, so I don't want to I don't want to leave anybody out or, or miss. I, I think I, I can't remember who all was coming up with. Here's a MIDI file right. that I I have from the arcade, and and right. then you know um, Matt Smith was really key in helping me get the engine into the game, the sound engine mm. that's that that's used in a lot of the the homebrew games right. um so so there was a lot of a, a lot of different aspects of the music not just the composition of the music itself there was mm. a, a group effort just in and and hey I, I think this might sound better if it was this note or if this was a little bit higher pitched and right. and it was a lot of back and forth and and in the end I, I mean I have a Popeye arcade game downstairs and sometimes wow. I'll have the 7800 version on and every once in a while they'll play the Popeye theme at the same time and it sounds like stereo <laughs> they sound identical <laughs> like it's amazing that's, how close Bobby that, and them got it to the that's earth. really good so yeah Great. Oh, I also want to add. I, I, I meant to mention all the you know nomination stuff. This this one for best work in progress homebrew and best homebrew uh, when it was uh, fully finished as well. So uh, people really people really love this game and love the port of this game, and that's probably why so many people came out to help you out with it because of. The, the love that they have and the nostalgia for it. And it is a, a great platformer with three very, very different screens mm -hmm. uh, that you have to use completely different tactics for. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of love in the community for this game. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was it was a fun project, and and it's still, you know, I it, it still was really great being... You know all the love that that came with the awards and the voting. It's 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 humbling. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, so wrapping it up, are there any upcoming games you want to talk about that you've been working on, um, or anything else you'd like to add that I didn't cover about Popeye? Um, I would say. Let's see. I, I don't know. I think we've we've talked about Popeye um, <laughs> a, a few times. Uh, yeah. And and uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's a bit daunting coming up with more questions yet again that I haven't yeah, uh, yeah said. I'm like, that's what I was doing with this, and I was like, come, when I was talking about the question, uh, coming up with the questions, like, oh my god, I've talked to all these people more than once about these games. <laughs> in person more than once yeah um so i try and come up with unique questions it's difficult but hopefully uh hopefully it worked out okay <laughs> right no I, uh i would just say um I, time has been pretty tight for me but but I, I might do another game i might i might be doing another game i i don't know <laughs> <laughs> nice that's that's great i, I mean you know so there, there's that's a possibility. I, I I've been looking at some of the demos, and I thought about um, maybe trying to come up with something that isn't um, a copyright, a copyright, <laughs> less less possible hot water. Yeah, uh, that you have to navigate through. But that's that's awesome. Uh, and a, a, a more original game. That's that's excellent. Yeah. So, but I, I don't have a lot of time necessarily for for that concept right now, but. Um, right. But I did start, you know, a few, and and I have revisited as time allows to just kind of check and see where oh, I could great. go next. You know, slow <laughs> process. It is. Uh, I mean, everybody goes at their own pace. There's some people that take decades to finish off a game uh, with long breaks in between, and some people will just crank them out like month after month. <laughs> Be a Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. It's, it, but always the res end result, I think, I'll, 
developers really put their heart and soul into every game they make and they don't take it lightly because they want to like the game they make as yeah. well uh, not only when people play it but uh, when they're finished with it they want it to be something that they're proud of so very rarely do I see half-hearted efforts put into games so I don't mind uh, I don't think anybody minds that games take however long they take because people know at the end they're going to be really happy with the game they're going to buy or play or download online yep yeah <laughs> so thank you so much uh, once again for coming on uh, Zero Page and the stream and uh, making these amazing games that we all love to enjoy and now we can soon purchase this uh, purchase Popeye in the store and I'm really excited about that yeah yeah me too I'm, <laughs> I'm anxious to get a copy <laughs> So. Yes, I, it, less people than last time uh, mentioned that, that I don't have, the developer doesn't have their own copy, but we're playing it on the show. And I always feel s supremely guilty about that. But, uh, but I'm, I'm really happy to show off these games and be able to talk to you about the game and, and uh, get, some, get some excitement going yeah. for, for, when, for when they hit the store. Yeah. Thanks for having me on here again. It's, it's been great. Yeah, always, always great to talk to you, Daryl. So, uh, we'll talk again uh, soon, and all right. uh, have a good uh, rest of the weekend. All right, you too. See you all later. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Excellent. Having fun playing Popeye. You made That's it to great. the third level. I did. I, it is a challenging game, and um, I switched to novice, obviously. But um, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. well, I do find to... it hard. I find the first level harder than the other levels. For some reason, it's the most challenging one where he's hitting you like it's oh, tighter, more confined space. It is. Um, it, they're all challenging in their own way. They are. But, um, yeah. I find this level goes by very quick. Yes, it's like you. For need some less... reason, I think she releases the hearts. Oh, nobody can see this. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, let me just turn off the, the laptop so we can see it for a second. Now we don't have the pressure of. Uh, Time limit. Um, I find this level to go by really, really quick. Uh, I think she drops the notes a lot quicker, and I, I always forget right. to punch the spinach on this level because it goes by so quickly. Mm. I think there might be less notes than there are hearts. I think you're right. But either way, this one does go by quickly. Daryl. <laughs> uh, oh, old style. Hey, Cyrano. Yay. Yep. Looks at the Jaguar games in the store. Um, Tari H says, I'll be sending out developer copies before they hit the store. That's that's great. Nice. Yeah. Um, there's an ETA on the 7800 games uh, hitting the shop. Just rewind to the beginning when we uh, interview Al. Uh, he talks about uh, the timeline and the things that need to happen um, before the uh, the games hit the store. So if you want a more elaborate version, obviously Al's in the chat. Well, this wraps up today, day one. <laughs> it does, yes. Uh, it uh, was long, but also flew by at the same time. Yes. Yeah. I mean, probably faster for you because you're playing the games. I'm like, ah, questions. <laughs> Gotta interview the people. It's a lot of speaking for you, so I'm surprised your voice hasn't completely given out at this point. Well, so. it's gone. My voice has gone through a lot. I can hear a tiny rasp in it. Yeah. But with like uh, one, with the dust storms in Burning Man, the COVID after that. <laughs> yeah. The PRGE nonstop talking for another two days again. That so was even longer. Your your voice is more resilient than it than it was in the past. Is this what you're and saying? It, and it, it does happen. Like singers' voices are, like if they sing a lot, they're more resilient, and they get worked more. But also, there's a limit at the same time. That's true. It it will give out, but no, it's done done well today. And so uh, have a little bit of rest tonight. And, yeah, uh, I think so. More talking tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be silent until noon tomorrow. Just won't say a word except to the kitties. Also, good kitty. Good Aww, kitty. Oh, good kitty. We've had some pretty good kitties. They've also been yeah. pretty bad too. Uh, but it's understandable because they were they needed to eat, so they were getting a little. Yeah, Al says he usually upset. loses his voice by the end of PRG. Yeah, like Al will be nonstop talking. Yeah, I can <laughs> I can run away. He yeah. has to at the booth um 
yeah, so let's just switch it over. Yeah, there we go. Uh, thank you so much, everybody who uh, made it through this. Yeah. Uh, from start to finish. I don't know if anybody did make it all the way through, but I, I saw I people know. come and go. We still have a fair number of viewers yeah. watching, so that's good to see. Yeah, so uh, thank you to all the developers today that were all on hand. We had great turnout today, and it'll be great turnout tomorrow as well. Our tar uh, agent RC70 oh. said they did. So oh, who else thank made you it? So start, much, start to finish. And uh, That's Spicewear. Spicewear. Blue on black is hard to see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Phaser Cat Games had no choice but to. Oh. I apologize. <laughs> I made you sit through Beer the whole thing. Out the oh, a lot of people. Oh, Beer wonderful. Po oh, that's great. Yeah, thank oh, you that's so much. Excellent. Yeah. We had to we we were here the whole time too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to count the cats as well. The They're cats uh, here and there. Yeah. They they took They were in and out. And, yeah. yeah. They took a few litter box breaks along yeah. the way. Yeah. Mostly uh mostly here for the treats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I am really excited to play all these games. I haven't even touched some of these games. I know. I, By the end, you'll have played all I'm so all lucky of them. I get to play them all. Yeah. Um, it's pretty <laughs> but, fun. Oh, After Dark Forever. We have so... So many to so play So many. Yeah. And, like, all of them, mm -hmm. I am really yeah. excited to play. Because, you know, these are the final versions. We play a lot of them early stages, work in progress... Um, but by the time they get to like release candidates, some people don't put them in the forums. Um, and sometimes they want to hold on to them till they put them on a cartridge first. Um, first. So, um, yeah. so there'll be some Different approaches. minor tweaks to some of these games. Yeah. After dark, after this. No, 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 no. <laughs> We've done six and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And anybody who, uh, missed the beginning um you can either rewind on twitch or it'll be on youtube um tomorrow mm. yeah that's one thing i do need to do is um stitch this up tonight tonight yeah i do i have to get it ready mm. and export it that won't take very long though are you gonna do that now or when we after we eat oh you after must we be eat, hungry it's... you must be because so i'm just gonna let the upload go overnight yeah because everything's set up mm. i just have to hook up the jaguar which you know everything else is set up it's very simple and that just goes into the SCART port. So, no problem there. Mm. Plug in the power. <laughs> hey, Leet Ping Haxor. Hmm, that could be a number of people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder who that is. Yeah, Jaguar tomorrow. So now everybody can know what games are going to be uh, shown tomorrow. Not what order yet, but uh, by, based on the games that we played today. So mostly this will be cleaning up all the all the uh, boxes and putting them back where they should be and make them making them pristine and perfect again yeah yeah, yeah. fair enough so thank you uh so much everybody for hanging in uh maybe i'll say the names out might as well yep tari age leap ping axor in the last uh, second uh rc70 ricardo pym splendid nut rendered ghost carl g ivory towers collections dan avc old style br pocock phaser cat games uh cyrano uh funk master v uh are you the funk master from the uh forums i bet you are uh who else daryl 1970 obviously all the developers of thank course. you so much yeah. to lewis hill thomas yench um andrew davy jeremiah noel jeff haber todd fermansky i can hear it in my voice yeah mike sarna bob de Crescenzo, uh ryan whitmer daryl genther and of course albert yaruso yes for starting off uh, we wouldn't be the... here if it wasn't for him nope so nope yeah. very few of us would be none of us would be yeah <laughs> really because uh it wouldn't be organized like this carl g muddy funster charles whelan absolute aaron <laughs> uh rc70 charles whelan probably repeating these names kathman 2d kathman 2d yeah uh chelsea donnie meow yeah. meow uh thunkist so many names it's great Ivy thank you Tower. all for coming yeah. out and watching it's excellent it's a, it's a fun a muddy funster it's a fun day uh it'd be more fun if i could play the games <laughs> spiceware <laughs> ah i reached the top finally oh excellent. my goodness what a plethora of names um and so we'll be back uh tomorrow mm -hmm. same time same amount of time less one half hour 
thankfully, <laughs> one half hour less uh, because we don't have Al. So it's divided 12 games, 12 games. Okay. Um, so whenever this started in your time zone, it will be uh, starting again tomorrow, 12 Pacific, 3 Eastern, 8 p.m. GMT. That should count for most people. I'm sure everybody in the world goes by one of those. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, we will see you tomorrow. And thank we you will. for tuning in. Same bat channel. Exactly, yeah. Al. Same bat time, same, same bat, bat channel. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh, let's uh, switch over to this. Bye-bye. Keep waving. Keep waving. Keep waving. There we go.